futures holding on to gains here as we head towards the uh, key November CPI print to come here at 830 this morning. Again, we'll get the uh, last reading of the year on inflation and also the final data point the Fed's going to consider heading into their uh, two day meeting that started uh, today as well. And we'll wrap up tomorrow with the Fed decision. We are still expecting a 50 basis point increase from the Fed still run that 70 percent mark. As far as the Fed funds tool is concerned, both the S&P and NASDAQ in positive territory. Not a lot to talk about as far as individual movers are concerned. Going to be an overall market kind of a day. Again, five minutes to go here before we get this uh, November CPI print. It is Tuesday, December 13th, 2022. TraderTV.Live starts now. Here we go. Uh, it is that day. It finally comes. Neil is back in the building. Good to have Neil back with us to uh, talk about this November CPI, guys. Again, under now, five minutes to go before we get this print. Uh, again, the expectation, 7.3. And then the core number, if you take out food and energy, 6.1. 0.3 on the month over month increase. 0.3 to the upside on the increase month over month. But uh, 7.3, 6.1, and 0.3, the key numbers to keep in mind. Yes, sir. Welcome. It's going to be a fun one. So I hear a, a, a birdie said if we got 6.9, we go 10% to yep, the upside. Yep, yep, yep. That was Luca. Luca said that. <laughs> Whoa, what was that? Uh, okay, so the market's just popping out right now. Come over here. We just got a nice little pop through up to 12,000. The market just took off a little bit there. I don't know what that was all about. Uh, Brennan's going to be ear to the ground here. There obviously, there, there might be a early read here on the market. Hopefully it's a nice little shoot up. The Nasdaq is now, this is the TQs, but the Nasdaq now up 1%. Just kind of took off a little bit. Is that just... JP Morgan, Neil, in there buying Maybe before? they already are. <laughs> are they buying before this number? And there it comes right back down there. So a little bit of a spike up, then a move back down in here. Wow, that just took off. Someone getting a little fat fingered there. Uh, if that was you, you might have uh, might want to reset your clock a little yeah. bit there. We still got two and a half minutes. You want to be real careful. Make sure the actual number is out at 8.30 before you engage in anything. Obviously, if it comes light, that's what you know that'll be the upside like if we're looking for if we're looking for a light number anything with a six in front of it is gangbusters i think we go to the upside i'm looking for some breakouts uh, six, obviously yeah. but if you look if it does somehow come come hot and is higher i think there's a lot of risk into the downside i'm not thinking that that's going to be the case everyone seems to be it'll be a bit of a beat in the event that you do get something which is a little bit more in line, like right smack dab in the middle, it might be a bit of a shakeout at the open. If it's completely in line, I don't know that I want to be jumping right in. But, man, if you see a six in front of it, just close your eyes and uh, get ready for the ride. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun here. We only have two minutes. Brendan's going to give you it as live as we possibly can, man. We have the Icon Terminal ready to rock and roll. We have some Twitter feeds here that we're looking at as well for you. And you're going to have it live. There's no better place to be than right here. Um, hopefully this comes in. Again, we're expected on the 7.3. We talked about Core 6.1. Um, I don't know. We're already, I mean, here's the market over the last couple. I mean, we'll just do this quickly because we only have a minute and a half. So we're well above yesterday's kind of levels here. If the NASDAQ does make a move down, I think we're going to crush everything. So there's really nothing to look at here if this number comes out hot i don't know what's going to happen if it comes out as expected but you know if if, if this n number comes out you know a little higher seven four seven five then we probably take down some of these levels i'm looking for like an 11 600 break to the low side here on the nasdaq almost immediately which would be down 300 nasdaq points so here we go brendan we only have a minute left i'll be trading the tqqs uh, i like to get a little bit of that it's only 22 bucks uh easy to trade spies cues futures micro yeah. minis uh things like that but, uh, Brendan, here we go, man. This is why you get the big bucks. Let's see if we can get this uh, with only 40 seconds to go. So thanks, everyone, for watching, man. I mean, over 2,000 people. Now easily over 2,000, 4,000. 4,000 people on board, Brendan. We have 30, 30 seconds. Let's go over to the big guy. All right, big, uh, big day. Yeah, thanks for joining us, guys. Shout out to our friends at Financial Juice. Going to bring you this number live. It's going to be right here. Uh, again, 7.3 expected, 20 seconds to go here. Uh, we're looking at this box first and then down here to the core. Again, take out food and energy, 6.1 expected, about uh, 10 seconds or so to go. 0.3 on the month over month number. So we should get this one first, hopefully. And uh, that will be the market mover in a couple of seconds here. So 
Uh, let's see what we come out as. 7.1, so lower, guys, lower. 7.1 versus 7.3. 6% on the year-over-year -year for the core. So both beating expectations there. 7.1 and 6 flat, 0.1 on the month-over-month. -month. That's a nice beat. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. It's a nice little upside move. We had to, we waited a little bit too long to get those yeah, I shares. I waited way too long. Uh, but we still got them here on the TQQ. So um, nice to see this move to the upside right here. We're long right now. Uh, it's nicely in the money. The market is absolutely ripping. There goes the NASDAQ up 4%. I feel like uh, it's broken right now. The future's closed. Mine's not even moving right now. But there goes the TQQ. Beautiful move to the upside uh, right now. Taking advantage of it. Getting some pieces out right now on this high side. My future's NASDAQ is not even moving. Yeah, I'm catching a little bit of a pullback here and looking to see if we can catch a diff. I mean, 7.1, look, you're not going to, look, obviously, you're not going to be thinking about that 6.9. That was always going to be a bit of a pie in the sky. My chart is absolutely jacked No, we froze. The NASDAQ no, we, did, we did freeze it for, e, for a little e bit, signal, but my cues, my cues are good. Oh, the cues are good. No, but the NASDAQ futures are halted right now. I'm pretty sure they're halted because right now my it's not working on e-signal it's not working you're right on ours as well nasdaq is now halted that's i'm pretty sure i can call that brendan if you see that on the news i'm pretty sure the nasdaq is now halted with an instant five percent straight up move uh right there so i'm pretty sure that just halted the nasdaq what a big day already we're in the money we're not in as much as we should be but it was a real fun day there halted nasdaq i believe anyways we can check out on the es just real quick is that still moving es right now uh Yes, that's up 3% and still moving. So the ES is moving. The NASDAQ is now halted. Yeah, this is, I don't know, did you show level two on NASDAQ? No, I didn't. I didn't. This is what you'll see when you pull up, the, pull up the NASDAQ futures. You are getting a bit of a halt. I actually didn't realize that you would get a halt. We're at 4.19% to the upside yeah, exactly. last I checked. So either way, you can trade over in the queues. Uh, you can trade, obviously, the SPY, the ES are going to be just fine. They're not up as much. No, they're just moving again. Now the NASDAQ's moving again and coming back in heavily. Yeah, I, I jumped the top side, and we're going to be out of the money here. But I still like it to the long. I'm looking at NVIDIA, by the way. NVIDIA 185 should be a big level. And then you have some monster levels coming in at Amazon as well. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm just sitting here trying to trade away again. We're trying to buy some of these dips as the NASDAQ did just come in a little bit uh, right there. So they get to 7.1. If there's anything else, Brendan, I mean, uh, coming through on that, I guess not. What did we get the core? What did we get the core was? Uh, um, so six. So core CPI six, six versus 6.1. So a little bit higher on the core as well. But we are f fading out. That's why we took a little bit of profits early on this name. So uh, let's just get going here. It is still a nice little move as the NASDAQ coming in pretty good now. We were up 4.3%. Yeah, I don't know if back. it halted there or if that was just an issue. I saw it halted. Now we've given back almost like a full point. And just going back and in, in, in looking at the overall chart here, guys, uh, quickly, I like this 293 and a half is a bit of a – it's hard to see see because it's a stupid wick here 293 and a half i've reloaded in front on the nasdaq here and i like this 293 half level if we can start holding this turn to get back into the upside gonna be taking that nvidia is close to 185 that's gonna be a level i like here um very strong ship name obviously up now up six percent you can pretty much forget about the 180 brick i don't think we're gonna see that again but i'm looking at this 185 level uh for some dips i have an 83 in i think that's pie in the sky I tried to grab that as the market was breaking out but i want to give this some breath to be able to get a piece of this move here. Not the only name I was watching. Amazon was the other individual stock that was in play for me. Tried the break. You're not going to get a lot of breaks because volatility uh, was a little bit too big there. So I missed a breakout on Amazon. I like this anywhere near and resembling that 93 level on the way back. Yeah, good job there. I was um, I told all the traders behind us to disable their short keys, but I hope that uh, they have them back on right now because the move is uh, definitely a nice upside move. But let's wait to see if we continue to fade it. We've, we we took some profits out and we've been averaging in here, Fahad, uh, on this move yeah, to the downside. Fading. So now you're starting to fade out a little bit southbound right now. So that's the risk about trading these numbers, right? Is is that you know you live and die by the sword. It was a nice move to the upside, but it happened. Happened a little bit early there. We saw it take off. Now it's starting to fade out a little bit. I'm trying. I'm not trying. I am holding out for a little bit lower. Let's see where the Nasdaq goes. This is the TQQ. Here's the Nasdaq pumped up. Still a great morning, man. Up three percent. I mean, you can't beat that. We we're up a percent and a half yesterday. Give it three, three and a half today. It's a nice move. But watch out. I'm gonna see if we can hold twelve thousand. 
That's it for the NASDAQ. Let's see if we can hold NASDAQ 12,000. Okay, Brendan, that was pretty exciting. Hit the like button, man. We came on for you guys early. Thanks, Fod, for reminding us. Hit the like button. It was a big day here. Big, big, big movement uh, in the market. And guess what, Neil? Tomorrow, we do it all over again at well, 145. Tomorrow. Sorry, I was going to say we're back early again, sorry, at 145 yeah. when we have yet again another big number coming through with the Fed. But what does this mean now for the Fed? Nothing, I think, actually. Kind of seems uh, look, like I, status quo right now. I could be, look, I could be wrong about that, but I, I kind of felt like there was almost nothing that could change the Fed from going with that half point. And the only way that you would see something different uh, than that half point was it would have to have been, somehow would have had to run ridiculously hot. And I don't think that was going to, you know, you'd had to see maybe like 7.5 or 7.6, which clearly Ooh. hasn't been the case here. I, oh, I have some NBA news for my guy over there, Fahad. You saw it? Why didn't they rename it the LeBron James Trophy, I guess? He's still in the league. He's still in the league. Right, 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 right. What happened? They renamed the, Mike, the MVP award to the Michael Jordan Trophy. So, I don't know. I don't know if I like that. It's kind of, uh, you know, but, you know, whatever. I don't. Well, whatever. I don't think they should do that. It's kind of I, like, what are you going to name baseball? Like, Ted Williams, no, Mickey No, they actually, Mantle, they like, do have the Cy Young Award. But that's the guy. That's true, The guy actually, pitched 100 years ago. Good that's point, actually. All right. I'm All right. Let's go back to the market <laughs> right now. Uh, okay, Brendan. Oh, here if, comes support. Yeah, if there's anything you want to interrupt with, that's fine. I'm not trading stocks yet. I'm just still trading equity. You have the TQQ dropping down here to 2350 right now. Back to VWAP. I'm going to stay in this until we break 2250. I think the market is going to like this number. It's just about digesting right now. Neil, I think, is in some equity. No, you're not in equities oh, yet. Just in but we're look, the, yeah, we're looking at a few things here. Yeah. Amazon, uh, Amazon, Apple, Google. Apple. Um, the big one for me, NVIDIA, I think, NVIDIA. NVIDIA. All right, back over to Brendan. All right, first segment of the show, guys, brought to you by Surge Trader, where traders can get a funded trading account up to a million dollars and keep 90% of the profits. The program is simple rules, no time limits. Check out uh, searchtrader.com forward slash TTV. Use TTV. For a code at checkout, get 10% off. Couple of things to be aware of now. We did see an uptick in this, uh, the CME Fed Funds tool here. Now 75.8 on the 50 basis point uh, increase. Uh, even more importantly, there was an uptick on the 25 uh, basis point uh, percentage uh, to the upside here. But just hearing a few things in my ear at the same time here, guys, just bear with me. 75.8, though, for 50 basis point. Also wanted to show you this. This is a month-over-month -month chart uh, for CPI seasonally adjusted November 21 through November 22. So you can see a nice downtick there over September and October. Remember, back in the summer, we were up above 1%, increasing all throughout the summer. Uh, so finally, back to just 0.1 on the month-over-month -month rate. Yeah, Wallace Brown, my blood pressure is not sky high. I'm, I'm blood just, pressure. I'm just chilling out. I mean, it's already done. So what, what happens to me is I get nervous going into it, right? That's I mean, what once it's there, it's there. It's like sports. Like, you can be so nervous about the game. If you guys have played, you know, you're an athlete or whatever, you get nervous pregame. But then once the game starts and the lights are bright and it's on, it's, it's fine. It's just kind of game time at that point. Yeah, it's game time, right? I mean, we're, we're, we're trying to be veterans here and, um, you know. Power, huh? What happened? No, I just saw someone fusion Brian James, power. He's like, yeah, fusion power. Yeah, let's 10 go. Years. That's actually, I, I, I heard the same thing too, being a nerd. But uh, maybe we'll talk about energy a little bit later. Fusion power would be a game changer, but I think we got bigger fish to fry. Brendo. Oh, Brendo. Uh, Bitcoin, guys, with a big move here as well. Notably, it was up as much as 5% on that number. We almost got back to 18,000 there at the high, just pulling back 17,950. So monster move, 4.3% right now for BTC. Knees weak, palms are sweaty. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Still well below resistance. On, yeah, oh my, yeah. I had a nice, uh, the wife made some nice ragu uh, sauce last night. That was pretty good with some homemade pasta. There we go. Um, okay, so Coinbase, nice little move up for Coinbase as well, up 5%. That started to go. Good talk there about, well, not good talk, but good note there about Bitcoin, up that 5% and briefly retracing back uh, upside or going upside up to that 18 thousand again that's a good one we're gonna watch out for coinbase i always think that we short this name any kind of pop that we get we're still not there yet i mean i don't 
I really don't want to play with this until it gets near 50, 49, 48, 50. So that still has a lot of work to do. We have been buying up the Qs, like we said here. So triple Qs are now, it's up 9%. Obviously, we wish we had it at the bottom. Isn't that funny that we saw it? And thanks for joining us early. Hit the like button if you can, man. We, uh, we put on our, uh, you know, our, our happy faces and, and came in a little early uh, here. Only five minutes, but we're happy to do it. Um, you know, there was a little funny action there that happened a little bit pre there. We had some, and now it looks minuscule because of the move but you know we had spiked up there a little bit got going a little early this candle here is actually 929 so there's 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 like a nice little about a dollar move here in the TQs and here it is in the Nasdaq as well pre this this candle right here that that I'm hovering on is 7 or sorry 829 so that's an 829 candle so someone front run this thing for sure and uh, got got a great price uh, and probably started to sell the tops there when that happened so someone heard about this number I'd say at 726 or they just took a bet I mean like well, we don't, yeah, we don't have to be they conspiracy be theorists here but someone made a bet early there they took it great trade someone made a much bigger bet uh, with a minute to go and then at 8 30 the rest was history nice upside move but here we go now we got the chicken dinner winners on board now so let's take another out at 96 as we just there we go man good trade for me so far today as we bought these dips in the nasdaq i think the market rips the rest of the day we'll be here for pullbacks i don't know about ripping the rest of the day I should slow down on some of that but i feel pretty bullish good thing that things are bull today uh into this number every time neil i feel like We've either beat or went one way. The market has continued uh, to do that. So we and did. It's held the trend. Yeah, yeah. I, the only thing that gives me a little bit of pause, and I want to say a little bit of pause, it's like how far can you, how far do you continue? Would be what tomorrow is, right? Because a lot of times you can see sideways action going into the Fed. And look, I started reloading this obviously pretty early here. Um, the initial breakout, like when it got to 300, that was a pretty hard reversal. I'm training the cues, by the way. Uh, so I could see us getting halfway in here to like 97, 98 and pulling a bit of a reversal. Uh, but I, I tend to think you could see maybe the biggest move has obviously happened and then you can get a little bit of an inside day. But I like the 293 support on the queues. Um, I, that might correspond with 12,000. I just happen to be watching the queues. And I'm going to kick myself over NVIDIA. Uh, this was one. I had a 180 breakout. I, I thought I canceled that order. But the 183 I did like, and it just dipped down very briefly to be able to get it. And then the same thing happened in Amazon. And I think you just got to hone in on the zones that you like. I think in front of 93, I love Amazon. You got you to narrow on the reasons why here sometimes. And it was just a pretty clean breakout on the 15-minute. If I can, yeah, I can zoom out far enough there for you guys to see. Pretty clean breakouts here on, this, on these levels. It was about 91 and a half in the last couple of days. And then you go to the previous support level the day before that was at 93. So I'll just take anything above that previous 93 level on the way back in here uh, on Amazon looking for a continuation. But I wouldn't be surprised if things actually start to slow down and we get a bit of a sleepy afternoon uh, heading into tomorrow. So uh, I, I believe in the trend to the upside here. Uh, I don't really have any short ideas off the top of my head, but I'm sure I'll check out Intel and, and uh, Firm in a few seconds. All right. Yeah, I'm, um, yeah, good, good, good pickups on the bottom uh, for us there. And yeah, just, just stay, you know, stay sort of <laughs> fluid with your positions right now. I feel like, you know, trading an ETF, a little safer right now than trading some of the equities. I mean, even I was just looking at AMD uh, a little bit here. Okay, so now I was going to say, because the spreads weren't, weren't great, but now they're pretty tight, 1.7 million shares. So I'm going to actually go back on what I just said now. I think you can go over and start to look at some equities. For me, I just think it's a lot safer safer to play in the market than looking at individual names. I just, you know, if the market's going to go up, we have them. If, you know, it's, it's not going to look good for like painting the tape and everything like that. He's like, oh, I bought AMD at 74 and now it's at 74.60, but I'm just going to trade the market now, continue to go long. Apple taking out that 150 uh, is pretty interesting. It's already done that. It went up to 151, came all the way back to 148.60, now bumping up to 150 again. So yeah, man, big, big market moves here today. Uh, let's check out Amazon. I think that's going to be good news for Amazon, uh, obviously, because that 50 basis points now, I mean, Brendan just called it up. It didn't look like it was that much of a difference on the Fed rate tool. So you can see up 4%, starting to go back up. Remember, 
I just feel like retail could be a big winner out of all of this. With CPI coming back in a little bit, that gives hopefully consumers a little bit more oomph to their dollar. So we'll see uh, if that happens. We know that gas and auto and all that. I don't. I didn't see that food numbers and all that kind of stuff. But um, you know, if that's getting better as well, that puts more money in the consumer's pocket, which is obviously a very important thing. So this is what we're doing, man. Uh, it's been a good day so far. Nice move to the upside. I hope the guys behind disabled their short keys, but it's a big move to the upside. You could have shorted that top, though. That might have been the best trade, is taking out that blowout top yeah. and bringing it all the way back, because very hard to grab that long there, Brendan. This was a tricky one. The last couple hung around and then popped. This one did the complete opposite. It popped went up, and if you got it late, you got hit back to the downside. Little eventful number there, Brendo. Yeah, we'll see if uh, we get any kind of follow through for the overall market here, but that was a big move initially to the upside. But uh, yeah, a little bit of a pullback here. Uh, a couple things of note. Uh, you mentioned the Fed funds tool. A little bit of a delayed reaction, guys. We're now above 90% on the 50, uh, 50 basis point coming tomorrow. So two, three minutes ago when we looked, it was still 77, 76, uh, just jumped up to 90%. They're also now pricing in a lower ultimate rate that we'll get to in the first half of next year, down about uh, two tenths of a basis point as well uh, for the top end. Here's the dollar, just took out the low. If you remember, we were discussing over the past couple of days, I'll make this bigger here. Uh, we were discussing the past couple of days or so, this low going back to August, just took that out. So a big move down in the dollar as the interest rates move back to the downside, guys, on this uh, print today. Yeah, I see TLT up a little bit, but uh, look at UVXY as well. That's another thing, just um, getting through support levels here. Obviously, you know, big moves just happened. You can expect volatility to come down a little bit. So UVXY just took out major support. Um, if this if this actually holds beneath, it's about 710. Like that's the kind of thing where if I see it hold beneath, I might actually look to be trading this. If there's a break into the downside and we get another move up in the overall market, then you could start to see it. I'll probably wait until the open for a move like this, just because wow, it's still only 845. Just gotta keep rem reminding myself, it's 845, Neil. Uh, so if we hold below like a 710 on UVXY, hold the bottom channel, the market continues to rally off the open, that could be a little bit of a short trade. It's the same thing as being long the market, I understand that, but I always like these levels as they start to set up there, and I'll probably start marking some of those off. Uh, like we did say, you still have Fed, the, Fed, the Fed coming tomorrow, obviously at 90% at this point, almost nothing you know, once you start getting to that number 24 hours be uh, before, almost nothing is likely to be able to change it uh, at this point. So you can pretty much lock that one in. Uh, it's, it's only going to get closer to that 100% marker. So, you know, sort of lock in. I was just watching AMC because Sean was like, AMC? I'm like, yeah, I guess everything is going to the upside here. Uh, so just looking for Ooh. some things that might be some opportunities for fades. I do want to have something that I like to the short side. And I thought, oh, well, if a squeeze name is going, and there was a level there, if this was at $7, maybe uh, that would make some sense. But I didn't see anything that I, that I liked uh, with AMC. Yeah, no, I actually just, I saw some people talking about it in the chat. Well, that's, that's, that's really why I called it up. But um, yeah, some names moving around. Let's check out oil right now. Uh, let's see what XOM is trying to do. Wow, 108 again as crude is probably popping a little bit uh, right now. Here's the crude chart. So it is a nice little move for crude oil off those 52-week bottoms of 70 bucks or so. Uh, nice move to the upside there as all equity all asset classes, as Brendan talked about, uh, BTC as well. That started to go. Here's Bitcoin right now. Nice move to the upside. Let me just sort of refresh that. There it is right here. Uh, to the upside. So a nice little move there. Not only did we get long, yeah, so bounced off 18,000. I was telling Neil earlier that uh, the movie that's being filmed in front of my house is called Reacher. Sorry, it's a TV show called Reacher on Amazon. And I already won today. Why? Because... They rang, uh, as I was talking to the wife, as I was just pulling up here at the office, and she's like, I heard in the background my dog was going crazy. Anyways, I, I guess some grips or whatever, you know, rang the doorbell. And they said, oh, we need to borrow your driveway today. Okay. So I was like, okay. You know, and, my, and, and, and you know, Marissa's like, okay, well, you know, she's thinking about she's got to do her, the groceries or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But then the guy said, uh, how about 100 bucks? Well, I was about to and say. And then like, she was like, done. I'll just go park the car on the street. So, exactly. Uh, so, so hopefully she was able to find a spot there. So uh, the point I was getting at was that we've already <laughs> sort of, we won here. We got a hundy in our pocket for the movie. So, so far, so good. But the problem was it was my kid's uh, concert last night. And I'll see if I can send a video. 
video. Their violins, they're good, but it's not great. It was like really funny. Like well, they called up the kids and they're like, okay, you know, it's your turn to play your song. And it was like, all right. And it just went, me, 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 me. And that was it. And it was, I was like, and they're like, yeah. I was like, all right. Well, what are so you expecting? Our, like a I don't concerto know. or something? I what, think like, they've only been playing for like two months. And yeah, the violin, like, I think, is pretty hard. The violin, I, I, look, I'm not, you I'm know not what an they, expert, but yeah. I'm pretty sure the violin's one of like the hardest instruments to play ever. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, I mean, come on, son. Like, the I, wife I just, always <laughs> makes more money than me for anybody asking in the chat there because she wins. She, she wins. Oh, she wins. That's, that's cool. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Actually, I, you know what? For the record, well, I'll get to the story when the market's not moving as much, but nobody wins more than me uh, after yesterday because my. You must my, just see, tell see it. This key, see this keyboard? This was dead yesterday. There was an incident involving some soap and some water and my daughter that was mostly my fault, but. Um, this just, suffice to say that my phone was dying and in a boot loop, and I tried everything to fix it and couldn't fix it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to have to replace this thing finally. And then you know what? For 40 bucks, they were able to replace like the buttons or whatever that were stuck and not working. So I've taken this as some people might say, Neil, the universe is telling you to replace your phone. I take that as the universe is telling me to, that my phone is going to last forever. And therefore, from my cold, dying hands, I'm going to have this bad boy. And if the market stays up today, then I think I should just double down on you that. Know what, so if the market's positive today, then Neil doesn't get yes. a new phone this year. So You're talking about signs, what they mean. It's a sign. But you, you probably did pay more to get it fixed than it's worth, but that's still, I mean, still. You know what's hilarious? Someone in the chat mentioned. Apparently, there's an underground market for these in, like, Europe yeah, or something. Yeah, we talked about because that. Because it's, yeah, you can't get a keyboard phone. So the key to, apparently, in Europe, I'm going to take, yeah. take a leg out here. Um, it's a nice move up. I was just looking at the same thing here. For we're, the we're almost, about, guys, we're almost at the highs again. Just going to quickly go to the charts. We're almost back at that high again. I just threw my, my black I was waiting up. for a little so we got a little bit closer, and we just got to that 12-2 uh, level. I know I'm in the queues. Our futures, you don't want to ruin here. You actually don't see us even when we trade futures. But, yeah, I just took another leg out because I feel like us getting back into that high could provide some resistance. Um, I, I'm kicking myself over missing out on Amazon. But, oddly enough, you know, Amazon... Oh, goodness, it has this wick. Uh, but Amazon's getting pretty close to $95. Can I show you? There we go. 95 bucks here. So I think that could be a nice little level for a jump off. This is a stock that I just felt had so much room to be able to get to most recent highs. So December 1st, get a 97 top here in Amazon. So if we do trend higher, this is one I want on dips. It could also set up for a 95 break if we're going to continue this move. I'm just watching out for that futures level at the top where the NASDAQ halted. And thinking to myself, I better get something out in front of it because, quite frankly, I'm not even sure why. There must have been a bad tick on that NASDAQ because you can't. It, it shouldn't It's have supposed stopped. to be 7%. It's seven, uh, that's, yeah, it was, it was I was 4. thinking 2, it was 5 It was 4.2% 4. 4. at the time that it halted. Yeah, Brennan, anything on that? I, I haven't seen anything. No one uh, seems to be talking about that. But it seemed, it felt like a limit up, limit down kind of a halt. But as you said, uh, yeah, the rules say 7%. So we'll see. Uh, what comes out of that? Let's get a few uh, interesting analyst moves for you this morning, guys. Uh, number to discuss today. Uh, here's a few. Pinterest was up on very, very light volume. Uh, Piper Sandler upgrading uh, Pinterest this morning with a nice positive note. Wells Fargo, on the other hand, downgrading Qualcomm, uh, pointing to weak smartphone sales, Neil. Uh, influencing the uh, smartphone sales market. Uh, PayPal rising after Piper Sandler beginning coverage at neutral. So the, their prior rating on PayPal was actually underweight. So they go up to neutral as they resume coverage for PayPal, guys. All right. The thing about Pinterest, and I've been saying this for so long, so I'll just go right back to it. Like Pinterest is in this, it's just in a ridiculously tight range and it's $26.5 it needs to break. And when it goes, I think it gets interesting. Um, as far as the trend, at this point, like I like the 50 period moving average, that's $23.80. With this move up in the market, I don't think we're going to see it again. When I wrote down, yeah, I, I kind of said if we, if we actually had a down move, I was looking for that 50 period to be a bit of a bounce level. Other than that, you're waiting up for 26.4. So I don't know if this is going to be tradable unless we pull right back in uh, to where we broke out from. And then 26.5 on Pinterest, just a monster, monster level. It's really got an upgrade. The story has also been there's been some speculation that they might uh, get some deal interest there, which obviously at this point hasn't materialized just yet.
Um, yeah, okay, I just, just looking here, I, I asked uh, Katrine to see if uh, she was around, but she's uh, stuck at the subway. Uh -oh. um, okay, yeah, so Neil and I both took a little piece out there on the queues, I guess. So I'm trading TQ, he's trading queues, basically the exact same thing, especially when you're looking at the, the prices. You know, this, this will move 10 cents when the queues, you know, will move 50 cents. Uh, but again, you're going to get a little bit of a bigger move on this three oh times God. to be exact. So just different story. Like I can trade three times the shares, so on and so forth. So that's why um, we have the opportunity to basically our, you know, the amount of buying power and stuff that we have, we're able to get in and out of, of all of these. Just a matter of choosing whatever sort of uh, vehicle you want. Um, yeah, you talked about PayPal there a little bit. Uh, I don't know. I've never really been a huge fan of the Pinterest, uh, but I do know that, you know, there it's, you know, it's, po okay, my charges disappeared. It is popular. I mean, they still get a lot despite being, you know, relatively basic kind of technology. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty cool little uh, clipboard there. I think PayPal, Again, you know, nice move off the bottom, up 4%. A lot of names are going to be up today for sure. But PayPal still has a daily problem where you're not getting above this 80 bucks. So I think you got to wait uh, for that to happen. We've talked about that. PayPal's been absolutely decimated over the last year. And it kind of just continues, man. I mean, even though we're off the bottom, we're not that far. If this CPI, this is how crazy the market is. This CPI goes the other way. PayPal probably is below 52 weeks. They're 52-week low. So, you know, it's just... What one number will do to the market, don't let it change sort of the thesis for your stock. If you don't believe in this name, then you don't need to be in this. I mean, huge moves up to 90 and then a fade right back to 73. I mean, you know that Tesla is down 25% since Elon Musk took over Twitter. I mean, and that's only a couple weeks. I mean, you know, some of these names need to get going back up to the upside. Tesla's just one of those names. And again, like if that CPI goes the other way, you're below this 167. So if you still feel that, you know, some of the um, negative catalysts here with China, with Shanghai, with supply chain, um, with interest rates still rising, we're still going up 50 points tomorrow. So, you know, a lot of these stocks still need to be shorted, I feel like, especially if we get the this crazy rip that could be uh, upon us, man. I mean, I just saw 7% not too long ago, right? Now you're up 4%. The market could still rally. I still like a fade on some of these names that haven't been working and then a long on names that really we know can get going, like an AMD. Microsoft's been super strong. You missed this yesterday. Microsoft bought 4% of the LSE. Yeah, I heard it. Well, yeah, so that's pretty wild. I read that on the way in, but... Uh, well, Microsoft's 260. Microsoft's chart is... I mean, it's darn near impressive. The only, the only, it's not a stain. This is not a stain on Microsoft. And now we're jumping topics. I don't mind. What stain? It's not a, it's not a stain. But the so now you bring it up. No, no, the 200 period. Oh, I think on your shirt you had no, a stain. No, no, this is the stain on the chart. Is that the 200 period is basically here on this move? And when when you get to the 200 period, obviously look great look. It's a great looking move off the 50. You're getting close to this 266 level, which is pretty much where it is. We got almost right to that 200 period moving average. And I think when I see that level. I almost always think resistance. That's why I have it up in my daily charts because I want to be respecting these when they come in there. So I think it could run into some trouble here up at around 250, 265, 266. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. You could add this for a break. I mean, everything went to the long side worked out for sure. Uh, but this could have been another one. But yeah, this, there's actually a few other stocks that are similar to this where you're seeing the 200 period moving average on the daily chart uh, come into play here for resistance levels. All right. Um, all right. Well, we can, uh, I mean, What's that's that, man. It's 9 o'clock. I want to thank everybody for watching. Please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And then another thing, too, is if you're just joining us for the very first time, we're about to go over our watch list. And I know Brendan sort of uh, does his thing here. But, again, it's curated every single day. You can grab an absolutely 100% free watch list with talks here. Brendan, everybody wrote down, you know, month over month, CPI core readings all into here. Then, then we talk about different stocks, oracles in here. Boeing's in here, Moderna, Net Capital, which a lot of you are talking about, NCPL, this MGTA, Magenta Therapeutics. So again, make sure you sign up for our completely free watch list and join over 40,000.
That might not be right. Over 40,000 uh, subscribers right now. I think it's more. It's I, well over 30. I can say 35, I think. Brendan probably knows the exact number. but He's not um, shaking his head no. He's not. He's just, he's, he's busy working. Oh, he's he's busy. like, shut up yeah. over there. Guys, yeah. you just say whatever stats you want and we'll go with it. So 35,000 right now, plus more than roughly 35,000, approximately 35,000 now joined up uh, on the watch list. And make sure you check that out. The open rate is super, super impressive. So uh, we're pretty happy and all good on that one. Let's go over to the big guy at the big desk. All right, I have bad news, unfortunately. It uh, doesn't look like we're going to be able to get to Arun today, guys. We apologize. He's having some internet connectivity issues, and what a horrible time to have internet connectivity issues. So uh, shout out to Arun. I hope he gets that fixed today so he can participate potentially in this uh, crazy market move. Uh, I just saw this pop up again, uh, BTC, basically day highs, 17,950 once again, so still uh, floating around around that 4.3%. Uh, That's a look at what is happening over in Europe. Nice big move to the upside here for all of these following uh, this CPI print and following uh, North American markets back higher. Uh, it's actually the Swedish uh, market there leading two and a quarter percent back higher, one plus pretty much outside of England there, 0.6. Uh, to the upside otherwise. Let's get into, uh, speaking of, the watch list. I'll get, I'll get an updated number. I haven't actually looked in a while, but I'll get an updated number for everyone. But yeah, join however many in uh, getting that for free every single day. All you have to do is hit that link, enter your email, and then it just appears every single day in your watch list. It's super easy. We do all of your homework for you and uh, put it in one nice, neat package. So I was mentioning a little bit when we started on a day when the overall market is moving on an economic number such as today, you got to look at things kind of from abroad and look at what is going to lead and what is going to maybe lag the overall market move. At this point, it's pretty clear, guys, the market move is going to be to the upside for the time being anyways. Can we look to big tech, say, who are also the most rate sensitive stocks to lead this market higher today? Well, for now, the answer to that is, is, I mean, it's a yes right now. I mean, that, kind of is, that goes without saying. Uh, with the NASDAQ up 3.8, I'm just in real time checking here. The ES, 2.9, just want to make sure I get both those numbers right. But then something like a, like a meta here uh, is up 5.6%. If you just show my quote for it, just because... You, know, you want to look at some of these names, like Meta is up 5.8%. It's going to be outpacing a little bit here. And then we talked about Microsoft, which is up 4%, just slightly better than the overall NASDAQ. Um, certainly a strong stock. And I think something that, you know, if you're, if, you're looking, if you're looking for obvious levels to come in on a dip, I already said Amazon at 93. And, and I'm kind of asking myself, you know, what's, what's my objection to 260 on Microsoft? Ideally speaking, I liked 256 in here. That would have been the breakout price. But if you look at where we came, 56 and 62, and kind of look halfway, that's going to be the 59, 60 area. So that could be a place on dips. This was pointed out in the chat, and I want to just quickly pull up TLT here because you're actually seeing treasuries pull back in, right? So treasuries coming back to the downside, they mean the yields are actually moving back to the upside. That could give us the dip. Uh, that we're looking for. So if I, if you see treasuries go back to all the way where they were when this number came out, that would be a little surprising. TLT is a 20 year. They tend to move together uh, if, you're, if you're looking at something else. But uh, yeah, if we get all the way back in here and start bouncing, then I might just, any stock I like in terms of the long side in front of a support level, if I see treasuries pull all the way back and start bouncing off where we were uh, at 830, then I think that can engage some long opportunities there to be sure. But yeah, for now, it is big tech that is leading the way. Uh, Amazon was the other one I liked, and I got to zoom in here for you guys. Uh, I'm still bidding in front of 93. I love that 93 level. Could still see a 95 break, but I'm not taking out the top. I'm not thinking about longs off the highs unless it's after the open in a continuation type of a move. I'd rather be playing off resistance or buying dips back into support levels. So if, if you have missed out already on an early long, I'm not at the point where I'd be chasing it uh, into the upside. But just another stock, Amazon 4.4 to the market up 3.8%. Um, so it is, it is these big names that are big spenders that have been beaten up lately uh, that are getting a big move here.
Hey, Big Spend, uh, guys, hit the like button one more time. We're already at 1.6K with 7,300 watching right now. So hit the like button. Let's see if we can set a record today and get over 3,000. Maybe we can do that before 930. Please hit the like button. You want to talk about some names uh, that I'm going to be going over to? Look at Rivian. Yesterday we shorted this name. It was a great short. Uh, short early. We actually were short in the, uh, right away, right at 930. We took that short. Did we have something up here? No, we didn't. So uh, there's a couple there from $27. And look where we wind up covering 25 60. I mean, that's about a dollar and change on that last piece for Rivian. Um, and then it kind of didn't do much there at close yesterday. So uh, we'll let Rivian just continue to fade down. And then look what happened. Hello. Nice little pop up to the upside here for Rivian. It, this looks like a Christmas gift for me. Uh, we are going to be shorting this name. Let's let the market rip up, though. You want to pick some names. And I said, go back to the names that you still think are either weak or strong and play off there. Just because the market is rallying, it should give us hope to some shorts again, meaning that if there's a name that you like to the short side, and I like Rivian, they lost that Mercedes deal yesterday. Um, it's been a real big problem for them, uh, you know, capitalized. Uh, you know what? They still have Amazon there. They still have a little bit of Ford. But honestly, these names are at 52-week lows right now. And just like Lou said, I still feel like that could be a short uh, here today. I'm looking at like 28, 28, 5, and then that 29 eventually uh, to be the stop spot. But we're still at 27, 10. So I feel like there's a lot of ways to go here with Rivian. I know it's big tech right now. I'm talking about other opportunities here. Rivian's a tech name. Is it not Fahad? I mean, you missed, you missed when, you were, you, when you were gone there uh, on Wednesday when you weren't feeling well and you, and, and you were here in the morning. We had Fahad on the afternoon show, and he came on and was just like, yo, put me live. I'm going to make $500 right now. And it was like, it was pretty funny. It was pretty classic there. Um, and then he called himself the best trader on the floor as well. Um, so that was really you, interesting. What did he trade? Absolutely nothing. He's hasn't made one trade on the platform oh. yet, but uh, the confidence and the bravado is there, uh, even in uh, trading. Okay. So, um, but okay, Fod, you want me to talk about big tech? All right, Fod. All right, all right. I'm now, producer Fod. Right. The the other name that I was going to go to before we talk about Oracle uh, was or. Uh, my bad. Chips Rally and Qualcomm is next there, Fod. So please don't shoot the messenger we'll, we'll here. Um, but Microsoft. Microsoft's been really strong. Uh, we talked about that. We had we had this yesterday. It was a good short. Then it was a good long. Uh, Microsoft pump, pumps huge there. Ten dollars up. Ten dollars up on that move. So uh, on that release. So it's a nice move up there for uh, Microsoft. I don't know if my trades are going to show up yesterday, but again, you know, we play the strength into the close yesterday. Nice move upside for Microsoft. We talked about that. Um, and then right here, sixty-five. Like you want to take down that sixty-five? We'll probably be rocking with that. Uh, but again, it's way to the upside. We're looking to play any pullbacks. Is really what the key is. So back here to two sixty-one, two sixty. Microsoft is definitely going to be on my uh, my radar here today. Let's uh, talk about those chips because uh, here's the note from Wells Fargo this morning on Qualcomm. I mean, it's it's minor. It's secondary. Let's be honest. Underweight uh, from equal weight they go to on a downgrade for Qcom pointing to slower smartphone sales and slower smartphone sales for the entire market coming up in the beginning of next year, including uh, Apple and parties such as Google. Uh, so what do we do with these today, guys? Both uh, AMD, NVIDIA. There was a note actually on NVIDIA as well that was a little bit more positive. So if there's one, maybe NVIDIA showing a little bit of strength there. Oh, I love me some NVIDIA. That was one of the, that was one of the stocks I was looking at for a bit of a breakout, but in trading the futures uh, was probably an easier way to go there. I want to acknowledge, uh, thank you very much. Health is wealth for the super chat here. And he says, best trading show on YouTube. Uh, please use this to get some drinks for the team. Merry Christmas from the UK and Arun will be very missed today. So you know, I think obviously we'll, we miss Arun uh, every single chance we'll we get. We'll try to get him back. We'll, we'll try to get him on. Like when, I mean, it's computer issues, internet issues. I'm sure at some point we'll be able to get him on uh, and then bring him in. It shouldn't be too Canada. much of an issue Let's there. Go. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Like how bad can internet issues actually be? Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for that. All we ever ask, like we, like, like we were saying before, hit the like, hit the subscribe, uh, enjoy the show uh, to be sure. I'll be happy just to get another coffee because I feel like it's 9 o'clock and it feels like it's already been an hour and a half of trading. Uh, but you mentioned the chips, and I said I was looking for some opportunities for some shorts, which usually leads me to Intel. It's not that I never go long the stock. It's just that I haven't, it's just that I haven't been looking for longs in the stock for a while. Uh, so we got pretty close to $30 here, um, which you can see on my 15-minute, you got a wick high through 30, and it's been resistance uh, ever since. I think that could be one line in the sand I want to go to. But the overall strength that Brennan was just saying in NVIDIA, 
a super true for yesterday. And just in general, in the last little bit off this 155, um, but the breakout on NVIDIA is pretty much, uh, it's a gorgeous one. So you have 176 on the 15. It's a daily chart that caught my attention. Because remember that 200 period moving average I was talking about, that's resistance uh, over there on uh, Microsoft? Well, you just broke that to the upside today on NVIDIA when 179 went. So you kind of guessed it here. For above $180, Look, I, I would love to be able to buy 180s if we ever came back into the downside. I just, I don't think we're going to see it again, but I want to find my way into some NVIDIA longs above that 200 period. You get to about 193, 194 before you run into this, this pretty big level here from August uh, where there was a lot of selling going on and eventually that 50 period getting taken down. So looking for places to go long and when you have a big gap fill like this, I always just shoot middle. Uh, and when the middle of the gap is a 176, you know, 186, I'm just looking for anything in the middle. If I can catch 180s to 182s, that's fantastic. You might see a consolidation at the open, in which case I'd be looking 185. But, you know, I, I don't, I want to be very, very cautious and patient going long off these tops. But this is a stock I'm not really looking for any shorts in. If I short something near the highs and it's in the chip space, it's Intel. Yeah, and I'm going to go, uh, that's, that's a good call on the shorts. I'm going to go the other way with the long trade. I, I mean, I think AMD, uh, we saw this yesterday in the afternoon, and we were part of this trade as well. I mean, look what happened when this broke 70. I mean, it just continued to go up to 70, 60 uh, before baselining. So, again, yesterday, you just look at this big aggressive move. Like yesterday, we touched 67.50, and we finished the day at 70.50. So, you know, it's a big, huge move to the upside intraday yesterday. And then so look at what's happening today. You just zoom this a little bit over. Again, a 71 to 75 straight to the upside. This might be the most aggressive big tech name right now up five and a half percent and looking to go higher you're bouncing off that 75 as far as the daily range is concerned uh you just took out some of these bottoms i really so for me it's going to be a little tough we're going to have to let the market open up because i feel like we could fade back down a little bit realistically i mean i would have loved for this thing to go to 80 dollars, obviously as a shareholder but that's still looming pretty large here um, that we need to get through some of this support so that's why despite thinking the market's not stopping today and probably going to continue to go higher i just wonder about where these dip buys are going to come from right i mean you could dip back into 73 here off the open for amd that could be something and then i'd hate to see us retrace all the way back to 71 so i'm not going to put that uh, on board uh is nvidia up more than amd is the question now nah, they're both up five and a half it looks oh no this is just taking so long to adjust so nvidia is also up six percent so both of these names are going to have the same characteristics to them today i think we wait for pullbacks but again if there's any day where patience is going to be key I feel like today is going to be that day once again. We now have the CPI. We know what's out there. Uh, that Fed rate tool went up to 95, I think Brennan said, or 90. It's over 90. It's over yeah, 92, yes. something like that. That's going to be going back and forth. Um, it should be an interesting ride here today. But again, the move's already happened. And the NASDAQ, just, I'm in TQQ. Let's talk about the position I'm in. Look what it's doing. I mean, Neil's in the queues. He's having the same experience. Anybody that's in a marketable name right now is probably watching paint dry. I mean, it's not really moving. These triple Qs here, uh, I'm on the TQs, of course, but they're not doing anything. I mean, the bottom right now is, oh, so we made a bottom of 05. This is from 841. So in the last half hour, we have a bottom of 05 and a top of 25. So we're in a 20 cent range here. Like that's 1% on the TQs, which is absolutely, you know, a runner, should be running one way or the other. So we're waiting for this. The TQ's right now, 24.25. Let's see what's happening. I do have another offer right here at 40s. So that's 55, but I have one in the 40s. Let's see if we can get that for right now. It's 9.12. Brendan just got delivered some espressos. Our coffees are coming, Neil. But let's go over to Brendan at the big desk and start this watch list. Oracle time right now. All right. Uh, I got my double espresso here. Wow. That's what I was trying to explain. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah. Uh, let's go to uh, Oracle with a good report here, guys. Uh, back to the upside. Basically taking out the highs on, uh, on the number there, 85 and a half. We're trying to hold 85 even here, 4.5%. Uh, the forecast was meh, not great, but uh, otherwise a nice beat for ORCL. Yeah, it, you know what? They, they, 
their guidance was actually underneath expectations by a little bit there. I think it was like, what, 17 versus like 20. Uh, well, I'll make sure I, you guys can read it on our watch list. Yeah, the company forecast a revenue increase of 21 to 23%. Well, okay, we'll see, that. we'll see what happens there. But the daily chart, you can't really point to anything except for a monster breakout. This is 84.6. Uh, it's a huge level on the daily, but we're at 84.80 which last I checked is not a monster break uh, from what was just the high beginning of the month and you go all the way back into April um, when this put an April Fool's joke on everybody and made a double top and then tanked $22. So it, unless you're at the open, you need to be clearing this level out as far as I'm concerned and starting to run away from it because if you're right back beneath 84 and a half on Oracle at the open, then to me, you've just rejected uh, what was a monster level on the daily chart. You've already come up from 80 and sort of gapping up uh, overnight. And then you had a smaller move on that monster number just now. Well, it wasn't a monster number. It was a monster reaction to the number, uh, the CPI data. And you had a smaller move than what the gap you saw on those earnings, which were good, uh, led by the cloud division to be sure. But yeah, this could be a name. If we're beneath that 84 and a half to 86, 84, 60 area at the open, then you know, I could see a reason to be shorting it in there. Otherwise, look, it's just, it's a, it's a breakout in the daily when the market's up. So I, you know, I came in here loving this because I want something to short if I could, um, if it was beneath that 84, 60. But if it's just gonna hold it at the open, I'll probably just have to be looking for longs in Oracle here because there's nothing until you get to about $90. There's not a lot of volume. I think there's a few other tech names I like a little bit better, but you can't ignore a level like this when you see it. Uh, so that opening range is going to be key. You hold a range above, I'm looking longs all day. You hold a range below, then I'm looking short off that 84 and a half area. I'm just going to have to play it by ear. We just, um, yeah, look, I mean, Oracle, nice, nice beat oh, up 4.5%. Oh, so yes. That's uh, key. You look like Kanye West in all in that all that black there. Uh, thanks, Katrine, uh, for that. Cheers. Hold on a second. Yeah, didn't you see Kanye West, man? He's like he just wears he like when he was on that Alex Jones, he had it all black. His whole he was yeah. wearing like a black. Anyway, anyways. I'm trying not to see him, but you know, hard not to these days. But I guess uh, he's yeah. probably. Um, anyways, well, we won't talk about that. Uh, okay, Oracle, I think is a nice bottom move here. I mean, if it gets back into 83, 84, I mean, again. Nice market move today. Nice movement uh, in the stock yesterday based on earnings. So there goes Oracle. Again, you know, an old tech name that continues to work. Uh, pretty strong. I mean, you're not going to see many tech names right now that have a chart that looks anywhere near this. So I don't know if someone just knew Oracle was going to have a bang up quarter, but they've really been producing quite well. And, you know, sometimes it's not doesn't pay too much to be in sexy names, unsexy names like an Oracle, but it's been pretty good to the upside, man. Kind of like a value tech name. You know what this reminds me of? It kind of reminds me of IBM. Um, you know, and again, a name that continuously, you know, has a decent dividend. Well, I mean, IBM is 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 through the roof on that. Uh, but you know, about as steady as it comes. Look at this IBM chart. You want to look at something that's been a tech value play. I've owned IBM literally from day one. It's like I told you, I read that wealthy barber when I was like. 12 or 13 years old and just started investing like that for a while, uh, which is why I do have, you know, the Exxons and the IBMs and Apples and all that uh, for a very, very long time here. But um, straight up to the upside here for a name like IBM, this name also working today, only up 1.5%. But hey, I like Oracle. I think that that needs to be bought on any dips as well, man. Buy the strong names in a strong market. Makes sense. And NASDAQ now up 4%. We just got another piece out as uh, of our TQs. It just broke the level there. It went up to 25 through 25 and we actually got a piece out there at 33 so sorry 30 it's not 33 now we got 31s uh out there on the tq so so far so good we had it late on that first bump we took a late fill on that number unfortunately you guys saw it. The number really happened quite fast. We were able to get it. Uh, sorry, the number at 8.30 that went up quite fast before we got confirmation. Then it came out. We were able to take a little bit, buy some dips, and now we're trying to get back to the highs of the market here. Although that NASDAQ halt little situation there was pretty funny. I have no idea where it would have gone uh, if, if it didn't do that. So let's see if the TQs still has some movement to the upside. All right, let's go on to Boeing. Sean, you were mentioning the uh, daily chart and what it looks like for Boeing yesterday. This monster move, 120 all the way to 190 now, just took out that high from uh, yesterday on not only this move initially this morning with this UAL announcement, but uh, the CPI helping. If you missed it, 200, or potentially anyways, it's 100 guaranteed plus 
the option to purchase the, an additional 100 planes. So if it is uh, 200 total that they end up getting, I saw the number down here, it's like 43 billion in value. So just a massive, massive order uh, from United Airlines going to Boeing for the 787 Dreamliner. Nice look on top of what happened yesterday. Yeah, look, Boeing, the other thing that Boeing did too is if you look at uh, if you look at the daily chart, it did break this uh, little flag that it had on here. That 180 level finally uh, clearing out and breaking out on the daily once again. I think you, you look, you get to 197, 200. That's going to be that area. Uh, maybe some concern here, but if you're just looking at the overall trend, I like the fact they're getting continual orders and you keep seeing positive catalysts. It got that. You, I mean, people have been calling it the Kramer bottom, but uh, it's the double bottom. And then when you put in a higher low, that's a great sign. 50 and 200 cleared uh, on the daily as well. So it was pretty much all systems go. We got a crazy wick there, but it's essentially 190 is where I'm looking for. That's where we just dipped back down into in front of that number. So this was already pretty strong. Dipped to 190 and then took it out. So this is something that at least, because I don't know well, I don't know if I'll be able to see 93. And Amazon's at 95, so I don't know if I'm seeing a level like that again. But this wouldn't actually take much of a move for it to dip back in uh, to where it broke out from um, at 8.30 when the CPI number came out. And that's that 190 area that I'd be looking for here on Boeing. Just want to play the trend to, as long as it wants to continue to the upside. And then it would be 197 to 200 that I'd look for any shorts over there in Boeing. So positive catalyst, mark it up. I'm not going to not going to be too, uh, what's the word? I'm not going to get too fancy with this. I'm just looking for the long uh, off that 190. I just want to um, go over quickly here to Tesla. Tesla's not really doing much there. We talked about fading mm -hmm. off of that 180, maybe, maybe a little higher, 182, 183. Uh -huh. Uh, but it says it's not going to give you that. Like it went to 179 there, Tesla, and then, you know, pulled back pretty hard back down to 175. And, and that, you know, 175 would have only been up three bucks. But then you retrace to 176. And we are holding, excuse me, that 176 level. So 175 now has some resistance to it. Oh, oh, sorry, some support to it, hopefully, because there's the bounce off VWAP, 174.25. I just know this is a name that we're going to be looking at today. And a lot of you traders are going to be wanting to know uh, if there is a trade. So I would watch out for Tesla. It's definitely. I mean, a little, I don't want to say it's definitely, but, you know, the market is trying to trend a little bit higher here, as you can see for the market, basically back to its highs right now. And you can see Tesla, you know, going in the other direction here. So this actually looks pretty good, man, for like a 174 break back down to the downside here. I don't. Like, I don't want to be short, but if there's any name here, and I know it's up 5%, but, you know, if there's any name to be short, I just want to see, like, what's NVIDIA doing and AMD. So they're all pulling back a little bit. So let's just wait on that, but I don't want to sleep on the theory uh, of Tesla short still, like the thesis that we want to go short. So I think if this can pop to 180, 182 would be the best, but I think a start at 180 um, and then watch out for these levels. We were just here two days ago, so it's not like we can't get back pretty easily. That's actually a 183 top, so just be careful with Tesla. I still think there's a trade here. All right, I was just reading through um, the peak Fed funds right now, uh, expected to be 4.82. That's down from 4.98 uh, just a month ago. So if that is the case, that would mean less than 100 basis points to go now to get to that peak uh, Fed funds rate. So interesting. We'll see what happens tomorrow if we do get that 50 uh, basis point move. Here's Moderna. Wow. 12.5%, just taking out the highs back to the upside here. Uh, Moderna, obviously, the type of stock that can get going if it wants to. Uh, if you missed it this morning, they had positive data from, that's still uh, the UAL note. Uh, they had positive data on a uh, cancer vaccine, specifically for melanoma, when paired with a treatment from Merck. So uh, here we go. Now 13, 14%, big move up here, guys, for uh, mRNA. Yeah, and this is, <clears throat> look, Moderna is one of those stocks that you, you tend to want to get out of the way of it when it starts to get going here, but it is, I mean, it's right at one, well, it's 188, but 189, if you look at it on the daily chart, kind of a similar, similar but not similar to Boeing uh, because it's not as big of a move off of the bottoms, but when you make that break off the bottoms, a hard bottom there, and then you get like a nice little flag starting to put in, I think it needs to break 189. And if, 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 I'm, t if I'm looking at something and saying, okay, well, where would I short something? Oh, goodness. It's a tricky one because I say you, it's, it, it's easy to get run over on this. But you just saw that level. I don't know why it's not showing up there on the 15-minute. But on the daily chart, it shows pretty cleanly. Uh, so I'll stick with it here. 189 needs to break. 
This is a level where at least I know exactly where I'm wrong. It's like he's short 189, you're wrong at 190, uh, you allow it to go. And if it breaks that, I'm looking at like 197 into the upside. Very similar levels to something like a, like a Boeing in there. But that is absolute. it's, because remember this was down yesterday uh, because it, it was in combination of uh, a Pfizer, a positive fi Pfizer study. And that was actually weighing on the stock. So it shook a lot of people out in yesterday's trade which is probably relieving some tension for it to go to that upside. So if it gets through 190, like it actually wouldn't surprise me if it did make a run towards that 197, if not even that 195. But my first look is seeing that resistance. Well, until it breaks, resistance is resistance. And that's been there for the greater part of a month now, uh, that 189 level. So I'll probably be taking my shot on Moderna. Someone was saying, it, saying uh, Neil, look at this one a short earlier. And the reason not to is it was still like 4 or $5 away. And you know what? If it's going to go there and wick top at the open, sometimes that's an even better setup. Like if it goes this parabolic, wicks at the open right at 9.30, let's just say, breaks that level, and then slams right back down and rejects it, sometimes that's an even better entry point because you have a bunch of longs that get trapped uh, buying at that high. But I'd be out of dodge on any short if it broke 190. That 190 is huge. That's yeah, that's uh, wow. That's gonna be that's gonna be a good one. All right, guys. Thank you for right. watching uh, so far, man. And we're about to have the market open. Like this has been a wild day. We only have five minutes to go here before the market does open. We're gonna check out some of the imbalances. Look at this. Thank you so much again for the love, man. 2.1k, over 8,800 people watching right now. Let's see if we can get that to 3,000. Please hit the like button. We're actually gonna be live tomorrow as well at 1:45 to bring you the Fed, and that should be really. Really exciting after what we've seen today. So I say cheers to everybody. We're already switching over to water. I mean, we're not switching. We got a nice coffee here, but you know, let's keep this voice ready to rock and roll for you uh, here today as we look for some more opportunities. Market again at the highs, so that's good. We still hold on to our TQQ. So we're me and Neil are basically in the same trade here, both uh, in the queues. I want to check back on AMC quickly. Uh, not a name that. What? Uh, okay. Did anybody see this trade on AMC? So right here, we have 300,000 shares just sitting on the bid, completely marketable. Like, this is a live order right now. So, um, all right, here, let's check the imbalances. Maybe there's a big one here on AMC. Uh, all right, so now, is this, is these, are these updated? Yeah, 925, okay. Uh, so I'll just put them over here so we can watch the chart. Um, all right, so here we go. Uh, Apple sell, so they want to go sell side on Apple there. Look at this. So now we started to create a little bit of a downside move on Apple. Apple just went down a dollar uh, on that. So that's a nice little move there uh, for Apple. A there's AMC uh, with a bid. You see? It's there. It oh, wait a second. Is he keeps taking this down? No, this, there must be. I've never seen this before. Never, it a... keeps getting hit. See, now it's going back up. And then when the market, see, and now it's going down. That's so weird. I don't understand. I've never seen this happen before. It either stays somewhere. See, now it's following it up. That makes, but then it's gone, and then it follows it back down. I don't, I've never even really, honestly, guys, in my 21 years, I've never seen a rested that's order a, that's a act like order. that. Like, it gets pulled, it gets hit, it pulls, then he puts it, as it's going down, he keeps putting it and then pulling. So I don't know why this order is not getting hit every single time for the whole thing, but... Okay, this, it's, just, it's just acting. So I don't want to say I've never seen this before. I've seen this before. But just the way it's acting now. Like, if you want 44s, just sit there and take them. Yeah. Like, I don't understand. There, there has to be some dark pool games that someone's trying to play here. Yeah, you are 100% right. Whoever's talking about manipulation or something here on AMC, it definitely seems like there is something going on now as this is just a funny way this is just traded. It seems like a really um, dumb right there. I, like, algorithmic order. Like, it's why would you do that? It's, I don't. I, I have no idea. But yeah. that looks like something there uh, for AMC. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that is something. So, you guys, I don't know. Uh, I'm glad to show it to you. I mean, yeah. if that's if you're not hitting likes right now uh, for that, then I don't know. I mean, now you guys are seeing almost straight up like some somebody was trying to influence something there. I don't know. It, it's funny because but they're taking the fill. That's, that's the, weird the thing. thing. Like they're, they're actually buying. This I don't want to say it's manipulation. I mean, that's it doesn't. I mean, they're not really accomplishing anything right now. I mean, it's, we looked at this when it was at 50. It's now at 47. So let's just move on to something else now. But there it is. TQQ is a buy. It doesn't. I'm only. I'm in it not because I'm interested in the imbalance. Obviously, we go long the market. Uh, and I'm I, trailing this out, by the way. I'm kind of. Yeah, yeah. I. I mean, I'm still. You know what? I mean, 
I don't know. The market, I mean, let's just, all right, if we break, I mean, maybe if we break 24, if I'm already, the market is making a move down. Let's see, let's take a piece out there, 19 or 18. Uh, so we just took one more piece out there. I'm not afraid of this, but it's like, it, there isn't nothing wrong with taking a little bit of profit here because this can get sour pretty quick. If we take down this low, then I'm out, man. 2340, we take that down on the TQs, I'm out. The market is retracing back in. We talked about maybe shorting that Tesla through 174. That could be coming out pretty soon right now as well. So watch out. This market's going to have a couple slides uh, off the open, it seems like, anyways. Uh, maybe 4% is too much. We still get 50 points tomorrow, right? So, you know, the CPI only means something because we feel that it's going to affect what rates come out as, right? So if we already know what the rate is, then it's, you know, maybe that move was a little bit too premature to the upside here uh, into what is tomorrow. Well, what it could, it doesn't change anything for tomorrow, but it could certainly change something for next year. Like that's better than being a red number. Yeah, exactly. Like that's the sort of the thing. Like you, you could have them potentially like, you know, I'm not saying they're going to pause in the new year or, or slow down, but they could slow a little bit more. Just quickly, because this NCPL, it is on our watch list, a net capital uh, here. It's a low floater, but they did report uh, better than expected results. But the thing that concerns me, you have a bit of a double top lower highs it's been supporting three dollars but the last jump up could not take out the pre-market high uh, just quickly on the daily chart you have a lot of consolidation and chop support between 280 and three bucks so beneath 280 it's already made one high if it cannot make another this could be a sell for most of the day here i'm going to pay for some locates on this one if i can um, but i actually just put a trailing stop at 296 on the q's position and at the open i'll be watching that moderna as we're about to get the oh, bell sh- on and it is justin on the bell i turn around just to make sure uh, that justin's going to be on the bell it's been a Look wild one meta, already man. market is up a ton four percent and looking like it's trying to pull back a little bit here three two and one ring it All right, uh, here we go, man. The market is now open. I can't believe Meta's up to 122. Meta up 6.5% right now, saying, hold my beer, if you're looking at any other names. We're rocking. I want to try Meta at 120 uh, if that does come back in. It is a little bit of a fade here uh, in the TQs for a little bit. The Nasdaq is pulling back uh, slightly there. What is Tesla doing? Tesla looks like it wants to take that 174 downside right now. Oh my it actually just did. It went to 173.50. So I, I did get trailed out of the of the queues there when it took out 96, but that's like a, I got completely wicked out of it. But look at Moderna pull back off that 189 area. So obviously I didn't get my position. Uh, that, that, look, it sucks. I was looking for that open fade trade. It's pretty much come and gone here, but uh, Moderna, obviously a big time mover. Also watching some NVIDIA here, was only looking for relative strength in NVIDIA. There, it dips to 184. Now it's back at the highs. So NVIDIA actually continuing its breakout. Oh my Talk gosh. about a ridiculous strong stock that's going to likely lead me uh, to some short opportunities in Intel but this is one I only want to the long side I just got Boeing it looks like that's starting to dip back in uh, as well but I got to get in this NVIDIA train and 185 looks like the level I have to respect now all right, we finally there uh, shorted, and I just say finally because uh, it finally broke. I mean, I wasn't doing anything other than going this way, uh, but there it is right now. Tesla did finally break 174. We don't have to, again, like we're trying to make just quick little trade on the first piece. If we can make a dollar on the first piece, that's pretty decent for me. Uh, and I feel like we want to give this, you know, we're short at 174. We need to give this a little bit of room to the upside. Just I'm thinking like 176, honestly. I mean, that's 170. I mean, we can go to 177. What is that? 178 top side. I, I kind of want to be in this trade. I like the trade, and I think that there's a good possibility here to fade, especially if the NASDAQ does break, right? So let's average this in around this 176.50 if, if we're wrong uh, again, but up to 178. I just, I don't know. I, I like the short. If we're going to pick a short on something, I'm surprised we're not going down even more than this, though. So here we go. We are now 50 cents in the money uh, on this trade, but it just bounced off 173.50 again. So yeah, a little bit of little bit of back and forth here on Tesla, the only position I have on. Yeah, so I got into that Boeing trade. Then it's almost instantly it snapped through support levels. Uh, and then the same thing as well, almost the same thing happened when we got the dip there in NVIDIA. I just tried to get Intel at 29. 
uh, 90s. That's now 29.80. I'm not going to chase it too far, but I did get the dip here at NVIDIA. And when you see the market do what it just did, like we just rejected a 187 top. If it does a wick high like this, uh, then I want to make sure we're taking profit on the way in here. It's going to be that whipsaw action for the first five or 10 minutes. So I'm going to take some out in front of 186. I'll take some out in front of 187 if I can even see that as well. And I know, yes, long one, short the other. Um, but I, I don't mind doing that when you see relative strength or weakness. And that's exactly what I see uh, relative strength in NVIDIA and hopefully relative weakness uh, in Intel, which I was just able to get into to the short side at that 30 level. Brandon, Brandon, what's up, bud? Uh, a ton of strength, guys, in Pinterest to start. Uh, Tag 10% almost there at the highs. Bit of a pullback right now as the market continues to come in. But uh, market goes down, Pinterest going up so far. Really? Okay, okay. Um, we're still, man, uh, this just touched 173.12 uh, there for Tesla. So we just had 80 cents in the money, and then it's now adult. Now it's right back to flat for us. So let's put, I mean, maybe we waited a little bit too early there. I mean, I was at 173.02 trying to get a little cheeky with it. Let's see if it does want to pull back down now uh, into that. I just put a bid right where we made that bottom. So hopefully we can get a fill there, um, and then we'll work with Tesla after that. I mean, I like the trade, uh, like I keep saying, but it needs to print out for us uh, and take down that 173. If it does that, then we should, uh, you know, get out of, I'm going to get out of half, man, of this trade. We'll take a dollar. It's going to be, I don't think it's a tough trade today. It's just, you know, let's put some money in our pocket while we can. We did get, I said that the only trade I had on was Tesla, but of course I do have the cues on as well. That just broke through 24, so we got a piece out. Now I only have one small piece left. So hopefully we're, you know, we're able to absorb that and we don't have to worry about it. But for right now, it's the piece that we have on uh, and it's Tesla and the Q's right now for me so Tesla's right down into this level again hopefully we're able to pick something up uh, as a bid oh my god I was just bidding 20s again and we went down to 25 there oh man uh, we need a little bit of luck to get this Phil but hopefully Tesla can print that 73 level for us yeah, now the market's starting to now really come into the start. downside. So I'm looking for a second short here, obviously. I only got that Intel. NVIDIA is starting to take out support levels. Let's see if I got that one out on a little bit of a stop as well. So looks like NVIDIA is starting to come back on me. I dip bought NVIDIA once, able to get some profit out on it, and then it just ran my stop. I'm on the bit of Intel here in the 70s, and then I'll be bidding 60s and 50s. Always do sort of the same thing uh, when it comes to that one. But we had the scalp trade on NVIDIA. It's 186. It never even got back above 186, as you can kind of zoom in so you can see couldn't get it back above 186 to give the next dollar so we take it out one to one there and now you're trending back into the downside moderna you know you can like the levels all you want um, but that initial short at the open that was pretty much that opportunity to get the pullback and it went into 185 now it's just taking out 190 so it went 190 to 189 to 185 and then just took out 190 in a wick that went to 193 on my three minute chart so moderna still showing a lot of signs of strength but it just wick topped that 190 level again i mean if it starts to pull back off of this i do like wick top but that initial trade was the one i was hunting for uh, originally this ncpi by the way it's now trending but it's NCPL, sorry. Yeah. Uh, NCPL, that's my bad. NCPL, it just broke to the downside, so now it's trending into that short trade. Oh, I didn't actually get to look. It's so I have to go pay for those, but this is exactly what I was sort of fearing, uh, now looking for the shorts on this. Brendo? Uh, when we are looking at the past couple of days here, Carvana was up way more than 10%, uh, guys, but just got a nice, big, huge volume spike there. Uh, downside for CVNA. We're now $2 in the money right now um, on our Tesla trade. So, uh, so far, so good on this one. We were going to hold it $2 against us. We talked about that. Now it's $2 in the money. So, so far, so good uh, on that sort of risk to reward uh, here for us. So I'm pretty happy with uh, this Tesla trade. Needless to say, it's the only trade that we have on board. So, um, you know, you can take that for what it's worth. We do have the TQQs there, and we're waiting for Tesla as it is pulling back. Um, I was going to look at Roblox there, trying to take out some levels. We traded that yesterday to the long side and it was a great long trade uh, yesterday for me so that was Roblox yesterday was incredible uh, for that long and it looks like today it's trying to do something similar but uh, again you know started off nicely up to 35 and change this was a kind of a key level now we're trying to break back below that so I'm going to look at Tesla to, or sorry at Roblox today if we bump up watch out for that 35 level uh, Tesla 172 I don't know man we just touched 171.70 there uh, I, I just a little bit nervous 
not, I'm not, like I said, I'm not, not nervous about the trade. Just want to make sure that we take profits when profits are there. And I mean, Tesla right now is making that move down. The market is continuing. So let's just try to hold this. We're now 250 in the money. We talked about this 174 trade. So, you know, we'll slap a fail rate on Tesla as it's still pumping to the downside right now. Um, we talked about picking our poison, making sure that we traded something that we knew was going to be relatively weak. And we picked it out right here with uh, good old Tesla trying to bounce now maybe off 170 uh that that's probably a good level to get out man 170 for tesla let's see if we can get that yeah and speaking of uh stocks that are relatively weak or relatively strong we talked about the 200 period on uh, microsoft it's already bounced away from that but now i'm starting to look back to where we were looking for the dip you're not going to see 56s if you do well if you see 56s today you probably got bigger fish to fry on this stock but i think that 260 is starting to come back into play on a bit of a dip the other name that we liked is amazon uh, and I'm still waiting. Look, I'm still here. I haven't canceled the orders I had for the 90, in front of 93. I'm just going to be out in front of 93 looking for that dip buy uh, over there in Amazon. For now, the only position I have to the short side, because I didn't like shorts on NVIDIA, uh, I did like the shorts in Intel, and that's where we went to. But uh, I want to look at Meta very quickly, because this is also looking like an interesting name, as this starts to pull back in a little bit. And we talk about <clears throat> key level breaks. Well... 121 right here where we're sitting right now. This was like a previous support area. And of course, you've got a bit of a gap fill in here. So if we start hanging out above that price, this could be like a second salvo here for Meta. But I want to be patient with this. Microsoft is obviously pretty close to the levels that I do like there. Uh, and then just one last one, because I think we talked a little bit about uh, crypto. Without, at least I didn't look at Coinbase. The Coinbase starting to pull right back in uh, to $43.50. This was resistance, if you want to go back into last week on Thursday. So the channel break that Coinbase has put on here uh, with a bit of a relief happening in Bitcoin as well, it's starting to pull right back into it. So I'd be looking for this uh, for a dip buy in front of 43 and a half. All right. Um, 170, I mean... 173 here uh, on the minute is is looking pretty. Sorry, this is the minute chart right here. Sorry, that's a three minute chart. Uh, 173, like you know, as we're starting to fade back down here, VWAP's come down to 174. We have the 200 period right here at 171. It's trying to bounce off of that. 170, 150, 174. Uh, I just you know I don't want to miss you know, not, not taking out that bottom, but you know, I'm, I'm here for that on Tesla. If the market wants to give it back today, I feel like I'm in the right short. So let's see if we can't hold on to Tesla a little bit more here. What's up, Brendo? Uh, this EH, big mover yesterday, just popping back up on volume, trying to retake this support from late in the day, uh, even aftermarket yesterday, now up 1% after going right initially for uh, EHANG. Pinterest is really strong too as well. So okay. I, mean, I, see, I see you EH, but uh, Pins is getting pretty close to this 26 and a half on the daily chart. So I got to respect it if it gets there. I, I didn't actually put my stop order uh, to try the long if it goes through that level. I'm going to go ahead and do that when I get my opportunity. I think that's going to get real close. Going to get a reload here close to that 2980, sorry, 2990 on Intel if I can catch it. But yeah, I just want to make sure all my bases are covered on Pinterest. Oh, you're starting to get away from me, Microsoft. Now you're starting to go up. Yeah, because now you're starting to go. Uh, yeah, there's softy now. Short now trading. No, no, I was looking for the longs yeah, exactly. in front of 260. So it's at about 262 and a half. I just want to slide over to the three-minute chart so you can see it's been sort of gliding higher. I'm still looking for it to get back into that 260 level uh, before I jump into this. I don't think this is a time you want to be overly aggressive in terms of chasing things, uh, but I'm going to get a bit out there on Microsoft in front of the 260 in case we get down to that price. Apple, which is another name usually we're looking at here, I'd say it's about a similar level if it got to 148.50. So I always call these barometers. If both of these names break support at the same time, I'd probably just be looking to double down in short opportunities. And then I want to go back to UVXY here for a quick second because I did say if we held this channel long enough at the bottom and then you broke down $7, well, that could give the market another chance to rally. You're still in the midst of a bit of a channel here. So I think we're, we're in a bit of no man's land. Uh, when it comes to volatility in the overall market, so I'm not chasing any moves right now. Pinterest could be pin, Pinterest is a Pinterest big level is ripping, right? if it goes to that 2650. But uh, in terms of big tech, yeah, I'm looking at 75 break here on AMD. So if we're going to look at big tech, I was looking at Amazon. Uh, sorry, uh, Meta. At, I canceled that at 120. Probably should have kept it. In. I'm going to take a 75 break um, on AMD if it breaks 75. I think I like that one. Obviously, that bottom at 73.50 has been pretty sweet as well. If we do get a pullback down to 73.50, that's a long for me. So uh, we'll wait for that if that can come through. Wow. But for now, we'll go over to Brendan. We're looking for AMD long break or dip by to 73.50. Brendo. Wow. 
A night scope, guys, just uh, popping up and halting to the upside. Looks like a contract announcement coming through here for KSCP. Again, this is volatility, not news based. So halted right now at 210 there for night scope on a contract announcement. Oh, goodness. Yeah, watch out for that one. It's not a ton of liquidity on that one, so be, be careful. But uh, there's liquidity on Netflix, usually. And Netflix is through 330, Jeez. which is the entirety of the gap fill from uh, when it got destroyed back in April. Uh, so, look, this is a monster level at this particular point. Just looking at the 15-minute here, you can see 326 is where the support is. So, I, I don't think I'm giving $5 to any kind of a breakout trade. It's just a little bit too far uh, for me. But if I go to the previous high, this is about $292.20 or so. So I think risking a dollar, uh, depending on where I'm able to even to get in here. Actually, no, yeah, I was just able to get some 33.50. So it's about a dollar and a half that I want to risk. Uh, but this is a monster breakout level. So yeah, we are buying a bit of a top. But hey, sometimes that's what you have to do. Pinterest is at a level like that if it gets to 26.50. I think 3.30 as well uh, will stand out there. I'm adding to my Intel final. I finally was just able to get some Intel shares there uh, as it gets back up to that upside. And Intel is the one stock I love short. At least for now, I was looking at some firm. I didn't really see anything that I love, so just added back into this in front of that 30 level. If it breaks 30, I am willing to get out of Dodge. And then Moderna, congratulations if you just took the breakout. I mean, I, look, I, I went for the short at the open, wasn't really fast enough to get that first initial pullback. It is now broken through 190 and continues to trend to the upside. This is a runaway freight train with 197, the next level on the daily. Okay, I'm going to get out 172.25 if we break on Tesla, man. Let's just put that $2 in our pocket and get there it is. We'll get out of there right now. Let's just cancel our other uh, Tesla trades as we go because there we go, new position alert uh, in the long for AMD. I just got to make sure that I've canceled all of these Tesla trades uh, now as we punch through uh, on AMD. Let's see if we can get going now. We'll take a 9s, a 10s, and 11s as we go upside now. Just trying to cancel some of these trades as we just switched up uh, our game plan a little bit I don't you know it's I'm not going to be short Tesla um, and long AMD uh, if I if I want this market to rally we're going to pick on a name here uh, that we know is pretty strong uh, for AMD so let's go the market now just breaking through that 50 period again to the upside so we went over Neil was talking about sort of the strength there in Nvidia a little bit um, and AMD wow like we were just at what 15s there we got some out there at 15 and then it just in one tick went all the way back sub 75 again so wow this is is a very, very slippery slope here uh, for these names today. I feel like we could, there, look at Tesla. That was a great out uh, right there. Saved ourselves a dollar uh, on that out. But let's go, let's go long side now. TQQ's all the way back up, man. We were waiting uh, to get out for flat if it came through. That didn't happen. Uh, so now we'll hold out for this AMD. Look, I don't want to take 10 cents. Let's go upside here, AMD. Breaking through 75. Is 6% too much? Nah, you can go more than that. So let's see if that's going to be a possibility here today for Advanced Mike. Grow. Um, I'm already out of like 30% of this trade. Hopefully we can get some more upside now. If we do dip down though, man, I mean, I do we, we got to keep respecting some of these levels, maybe 74.50 uh, if we're wrong here on AMD, but it's a nice breakout for now. Yeah, and uh, look, we, I just took a bit of profit out there on, uh, on Netflix when it just broke uh, the high of the day. So it got a dollar in the money, but I want to go over to NVIDIA because, look, I got shaken out of NVIDIA a bit, didn't get back in that 183, happened a little bit too quickly for me. And now I'm going to look for a re-entry anywhere. It's, it's either going to be off VWAP 185 here, but if it continues this break, 187, we could be looking at some top top here and that one and a break from 187 into 190. I want to give it some room. So if it's going to hold above 187, consolidate for the next minute or so or a couple of minutes, then I'd look for a break of this consolidation top, which is about 187 three quarters. Otherwise, let's look for the dip back into 185 and jump back in on, on this train here. Uh, the name that we just got into, Netflix, obviously uh, continues to go higher. Like I said, scalp the first buck. I'm looking for a dip in front of that 329 to be able to get more shares into this trend and then looking 335 up top for the next next level to the upside. Brendo? Uh, a few clean energy related names popping up here. Here's one of them. NOVA in New York, 12 and a quarter percent, just tagged 24 there on a big move. Nothing specific to that one. There's also, uh, I forgot to mention this pre-market, but uh, First Solar, FSLR popped up. Uh, they're going to be added to the S&P 500 coming up this month, guys. 
Well, for solar, okay, yeah, that's coming up, uh, I guess, on Friday, right? The third Friday of December. Uh, on that, we'll double check to see when it's being added. But all right, AMD did break a little bit below 75. I should not have got out. We need to get back in uh, on that one. We'll buy some more here at 75 again. A little bit nervous when it broke lower, but we'll buy it right back, basically at the same price uh, as it dipped below 75. And I took some out as we watched the Nasdaq there, but it just came right back up. So let's just buy that again and put an offer now as we get up to 75.15, uh, taking a nice little piece out. Uh, oh, come on, get up to, oh, we just bounced. Did I get that fill? No, I did not. 75.15 might be a solid fill there. So uh, we'll just keep on watching it, man. Uh, and yeah, so far so good here uh, as we go. Uh, AMD, a nice trade. I know you got a nice one there uh, on Netflix, so that should be good uh, moving forward. But yeah, right now, just kind of like watching these markets. We're just bouncing around, thinking about a reshort maybe in uh, our friend Tesla as we're right back up to VWAP after taking some nice outs. Uh, first out was a dollar, second out was two dollars, um, and then now it's just bouncing again right there off that spot. So uh, yeah, you know, Tesla, Q's, and AMD right now, we're gonna go, well, Temporarily, we're going to take all those for wins, but AMD still needs some work to do. Uh, I, I, I don't like that it's hanging around, uh, especially since this market's blasting. So uh, I feel like Meta might be a better long. And Speaking of blasting, Netflix. we'll we'll slap the fail because 30 oh, no. did break on Intel there as it's now jamming to the upside. So this is looking, I hate to say it, but it's looking pretty strong here. Oh, this, I got a crazy wick. Uh, on the 8th, it looks like. But either way, uh, this will this wheel looks like on the 3-minute. You're going to get this consolidation break. We had shorts into 27.60, so 29.60 uh, and 70s each time. You are holding the 50 period, so I have to acknowledge how strong this looks on the daily as well. So, you know, if we're going to hold above 30 bucks, I'll start respecting this thing. Uh, two said long side, I've jumped back into, a, not AMD, NVIDIA for the long side of the trade. And I just saw UAL, and I, see, I saw a couple people in the chat talking about this. Uh, I was UAL making the order uh, with Boeing. Uh, UAL in the tank, down 3%, and it was just beneath. It actually had just taken out the lows at 42. I'm not really sure if there's anything new on this or if it's just sort of selling off on this order news. But yeah, UAL in a bit of a tank here, but it's bounced off the 42 low uh, that you saw earlier on, uh, sorry, late last week as well. So maybe holding this 42 level. I think it's just, there's no new news here, just maybe some continu continuation uh, to the downside um, after that, or that order that they put through with Boeing. All right, come on, Sean. No more selling AMD. Uh, all right, so I got it. I'm just, you know, talking to myself here. We sell <laughs> trades sometimes way too early uh, when we've got winners on board, right? So let's just talk to ourselves uh, and tell us not to get out of this one. Uh, it's tough, though, sometimes, right? You get the winners, and then you see, I get scared. We talked about this yesterday, um, where the winners are there, and then all of a sudden they evaporate, uh, and they're gone, just like this, right? AMD, we were just got some out. We just got some out at the, in the 20s, right? And, like, so we talked about this yesterday with Arun. It's, it's play your your style of trade like you know all these ins and then here's the outs so now when it dips back down I don't have you know as many shares on here as obviously I did in the past and we actually now only have 30% left uh, on this trade to begin with so you know that's kind of the style of trade that I'm doing here uh, waiting for moves to happen um, and then scalping them to you know one way or the other see I'm gonna take a piece out right now at 95 so there we take another piece out there at 95 at sorry oh yeah 74.95 uh, right there because we're noticing that this is a dip down move right here. I am going to buy some more of AMD when we get down near 74. So uh, that's on my radar right now. And that's about all that I'm looking at. I know Neil's got a couple names as Watch well. Watch out PayPal here. Pay yeah, okay. So that's what I was going to do. Now it's time, in my opinion, anyways, start looking for new names. Um, you know, uh, we're in some names here. If they're trading great, that's fantastic. But you always do, not always, but there is opportunities out there. There's over 7,500 names we could trade in both markets. So let's go find the best ones. Yeah, I was just noticing like anything that's continuing to break out the market and just just to show you guys here, in the market, you had the big move on CPI, and then you've been pulling back. And on a 15-minute, like the last three candles are going to be overall red. I just got a reload in Netflix in there. But anything holding the highs is going to show you said relative strength. Intel just came crashing back into the downside. Yeah, they so are. This, uh, this is my 15-minute. It just came crashing back in. So now it's trying to reject this 30-level break. It's got to hold above 2980. Otherwise, I think you've got... 
I think you got a fail breakout here in Intel. So it's got to hold this 2980 level. I just bought a dip here in Netflix uh, at that 329 level, but I'm even thinking I should be scalping this again in front of that 331 area. Uh, Netflix has been relatively strong, kind of like PayPal. Like it was holding some of those highs, but now it's even putting a bit of a pullback as it's showing some signs of weakness there. So I want to see something that's going to hold out uh, that breakout that it's been putting in. And one of those, for the time being, has been Pinterest. So Pinterest, I mean, for the time being, I say, but it got to that 26.50 on the daily, right? Rejected that level and is now pulling back. So if it comes to 26, I want to jump into this party to the upside, but I'm still looking long if it does take out that 26 and a half uh, level up, to, up top there. Brendo? A uh, little electronic component maker. This is in the uh, renewable energy space as well. They make batteries and, and electronic components that uh, make batteries. So Fluence Energy up on a nice beat here. So they reported uh, this morning in the pre-market here. Huge, huge move. 33% just took out that last high on the daily chart for FLNC. FLNC. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, all right. So more more movers uh, happening. What's up, Randy? Uh, I see Randy. Oh, you know what? You know what's a key level here right now? Google's at a hundred right now, so uh, you can watch out for that. I mean, it's just pulled back off of hundred, but that is Google. Uh, nice. I mean, look at this move. Wow. You want to talk about a name that for some reason is like hold my beer today? Google. Like this is billions in market cap today uh, due to CPI. Uh, up to ninety nine and change here for Google. Wow. Uh, we missed the reload there on AMD. That's my bad. We should have been at seventy four fifty. We weren't seventy three fifty. Sorry. Uh, but there it goes, man. Breaking through. 99 and now it's a nice little upside move here for Google and still going now breaking through 99 and still making that move uh, upside so Holy yeah I'm looking Sorry. at some charts here yeah I know that Moderna just rocketed through that level eh what 190 where is it now it's at 198 yeah no, no, no. okay I, I mean <laughs> I mean, we're speechless a little bit on some of these moves, but we've seen this happen before. I just don't want to get caught buying the tops. That's, you know, that's the main thing. So I've got to try to find some names that are pulling back as I look at Microsoft. I mean, Amazon's kind of doing nothing. I wanted to go to, to I wanted, I was hoping that Google was closer to uh, 100 there uh, because that would be a decent fade, but we need to wait for that to happen. Amazon barcoding right now. So trying to figure out what this means here for Amazon. Uh, we're already at 96. This name's only only up 5%, uh, but there's a nice little top here at 95. Wondering about that right now. Uh, if you think the futures are going to take a dump, this is a great little short. I think I'm going to test it here uh, on Amazon, but I'm not in love with it. Uh, but let's try a short here on AMZN. Yeah, look, that level in the dailies here on Moderna, I said it was about 190. It's 197 and a half, uh, but we're now at 198. So if there's going to be a turn, uh, if you anticipated this was like the second one in here, now, obviously I wish I had taken the long when it broke that 190, didn't do it. So going to have to move on to the next. And if a consolidation short where I can risk, if I can risk less than a dollar shorting Moderna, I'm going to love it. So that would either be here, failing to take out this high, getting a short back in here at 197 and a half, give it to the high, oh, or if it, if it makes one last stab through this high of the day, gets to $200, I'd short off the 200 level. So either way, uh, it's now at a level where I would take a shot at it uh, to the short side. You're better off sitting it out uh, finding key levels to trade off of than trying to force things uh, in some of these names. I was just able to get pins uh, because this one just continues to go. It is. It just broke that 26 and a half. So I was looking for a bit of a dip at 26 even. It got to 26.10. Now it's taken out or at least attempt to take out that top level on the daily. It's a monster level on the daily chart that's been... It's been a lot of resistance here, here on Pinterest. And I said the day it came to this level, I was going to have it. And I've been saying that for... I don't know, months now it almost feels like. So here it is. It just broke that 26.50. I got 52s. I want to give this one some room uh, to be able to finally break out. They got an upgrade. Um, that's one of the catalysts that they had, obviously. But let's see what has happened with Pinterest. Netflix continues to churn to the upside. It got to 332 up there and then pulled back again. So 333 and then pulled back another time. But I think the trend is pretty solid here. If I can get 334, 335, that's what I'm looking for ultimately to the upside. All right, um, so yeah, about that Amazon 95 level. Uh, yeah, that didn't hold too well right now. We are short at 95.05 uh, uh, right here. So let's see if that can hold out a little bit for us uh, right now. But yeah, so far, a nice little downside move for Amazon would be nice, but I'm going to get out if it takes out 95.50. I'm not going to hold uh, for these crazy moves to the upside. We could be wrong on a name and be fine with it. So let's wait to see what happens here for Amazon. Hopefully not ticking out to the upside. Upside uh, is Amazon because what's falling down for us now uh, is this name right here. Uh, our friend 
AMD has just come in a little bit now. Uh, so we just picked up a bid there at 60, right up to 80. So that's going to be a good one here for AMD as it looks like we'll lose a little bit here. Let's take a piece out at 84. Might as well do that for AMD as we just took a long down there. Wow. Um, Amazon is going to break higher, it looks like. We are. I am sitting here at 35 to get another piece. And then if it breaks, then we're gone. So let's not um, you know think twice about that one. Uh, what else just happened there? Nothing. So OK, um, just, just making sure that all of our trades are still here. Amazon looking for, oh, we just missed this that 95, 35. Long. You're short Moderna? Yeah, that might not last long. No, it really might not. I got 199 half, but I still, like I said, if it got up there and sort of checked back, uh, that's a trade I would look for. So if I can risk less than a dollar, that's exactly what I'm going to try and do here. Um, look, you can trade any way you want on some of these names, but I kind of feel like if it breaks that 200 level, and I know I'm wrong, and I think there's an opportunity here to take that short. I was just, like I said, I just got into some Pinterest. I still have NVIDIA, which I need to get to 188 before I get excited about it uh, to that long side. So I do have some longs that I like, and there's nothing wrong with them. Uh, but when I see a level like this, and there's about 100,000 shares on the offer as well, at that 200 level, which doesn't matter when it's done 6 million shares. Like, it will chew through that. It's more the psychological level, that 200. And if it does a wick top on me and I get automatically stopped out, I don't mind jumping back into the trade. But I am going to have a hard stop on this. I don't want to... I'm staring at it because I think it's going to break any, any second now. But I know where my out's going to be. Uh, I want to hold on to some of these longs. I want to add to Pinterest if I can, by the way. If I can add to Pinterest on a consolidation above that big level, it's such a monster one that I think it can be a nice little trend uh, for me to set upside. Ooh, well now you're starting to come down here. Once I get to about a little better than one-to-one, -one, I want to take some of this off because it's been a moving freight train. That's this essentially right in here at about 198 and a half. Actually, a little bit better than that now that I look at it. And then I'm going to shoot for about 194 uh, on Moderna. Now, if it gives me multiple chances to get back into this, then I can think about holding out a little bit longer than that. But I always want to pay myself out as it starts to work because look at this trend to the upside. It is a counter trend trade. And when there's a counter trend trade, you want to make sure you're ringing the register. I always want to make sure I'm ringing the register on the way back in. So I just took about a buck and change, and now I'll look for about three to maybe 350 on the rest of this one. Uh, if it gives me a reload, fantastic. It doesn't have to, though. All right, um, just so you guys understand, uh, Neil and I are more scalpers, obviously. We had a rune here uh, the other day. And um, yeah, look at what just happened to AMD. I mean, it came down, uh, we got the fill, then we got out. Why isn't my fill right here now? This fill just moved. We actually got filled down there. Uh, and then a nice little upside move. I don't know. I've never seen that happen before. Uh, but okay. Uh, right now, Amazon just came yeah, right back in again uh, to the downside. So here we go. Amazon, give me those. Oh, I didn't even realize how far we were down. Uh, right now, we got a nice little trade here on Amazon after the reload. Give me those O2s. I'm at O2. We need O2s, Amazon. Uh, okay, it didn't give it to me. I'll punch out. Oh, no, we missed everything. Uh, okay, hopefully it comes back in. There we go. We just got an eight. Hopefully we can get an O2 for Amazon. This is a big trade for me right now. Uh, you guys know, if I'm going to average into something uh, and it comes down like this, Whoa, give us those O2s. Sorry. There it is. Yes, sir. Uh, so a nice little out there for O2 for us uh, on Amazon. So, yeah, nice, good hold for us, man. Good hold for us uh, on this one. Uh, there goes Amazon. Nicely back in. We're not going to die in a sword here with AMD. We have the Amazon short and we like it. So, so far, so good on that one. But uh, we do have to go over to the big desk. And don't worry, Neil and I'll be back to review all these positions. So far, are so good today. Bang up morning, Brendo. I hope you're doing well as well. Hey guys, yeah, uh, brought to you by Chart Prime. They offer top notch indicators that find points of resistance, chart patterns, pivot points, and so much more. They're having their biggest sale of the year. Get 40% off right now, guys. Check out Chart Prime, link on screen. Shout out to them. Uh, happening now, coming your way, all about CPI this morning. Uh, we were all sitting here waiting. It came. Better than expected to the downside. This is uh, was the headline right after. Yeah, retail stocks specifically showing a bunch of strength. I'll show you a few coming up here, but uh, retail uh, catching a bit off of uh, better than expected uh, November CPI print there this morning. Wow, big numbers right across this board so far. 3.3 there for the composite. 3.4 for the NASDAQ 100 and composite leading the way so far. Uh, small caps catching a bit as well. 3.1% for the Russell 2000, 2.4 for the S&P, 1.54. The Dow, yeah, I saw this one, Palantir, huge day. Got all the way up to eight almost oh before a bit of a pullback. 6.8% right now for PLTR. Uh, XPANG as well, resuming its big move to the upside. Seven and a half for XPEV, guys, back to you.
Xpeng. I mean, yeah, I mean, these Chinese names. I was actually looking at Alibaba before, and I was actually going to trade that one right now. I know uh, I didn't look at any of them. Yeah, but you know what, guys? Let's go, man. I mean, there's dancing chickens here. Uh, like, like, this Amazon trade is now 80 cents in the money, uh, and we were just like... Nah, let's let's keep shorting it, man. We, we we knew we wanted this name short side. Obviously, the market's participating, and that's starting to go down. So on that note, we cleared out immediately out of our AMD. We have a very very small piece left, just holding it. Uh, but AMD, good clear out on that one, man. Uh, it's trying to break a little bit lower right now with the market. So um, let's just keep on absorbing that. The TQQ and the AMD trades. I know they're both long, but I am thinking about getting out of some of this. Remember where we're going to get out if we take that bottom. 20 2360, we're going to get out of this. Now, I've actually changed this. It was going to be 2240, sorry, uh, 2340, but now we're going to get down here. That's where we're long. Uh, see if we can get out right now on the TQQs if we break below this 60 level because, man, our Amazon was just cooking right there. So nice downside move for Amazon. We took out some nice profits on that. Let's take out one more piece now just in case. Uh, I don't know, just in case of what, but if the market does fade out a little bit, check back in on our Tesla. Damn you, Tesla! Uh, we should have held that, but that's that's the life of a scalp. We should have we should have got back in when we were noticing that 173. But there it goes. I was going to get out at 170 anyways, so we lose two dollars on that. Well, we make two dollars, but we give up the two dollar move there as wow, Tesla. Good good look on that for everyone in the chat and everyone that was talking about it. We talked earlier that we wanted Tesla short. We got it. It's just too bad because it should be eight, seven dollar, eight dollars in the money. But we let it go, so that's all good. Uh, the short's definitely printing right now. Your Moderna must be nice. Well, it did. So Moderna broke two hundred. I said if it wick top two hundred, I would just jump back into the trade. So it wick topped. I got out at two hundred. It got to two hundred one twenty, twenty five actually. I jumped back into the short. I have some residual of my cough. I am feeling a heck of a lot better, but I have some cough still going on there. Uh, but I just got back into the short, was able to scalp some out of front of 198, can it get some out of front of 196? And then I think hold for VWAP. It's a stronger move that it's now wick top that 200 um, after maybe getting some people out, essentially, uh, that short trade and then coming right back in for us. I did grab coin on the dip. I was sort of talking about that 43 and a half where we were at 8.30 on the breakout. I was just able to get some back out. I got some 44s and got some 43 halves in there right off that breakout price. Took some out when it reclaimed 44. As a matter of fact, I want to get some orders out there at 44, uh, 25 as well, at least in front of that three quarter level. And then if it gets into 45, I do like that level uh, as well. Netflix is pulled back in. I got the dip at that 330. It never really gave me that breakout to give me that 334, but as long as it holds this 329 area, I want to stay net long in Netflix here and give this one a little bit of room. So it's still showing a lot of signs of strength, relative strength Netflix, but if it can't hold 229, Jeez. you could see that 325. And for those of you still watching that NC, what is it, that NCPL uh, stock, I was, I did have to pay for locates. It got right up to that top again and then rejected another lower high at that 320 level. So it just continues to reject that high of the day. I do now have those locates. So I, next time it pops, I am going to be shorting it. All right, I'm going to review uh, this AMD. Well, I'm not going to review it. I mean, I'm sitting right here. I want to see if we can hold that 74 level. Um, I think it, I mean, I was going to buy some. And we have a great little trade here happening uh, for us on uh, Amazon. So let's just test this at 74. It looks like it's going to break right now. There is some negativity here, and I don't really know why so much uh, for AMD, but it is coming right into 74 bucks. Uh, so if it does break out from there, then let's just get out of this trade. Uh, uh, and see what happens next. So 73, I'm just putting it very, very simple, man. Like if we break lower, I'm just gonna get out. I, I don't even, I'm not even gonna let it go too, too, too much further down uh, than 74, 74 breaks. So we're gonna watch out for that one. Here it comes right in right now on that break side. I just want to honestly, I, I keep saying that story about when Pratt asked if he could punch himself in the face, but like this Tesla, huh? we were short at Why? 175. Now, uh, it, uh, sorry, 174 break. It's down to one, like this should be $8. Like we, we got out there so stupidly, it, but it did make a move back up. Remember I was like, yeah, we got out, but we should have reshorted that name. And I'm not, like I'm not a Tesla hater. I mean, I got out of Tesla 
months ago, which was good for me. It wasn't good at the time, uh, but, you know, this name definitely fading out a little bit there, Tesla. But look what's happening to Amazon. I mean, this name continues to get flattened as well. I'm going to take another piece out. I mean, let's go. We've done chicken dinner winner a little bit too much. Let's just go awesome right now and go a little bit of diamond hands because Amazon has been good for us, man. Uh, we held that against us about 30 cents. Now it's come right back in. Nice downside move. And by the way, there goes AMD. We'll flash that that guy uh, to the downside right now as the market is absolutely collapsing. There goes AMD breaking through 74. We'll take the L. We'll take the L on AMD right there, which is completely fine. We'll just hope that Amazon continues its move to the downside. Basically, Neil, hold your shorts from what I can see. Yeah, the only one I have now is Moderna because I did get wicked out of that, uh, that Microsoft. I just rang the register on Coinbase again because it cannot seem to break this 44 with any gusto. Uh, so I'm going to put my stop. My stop was already in at 43.50. I actually have to adjust it for the fewer shares. If we take out a fresh low, then this bounce isn't going to work. I just got Microsoft. Been waiting for 260 on Microsoft essentially all morning. Well, 260 is here now. Uh, 260 is here on the bid, and there's not a lot of size on the on the bid from last I checked, at least when I was looking at it, but it was where there was a consolidation on the pullback at 8.30. So when we had that big move, obviously, uh, there was an initial pullback. Microsoft held 260. I'm not seeing anything on that even dollar level, but I got the long in front of it. You kind of know where I'm going to be. I know where I'm going to be wrong on that 260 level on Microsoft. Netflix now pulling back and not holding that 329. It's going to have to get out of Netflix. That one not holding up very well. The only long that I I think is continuing its breakout and I obviously it's a big it's a bigger level and Pinterest is right back up at that top I have yet to take any shares out of Pinterest because of the weakness in the market I'm gonna do so once we get back uh, toward the high of the day here because I, it's bucking the trend for now but when you see the market come down it does dictate to me that I should be paying myself a little bit on this Pinterest long Yep, we just put it out. Uh, we just tweeted out, ding, it's Amazon short time. Uh, and there it is right there. We just got out at 88 uh, right there for Amazon. So that's about a buck. 40 or so on that trade right there. I still feel horrible. I don't feel horrible for getting, I do feel horrible for getting out of <laughs> Tesla, but at least I gave the trade uh, to you traders out there, and hopefully we we're all able to make a little bit of money on that one. Uh, I, look, I'm happy. I'm happy that we were able to cash out a little bit uh, on that trade, and it's still one of my top stocks today uh, for sure, although Amazon is handling that uh, level for me right now. All right, AMD went down too far now, so we're going to buy it here. We can't, like I said, just like we we didn't reload it uh, down there. Now it's it's come in a little bit. You're back down to those pre-market bottoms, and they're not pre-market bottoms. I mean, the pre-market bottoms are here, but this is that bottom after the number that we pulled back into there. Uh, so let's go long on Amazon, on Amazon, on AMD right now, and see if we can hold this 73 level. Uh, this should hold, uh, but again, you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda in this market, you know, you just got to trade what you see. So here's a nice little pullback for AMD, and there it is again. You know, you can't be a scalper and not take 30 cents when it happens for you or whatever that was, 25 cents when it happens for you that quickly. So there it is right now, a nice little out on that reload. So what we lost there, we just made back in less than 30 seconds. So uh, nice take for that one. Uh, Amazon still battling, still battling, but a nice little bump back up there. We literally have 10% left of that trade, so that was a good one uh but yeah so far so good on this amd long uh that we just just put on guys and what a strong move there by microsoft so microsoft just bounced off 260 just got the 261 half that's going to be vwap as well so as always if i get a bounce off a level like that i'm usually taking something out in front of vwap if we see 63 64 again going to respect the fact that like you have a range that's now been put in. This opening range is basically the same range that we had post the 830 CPI number with a 260 bottom and a 264 top. So we see 264 again or anywhere near it. I'm going to be getting some shares out there. Moderna is making another run at that high of the day. It's a super strong stock. I always say, you know, make sure you're paying yourself out. I was able to get some 98s in there. I have a 96 bid, a 196 bid that is. But the next time we test that 201, I'm not letting it get through that high of the day. I'm respecting the high of the day at all times uh, on Moderna. Up 21% runaway freight train that stock is, uh, to be sure. Pinterest is back up at the high. So I think this trend for the long is looking like it wants to continue. This time, as I said before, you know, I will take some shares out. I was able to get a pretty solid dip in there, not quite into 296, but I need to be paying myself at least a little bit and ringing said register. Not looking any gift horses in the mouth as this continues to trend to the upside, Brendan. I uh, just saw Alibaba pop up on uh, volume guides. Back to the downside a little bit here, back to 93 anyways. Uh, Chinese state media just saying the uh, number of COVID cases in Beijing 
Uh, rising rapidly once again for uh, Baba. All right, so the number of cases rising just like money, 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 right money, now. Good money, trade here for money, AMD, money, man. We're now money. 70 cents in the money uh, on that one. But we did take a piece out at 74 and then again at 74.10. So now we're starting to go back up to the upside right now. We have 70 cents now in the money on AMD on the reload. Like, if there's not, again, like, this is about, you know, go long, go long, tr wait for the dip get out once it cracks lower, wait for some support down there that we found, and then rate right up again, rate right back to the upside on this trade. We did get out of one more piece. Now we got the last piece on board here for Amazon. This is gonna be my number one stock, although now, you know, AMD is trying to make a move as well. Uh, but so far, so good on all these names today as, uh, yeah, we're, you know, we're up more than we were yesterday uh, right now. So it's so far, so good. These are the kind of days that we wait for as traders, right? You wait for moves, and I think today, Today, you know, although the market's pulled back a little bit here and we're not super happy, but you still got to like the fact that you're up 3.6, 3.245% right now on the NASDAQ and some of these names like that Palantir, man. Shout out to Henry. Shout out to everybody that's sort of been bottom picking. It's a very dangerous game and it hasn't worked basically all year. Uh, but some of these levels right now, you may want to think about like taking some levels out here uh, if you've been bottom picking. Tomorrow, we still have the Widowmaker coming, right? I mean, that could be bad tomorrow. If he takes, we know it's going to be 50. That's fine. But if he takes a hawkish stance uh, about some of these numbers and like kind of throws a little bit of cold water on this rally, these numbers can come right back in tomorrow. So there's a lot of companies that really are performing super well that have gotten some bump ups recently, like this Palantir. Uh, I, I saw DraftKings. It was 6%. I don't know what it is now, so it's pullback. This is what I'm saying. There's a lot of names right here that are in pullback mode. So just be careful. I don't want to short. Uh, sorry, I do want to short. I'm short Amazon. I want to be careful about shorting some of these bottoms that have just been put in maybe right now. So even DraftKings back here to 1480 seems like there is a little bit of a top there. We've sort of made our bed right here today, and man, it's a comfy one. So let's just sort of wait to see where this market goes from here. The only mistake for me was just selling Tesla a little bit too early, but we're going to go one, two, three, four for four today uh, trading. So yeah, it's a pretty good one. Yeah, I'm seeing some resistance here again at the high of the day on Pinterest. Like they got some legs out there when it took out that high at 60s, 26.60s, uh, the lower high anyways. And I'm going to get some more shares out in front of 70. Just want to respect the fact that it's starting to slow down. And, it, you know, past 10 o'clock, you put in that opening range. A lot of times you do see a bit of compression uh, in the trend at least. Uh, and if that's going to happen, I want to be geared up towards a dip buy. Coinbase is starting to go again, but it rejected 44 the first time. It might reject 44 here again. I'm not adding to this position, but if we break out from here, I'm just thinking VWAP or bust. If we break the lows, this could be in some trouble. I was looking over at Silvergate, just looking for some shorting ideas, really shorting opportunities. This is one that I've usually gone to the short side. Silvergate just broke $20 and is down 9% and absolutely cratering Ooh. here, so watch out. Uh, this one could be, it's getting ugly, that's why I look at this and say to myself, watch out. Uh, Moderna just took out the high, said I'd respect it if it took out the high. Oh, that's right, I, I'm going to accidentally end up winning on a long trade uh, on Moderna, but let's get, let's get real about it. I didn't want that long, I had just taken some profit out on the short and hadn't adjusted my stop order. So uh, Moderna is now broken through that 201. It was 201.20, it's made a fresh high as well. So I'm out of Moderna, that's not a short, that's me getting out of that long, I didn't really want it. Uh, but Moderna was able to take a couple of scalp trades in there uh, for the short side, but it is continuing to want to break out. I'm still looking for the short because I'm not chasing a move this far into set upside. I'll just look to pick another spot. It could be right here if it maintains a wick top through 202 but it has to show me that it's rejecting said high. And as I just said, I'm a little more interested in the Silvergate now that I saw the overall weakness. This could go, I didn't see what it was yesterday, but this could go SSR if at some point goes down 10%. And I am in a Coinbase long watching this absolutely crater. Is there, I don't know if there's news. There has I should to probably be. Check I was well. just going to tell you. Because there might be some news on Silvergate. Actually. Yeah, because there's absolutely. There's nothing happening in Bitcoin. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing happening in Bitcoin. 17.8 uh, right now for BTC. A nice Ooh, move up dying. there, obviously, as we talked about that. Um, nice move upside for Bitcoin on that number, up to 18.1, <laughs> roughly. Uh, pulling back in Bitcoin, kind of doing like what the NASDAQ is doing right now. Um, not being able to figure itself out, uh, to be honest with you. But again, nice move up, nice move down. We'll see about 
bouncing off 12,000. I mean, this is a great, great story today uh, as CPI does make that move to the high side uh, for the market. Obviously, coming in there, if you just missed it, uh, it came in at what was it, 7 1? I don't even remember anymore uh, what it came in at uh, there today. Maybe we can do a quick review of that. I was looking through my notes to see what it was. Uh, but yeah, nice little move to the upside there uh, for that. Um, Amazon is a dollar in the money right now uh, and starting to come back in. We did take a piece out right there. Yeah, so it was, it was 7 1, right? Okay, so uh, good, good move there. And I think you just said it right there, Top Dog. It's, it's about digesting right now. I feel like the market's going to figure out what it wants to do and then make some kind of a bigger move at some point. We'll hold on to a small long in AMD. Uh, now, we didn't get out at the top. We should have. Uh, we have the short in Amazon, the long in AMD, but Brendan may, might have something here. Yeah, I'm just going to uh, show you these numbers again for anyone that missed it uh, this morning or haven't seen yet. 7.1 versus 7.3 was the uh, main number, CPI year over year. 0.1 versus 0.3 expected to the upside month over month. So all three of these beating the core number, if you take out food and energy, was expected 6.1 comes in 6. So uh, nice look. All beating, guys. Yeah, so yes, like, yes. and I think you guys in the chat, like, I we are aware that that SBF, uh, Sam Bankman Free, was arrested, but that's cuff them. We knew that, you know, we knew that sort of uh, very very early on. It was in the last session. night. Yeah, I mean, overall, it was last night. Like, SI was SI was actually up pre market, and as a matter of fact, it just started really started trending here in the last I want to say fifteen or twenty minutes. So I'm not sure if there's anything specific to this as to why it's cratering the way it is. It was just I was in Coinbase and I looked over. I'm like, okay, well, Coinbase is hanging at those lows. What's SI doing? Oh, yeah, that's right. It's tanking and it's through the low of the day. So when I see that, I don't see any new news, um, but I do see it bouncing essentially off of $19. I would, my first gut is I should just be shorting it in front of 20 and a quarter, this higher low that it put in yesterday. That's where I'm gonna jump to. Unless I see something specific to SI here, which I have yet to do, uh, then I just want to make sure I respect it. Yeah, I get Look, they're, they are having that house meeting right now as well, but I haven't heard anything come from that just yet. So keep your ear to the ground. Just technically speaking, this is in the absolute crapper here. And, you know, it's been, it's been under pressure for a while now, but uh, SI, once again, showing us its uh, ugly belly. Yeah, Brandon was saying there was some money laundering issues with the Mexican cartel. So who knows? Maybe they're... Maybe they're, maybe they're yeah, that was from yesterday. Yeah, that was yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Means, yeah. Just, 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 just making a joke there. Maybe their 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 accounts are with SI. We'll see. Uh, but uh, nice little move to the downside for sure there. And it is, man. It is oh, fun happened? to to trade these names. But uh, we got to watch out here again and again and again. Um, all right, we almost got longer. I want to still buy this AMD dip if we can get back to seventy three fifty. Definitely did not take advantage of this. Now we're sitting here again. I mean, we did take advantage. We made back what we lost on this move right here. Uh, we made it back in. Not in spades, I was gonna say in spades, but if we would've got out there, fine. But it has retraced back, so now we're about flat on our recent AMD trades, still holding on to the Amazon. And let's look for some more. Uh, we don't have to just trade major cap names. We can go to, to small caps. I know Neil does that as well. Just right now, today, there's so many, so much movement. I mean, Moderna's been go. in the news. You've already been on that. We've looked at PayPal there, Silvergate in the news as well as we, well, crypto in the news anyways. Um, AMD's a name that I always look at. Remember we said we Someone went to- said Hector Salamanca. Oh, Hector Salamanca uh, right there. El Pollo Loco uh, <laughs> coming into play there. Uh, it's well, that's so funny. taken out. I wonder, like, it's just amazing that, like, if we had uh, Bitcoin and all that back for Breaking Bad, like, I just wonder if that would have worked its way it's in there such as a, payment method, 100%. stuff like that, right? 100%. Like, but I mean, it was around there, but it was more Silk Roady type of stuff. Yeah. It, um, but that would have been cool. I still feel like the Sam Bankman Friedman. Oh, we just started watching. Brennan's probably seen this. I, I'm going to say you haven't, but you may well, have. Probably not. White Lotus. Yeah, so we just started watching. I'm embarrassed to say I don't know it. So oh, you don't even know it. Okay, I think it's the one of the number one streamed. It's an HBO show, and we're only on season one, Brendo. So, uh, ooh, la la. Thank you. And in one cup. I like it. Thank you so much. There Why would it not be in one cup? There was a joke that Brendan asked for a double espresso. No, I'm good, thanks. Wow. So Justin brought Brendan brought two espresso, like one in, like a double. So one cup. There it is right there. So there you go. Uh, that, that's how you get double espressos around here. And then I said that Justin must have never been a barista. And, as or, opposed to just putting, as opposed to obviously just putting it all. Just ordering coffee. Like you can go and you say double espresso. It's two shots of espresso. 
But you know, oh, Justin likes creating more dishes. Uh, oh, there goes two hundred. So, so two sixty uh, right, on Microsoft. Go. Let's go. Uh, Microsoft downside two sixty. It just broke to downside two sixty. Sorry, I just I got to adjust my stop order because uh, I got taken. My my stop was at two sixty. Okay, okay. I did not reload it, but I just want to make sure I have my stop in uh, on Silver. Uh, not yeah, Silvergate before I, I was move doing on, that yesterday. Uh, to that one. It's like you, calling I don't stocks, stocks the wrong names because it's like people don't. I know you guys, you know, you love the show and that's great, and we love that you guys are here. There we go. But please let Neil and I screw up sometimes uh, on the saying of names because we're just in so many and we're looking at the chat. Rivian, no! Someone just said Rivian cratering. No, Rivian! Rivian, oh no, it went to 2750. Uh, these are the shorts that we had yesterday on Rivian, man. Uh, oh, that sucks. We had these exact shorts yesterday uh, on Rivian and there it's coming in again today. I, I don't care how much Rivian is up, I want to short it. Oh, that sucks. See, there we go. That's another opportunity right there. That we, I was going to say, we had Rivian on our sticky note, but we didn't. We just had CPI on there. Uh, but yeah, Rivian was a name that we wanted, and it came right into that level that we like. Okay, AMD, we're reloaded. Uh, AMD just came in again, so uh, watch out for this one. We just got a 60 bid. We're out of this if it breaks too much below 50. But by the way, guys, again, it looks like we'll take an L on this for sure. Uh, well, we just got more in on AMD. Uh, that's not what we wanted. We got a punch out of this one. Keystroke error there. I think we went the wrong. Oh, there it is. We're out uh, on AMD. Ooh, that was a keystroke error right there. Uh, I thought we meant to get out, but we got more long. Maybe we should have stayed in that as it's bouncing off 73 right now. Oh, that's the worst. I actually had a stop on the queues, anticipating I was going to. So when I had that 93 long from earlier in the day, uh, I had my stop still set on the queues. I'm like, oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I took it out. To and me. then I just got triggered in because it did just take out that level. But I'm just going to get out of it. We didn't want, I didn't want that short. So I'm just gonna, I just punched out of it almost instantaneously. The second I got into Silvergate, uh, the first thing I was like, okay, well, where do I want to get out? Halfway to the low of the day and then try to hold some for that low. It just got to the halfway point, uh, 1975. And then if I can get more shares out in front of the bottom, I'll go ahead and do that. But the only law that's gonna hold on was Pinterest, and it just came right back into VWAP. So as the market starts to dip in here, it continues to dip, I'm gonna take the last stab here at Pinterest as it tries to bounce off that 26 in VWAP. This is a bit of a different trend because the big one on the daily chart, they got an upgrade. I don't know if that's really gonna be able to hold it up. But as I said, Microsoft, was one of the few ones that we still had in the long. It took out that 26, sorry, 260. We got out of it when it broke 260. Not going to be holding on for dear life there. Unfortunately, this one not wanting to continue the market. Giving most of this one back here, guys. And But you know what? Not giving it up just yet. However, making another wick high is Moderna. And this is, a, when we talk about these moves, I'm like, yeah, I'm not chasing it, I'm not chasing it. I would have chased it, and it would have been fantastic for you if you continue to chase it. 25% to the upside, and now 205 up here on Moderna. It's another wick high. If you go to the daily chart, you're not really seeing a heck of a lot in here except for air. It was that 197 to 200 that was a pretty key level, and the next one up would be about $210. So, I mean, for me, I'm sitting around looking for $210 at this point because I'm not going to, it's diddling in the middle as much as it's up 25%. Yeah, yeah, for sure. This is th These markets are wild, man. There we go. We get back into AMD off that bottom again. A couple messes down there at 73.50, but that's because, again, I had the wrong order. T I, I, put the, I put a sell, uh, sorry, instead of selling it at 73.50, I actually wound up buying more there. So I panicked and got out because again, I feel like that's the best thing to do. You just saw Neil and I talk a little bit there about keystroke errors and things like that. And that's, you know, I think that that's gonna happen, especially when you have over, I don't know, 80 fills today, like I have, you know, you are gonna sometimes slip up a little bit. And, and that, that's just why there's a lot of back and forth there. We just got a piece out at 65 uh, off of this 53 long. So I don't know, man, these markets are pretty, they're pretty liquid, but at the same time, they're like kind of all over the place. So uh, just be careful with some of your stop orders and whatnot. I'm gonna try to hold this AMD a little bit longer, but not for much, man. This market is collapsing. We're now $2 in the money, which makes me you know, feel pretty good inside uh, about trading today. But still, giving some back on this AMD long that we, you know, we've really struggled with here. So, all right, uh, it's 1025 already uh, here today. So let's go over to the big desk with Brendo. Hey guys, John, uh, small cap recap brought to you by Masterworks. They let you diversify your portfolio with fine art without spending millions. To date, six of seven exits from Masterworks have delivered over 20% return. Go to masterworks.art slash 
Trader TV Live to learn more. Shout out to them. Uh, a bit of a quiet day overall when the market's in play as a whole. We get a move towards market type stocks and away from uh, small caps. But there was this one, NCPL, still 105%. But stuck in this box right now, 280 up to about 320. Back and forth we go. We uh, try to get going one more time, take out the high, but uh, right back down. So I really want this thing to get below that uh, 270, 280 area before it gets uh, very, very interesting on the downside for uh, that one. Here's uh, Carvana. I mentioned this big red candle on huge volume as it took out 550 to the downside, gave you an opportunity to work in versus 550. Now back to five bucks for CVNA on the fade. I was sitting here watching this e-hang on the way up, but then got away from it and missed that break back through 11, uh, fading off pretty quickly here for EH. Now back to 1.3, guys. You don't have to wait very long with Moderna, I'll tell you that much. Uh, 208. It's still going? And, yes, it's still going. I mean, it's still going. It's 208, uh, well, 20850 was just a recent high here. Um, I was actually was just chatting in the chat with Trader Gorno there. He was sort of looking at the 100 period uh, on the daily, and I was sort of looking. I said like 208 on the daily chart was probably, if you had to look for something in front of that 210 level, that looked a little bit closer. I thought 05 was diddling a little bit too much. I understand I'm talking 2 or $3 in a stock that since the open, I mean, since yesterday's close, up 42. So it doesn't seem like it's, that's not much, right? But for a day trader, I think that can be a bit, a bit of a wider range there. It's one thing, like I just got 207.87. It's one thing to risk 2 to 250 on the stock, looking for a pullback to 05s and into, into 01s, which is what I'm looking for right now. And it's another thing to say, well, I just want to risk $5 on it or $10 on it. That's more of like a swing or I'm holding a trade all day long kind of thing, which that's not what I'm looking to do in here. So it did get up to that 208, as I just said. I just grabbed some uh, in here. Now I want to give it more room. It's at that time of day where I do want to give it a little bit of a wider berth. And guess what finally came in? It's just taken a while. Amazon 93. So like it, much like with oh, um, right Microsoft 260s, you know, I got 260 the first time it bounced. It gave a dollar, then I got run over when it eventually took it out. Yeah, Amazon 93 just came in here. I got 9333 because for whatever reason, that's just the price I decided to bid this morning. Uh, but yeah, if it can hold this 30 level, 93 area, uh, then I want to be getting some more shares in here and playing the bounce. Just a level that I loved when I looked at the 15 minute chart. And I don't, this might have some wicks on it. Yeah, I don't know if I can quickly show this one to you without some of those wicks, but. This is that 93 level, an area of chop um, that it had back on the 5th. It was a nice consolidation level before breaking down and showing its face uh, the last couple of sessions. So 93 level, now long side on this name. Silvergate continues to work to the downside. And Moderna, for the third time, I am sure. We'll see if the third time's a charm. Yeah, we're going to average into our AMD. Of course, we're $2 in the money, and I was doing the same thing. It's funny that we thought, I mean, not funny, it's pretty easy level there, 93. Was thinking about the same thing of just getting out uh, down here at 93. It's bouncing again, you know, off the 200 period right there on the one-minute chart. So, you know, there is some reason to do that. So that's that's something that we're going to look at uh, there. I just missed there. Oh, we, okay, we just got some. I was going to say we were at 20s there uh, for AMD, and it just came in pretty good there uh, to the downside. So, you yeah, we're going to take one last shot here on AMD. We've actually turned negative on it uh, because we did try the long there and it just turned us red uh, as we broke back below. So let's see uh, if that's going to still be the case there uh, for AMD. Again, we can make a lot of money back on this. Like if, if Amazon wants to go back up, that's completely fine because right now we have quite the hedge on with this a AMD long against the market here versus the Amazon short. We know Amazon has been weak. I'm willing to hold this one but the AMD also is a name that we've wanted strong uh, and long, but right now not coming through. There we go. Now we have our full position on AMD. Uh, not been a good one, so hopefully it can bounce here. As it's taken down, it's going to hit 73. Uh, this market just continues lower, man. There goes Amazon, $2 in the money, but it's this AMD trade that's got me uh, tilted right now down to 73.10. But uh, here we go, man. The market be tanking and doesn't there it is it doesn't look like it wants to stop right now amazon taking through not taking out yet 93 that's going to be a big level for me that's probably something that we need to get out on if it does do that one more time but all right it's time for crypto right now with brendan at the big screen
Hey guys, just be aware, uh, President Biden set to make some comments here on this inflation print this morning, any moment now. So just watch the overall market. Uh, obviously, the biggest story of the day as far as uh, crypto is concerned is this one. Uh, last night, I guess it was late last evening, uh, SBF getting arrested in uh, Bahamas. FTC finally coming up with some charges to lay uh, against uh, SBF. I also saw this morning the SEC is preparing something that they're apparently going to announce tomorrow as well as far as charges are concerned. However, uh, Bitcoin, big move to the upside. All of these, big move to the upside. Back to about three and a half though right now for BTC on a pullback off this CPI print. Ethereum made a move higher as well. So breaking the top end of the range. Uh, shout out to Binance for the big board. Uh, speaking of Binance, I saw uh, the CEO on Twitter this morning saying they saw about 1.4 billion-ish, his word, uh, in withdrawals, outflows yesterday. And then he said business as usual. 4.3% uh, to the upside for Bitcoin, 5.8 for Ethereum. Nice green numbers, though, top to bottom here, guys, for crypto today. Don't you think that north of a billion, no, north of a billion, you, you stop using the word ish and maybe just throw something else out there? Like, I don't know, like, you know, plus or minus a few shekels. Um, that's a big number. Uh, but Moderna comes to the downside, we'll give it. <laughs> I, I chuckle. I'll give it gates of hell because this is the move I look for at 200. This is the move I look for at wow, mm -hmm. twice at 200. Holy but shit. it's now starting to really crater. I did take some out when it got better Holy than 1 crap. to 1 at 206. And now I'm just shooting this 201, 202 area. If we absolutely crater, I might just release the bid uh, and then give it back into 198 and start trailing it as it comes to the downside. You just mentioned crypto. I'll throw you Silvergate. Don't know. I mean, there is, of course, there, there is a... Uh, right now that Senate thing that's going on. So uh, you could see this start to hold up and check up a little bit, but it just got to 1950. From shorting 20s and taking some out at 1975, I'm getting some out in front of 1950 as well. So we'll ride this. I guess this one's a bit of a bear. Amazon, I just got another bid in front of 93 even. Wasn't able to get anything out on the first pop. The second time it comes up to 93 and a half, I'm going to take some out there. I should have done so in the first time. Did not do it. Do it. And when you don't pay yourself when you're going counter trend, I just demonstrate, just showed you guys what happens if you don't pay yourself counter trend on, on Moderna. And then I go ahead and on Amazon and the first bounce, don't get anything out. I'll try to do so here, but did get a reload, so my price is a little bit better at that quarters now. Yeah, we're just, uh, here we go, baby. Uh, so look, I mean, we got it great out on Amazon as well. Uh, we're flat on Amazon right now, so let's ring the register. We should have... I, I'm with Neil on that. I like these longs at 93. That's why we got out. So we just took right there $2 on that trade, a little bit more than $2, I guess. Uh, $2.19 uh, right now. But look what's happening. Uh, we do have, let's go. Yeah, yeah. Give me that 42 right now. Hit the sirens again. We've been really respecting that long in AMD. Getting out early and then now trying to hold for bigger winners so nice upside move we are now 30 cents in the money on this give me a 47 if we can get it there it is nice little out there at 47 as right now we're cooking with gas again to the long so let's just hold the long on amd really today man four names so you know let's see if we can't you know continue with you know finding names that we like to trade that are pretty strong your mic not your microsoft but that microsoft this is the problem with it, man. And now it's right back up above that level again of 260. I really like it. It's just like you base around there. And again, missed opportunities. Like there's going to be a lot of base outs here. I'm glad that I have AMD at least. Hopefully that can run. But like Microsoft down there at 259. This was one of the names that I said on any pullbacks. We definitely wanted to buy some of that. So oh, we funny. missed the opportunity down there at 259er. But it's okay. We do have, uh, it's not okay because it would be at a buck 50 in the money. Let's hope that AMD can give us something like that as well back up to the upside where we do understand that amd is a 73 dollar name percentage wise we probably have a bigger move on this but um you know it's nice to see microsoft bouncing but for me i don't really look at stock price more more just the levels that are coming in and then i base my shares on you know kind of what the price is like a thousand shares on amd is going to look a lot different than a thousand shares on microsoft it's a completely different risk profile tesla's at 162 I mean, we were short 174. So uh, that's going to be the missed opportunity and probably haunt me for a while. But Tesla downside. Now let's just move on and continue to work ourselves out of AMD. Oh, I know it'll haunt me. We're out of half. Intel's at 29. So, I mean, I'm not short that one. And it's, yeah. that, that'll, I mean, look, you, something's going to haunt you every single day because there's no such thing as trading perfectly. 
um, but that one will haunt me because I know somebody, I know some people in the chat still still holding on to that Intel short. I got away from it, and that was to my chagrin. I forgot to mention it was Pinterest that was making a move that I forgot to mention. So bouncing off you up again, but more importantly, off 26 even. It just got to 26 and a half, and I took another leg out. It's that time of day where yes, I still like the trend and. If it, tries, if it bucks the trend for the rest of the day, it could take out the high, but it's showing some signs of weakness here. And I don't want to get it all the way to 26 and I like completely uh, ignore it. Finally, Moderna putting in that bigger move. It, it did just, oh, I was about to tell you that it was bouncing off that 202 right in here where it made that big breakout, that last little breakout. So this is what I always look for. I just want that one level move. It got up to that 208. I never had to average into it in front of, 20, in front of 210. Was able to get some of 206, one to one. And then the rest out, we're able to take a six and a half dollar winner on Moderna. But keep in mind, each time I was taking this, it's like scalps them out one to one, stop it out high of the day, looking for that bigger move. And then get out when it get out of dodge when it makes that breakout. You've got to be able to get out. I had an accidental long that I took out, which would have won obviously. But you, I'm always just looking for that retracement back into that level. So we've rung the register. Now we're gonna head on back over to Brendo. Uh, just be aware, Yum Brands, guys, 0.9 to the upside today. Uh, their investor presentation or investor day presentation is on right now. So there is some comments coming through on Yum. Hasn't been too exciting. That's why I haven't brought it up yet. But coming up at 11 o'clock. Microsoft is also going to have their investor day. Uh, it's a virtual event uh, that's taking place out on the West Coast. But uh, so some comments definitely to watch for after 11 o'clock on uh, MSFT. Okay, so you know what's happening right now? AMD is very weak. Um, it's not like Amazon's actually been holding some of these highs. AMD, no. So we're long here. We're going to take a 20 cent hit. Try to make that money back. We've averaged into it down here at 73. We did great getting out, but we only got out of half. So we put that half rate back on now. Um, and again, so it's, it's going to be negative. Like, you know, you can't just keep on averaging in. Uh, it's a good thing we got out. We talked about getting out of half. So we did that. And then we put that half rate back on, back down here here at 73 again but here it comes breaking now we're low we're gone on that one i don't need to be part of this anymore let's just short i want to switch over uh to a short now on amd um that reminds me about google maybe the market is going down uh, a little bit here oh shoot it just darn it i wanted that 98 break i was just i was waiting to get out of amd uh to take google break 98 looks like this market is giving some back here pretty rapido right now uh, on the downside right there. So um, yeah, big time movements to the downside right now as we've given some back, man. AMD's a red stock for me. Uh, we kept on trying it. We got out of half. We reloaded it back and we took a 20 cent hit there. So yeah, it's a downside move here in this market. And yeah, it is happening quite quickly. Here comes Amazon. The market was just up four and a half. You know, now you're up two. So needless to say, downside Life moves. Life comes at you fast. Yep. Life comes at you fast. And uh, so that 93, it was, just, it was just like cruising up at 93 and a half on Amazon, uh, just there, we were able to get some shares out in front of that half. And the next thing you know, I'm getting right back in in front of 93. And just, that's how quickly you get these reversals. Each time it bounces off this level, I gotta tell you, uh, it just kind of makes me feel like it's gonna be a little bit more shallow each time. And then eventually that 93 could get taken out. So like right I'm gonna get more aggressive in terms of scalping <laughs> it if it gives me the chance. But at some point you're just no longer reloading and then you're taking out that bottom. Oh, my stop, my stop, my stop's at five cents below it. It just went to, you probably could have guessed that because it just broke 93 and went to 95. Now I'm stopping. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> well, that's sort of the thing. Like it went to, it went to 92, 96. So I was about to say, well, my stop's a few pennies below, but at that point it was pretty obvious it was five cents below. But uh, now it should have been a few shekels. Below. It should have been a few shekels, but we'll slap the fail. I was only able to get one out in front of 9350 uh, on Amazon, unfortunately. Um, I'm out of Moderna, as you guys can already tell. So it is just a Silvergate short that is still hanging on here, but that's not breaking the low of the day at this point. It's still holding that 19.4, and I was very late to the party uh, to short Silvergate, as a matter of fact. If I go to, there's one last name that I kind of feel like I've ignored here. Meta is still holding up. And I, when I say holding up, when the market pulled back at, after that number, the CPI number, you know, got up to 121.65, this pullback and held about 119 to 119 and a half. So Meta's still above those levels. Uh, so there's some support that's still coming in on Meta. If I look for a dip buy, this is probably the other one I'd go for during lunchtime. Ooh, it's already 10.40. Let's go to Sector Watch with Brennan. Let's do this.
A lot of green on this board to show you today, guys. We're up uh, nicely, obviously, for the overall market, but a little bit of red creeping its way back in here. I'll get to that in a sec. That's uh, Moderna. Huge, huge day right across the board. 25% right now for Moderna. Uh, travel names, uh, all the airlines getting hit here. 5% uh, for UAL, DAL, Love as well, uh, even AAL, all down. 25 to 5% uh, right across the board. NCLH down here, some of the cruise lines also under pressure. Four plus percent uh, across the board. So notably weak. Uh, TRMB was an earnings name down 6%. The rest of the entire tech group, though, in positive territory. Uh, you can see there is in the healthcare equipment group some negativity coming through as well, offsetting. Uh, otherwise, a pretty good day for the overall market. Uh, considering uh, Biden did make some remarks there, just be aware he has finished. Uh, so has uh, hopefully the market will uh, find a base here. Anyways, uh, oil wanted to mention four and a half percent here for uh, Halliburton. Some of the producers, some of the uh, supporting producers as well to the upside today. Two and a half percent through four and a half for uh, energy producers today. But one point three right now for the market. Obviously, well off the highs now, guys. Yeah, we um, oh, man. So we made some money shorting Amazon there through those levels. But right now, Amazon is going right back up to the upside. Uh, and I thought I was sitting here trying to get some more short. Yeah, we're going to wait at 50 uh, now to get you know what? I mean, I'll take some right here. And then the big trade I want to wait for is near that 50 level. But you know, we'll already be averaged in. So uh, we'll see like what average price we're going to get up here near 50 and then watch out for the 75. Like some of these levels up there. It's that little I don't really I don't really want to mess around with those wicks, but it's like 75 right there where we're going to get out. So again, you know, there's there's the break short. Our best outs were we, we got some out at 85 and I think we got some out in the 70s. It doesn't matter now, uh, but we did get some out. Uh, yeah, 77 and 82 and 88, actually. So, um, yeah, not great outs, obviously, as we hold this now against ourselves. 25 pennies. Uh, this name needs to, to work, and it doesn't look like it's going to. We are going to average one more time there. Maybe you're right. Maybe the Biden sort of stepping on the mic and, and people knowing that he was coming on possibly... I don't know. I don't know. I thought he would have said some positive stuff, but uh, move to the downside there. Now that he's off, the market does bounce a little bit, but I'm going to call that bounce temporary. I don't, you know, it, it's been faded out pretty much. We always talk about the, the trend is your friend. When you start getting uh, lower highs, lower highs coming through, you know, the trend is one way here and it's pretty clear despite being up 2% today. What a great day. Doesn't change much about what's going to happen tomorrow. We still get those 50 points, but uh, hey, maybe maybe these stocks have just made a little move too, too low here. We're going to watch out for Amazon. We do have our target there. Sucks to sort of make our last trade a loser here, but again, you know, AMD has been a tough one on the way down. We've just been looking long. The best short for me, my number one stock, of course, has been Amazon. So here we go. We're shorted again. Short 93 30. Yeah, I'm just watching a lower high here on Moderna. I'm not gonna rush into I'm not gonna rush into trading Moderna in this range, but you know, there is a chance it can get all the way back into VWAP here at 197. When I was short it the first time, that's where support came in. It happens to be VWAP now, so I would expect uh, Moderna might see a little bit of support there. But I just rang the register again on Pinterest. When the market's trending down like this and the stock is holding up as well as it is. That's a good thing, but if you look at if you kind of look at how this trade has been going for me, it's like okay, first 50s, then 30s, and then we're long in front of 26, and even in terms of where we're getting some of these tops, at 70s we're getting tops now at 40s, and potentially here at 25 to 30. Uh, so it's been a little bit, you know, you're trending back into the downside. You could still hold support off at the 26 level and continue this move to the upside, but you just got to remember here, like this is this is a pretty good break at this point into a trending market to the downside. And if we can't really hold the previous highs, you could see a big dip come back in. It's up 11%. You are were, you were now beneath that big level on the daily chart, which is 26 and a half as well. So I like the trend in Pinterest, but I'm going to continue to scalp it and then look for an afternoon break of that high of the day, which might need the market uh, to help it out as well. Uh, Amazon for me was a bit of a one and done. And now I'm kind of kicking myself for it. I'm not saying it's one and done for the rest of the day. It was a one and done sort of once that level broke at 93 and I got wicked out. I did not jump back into the trade, but it does feel like it's reestablished that support at this level. And I got to think about getting back into it. Meta's kind of far gone for me. Uh, I'm kind of I'm looking at 119 and a half where the dip was um, after the 830 number. And it's like a dollar above this. And if I go long, it would have to be off the 120. 
and then take a second shot in front of 119.50. So that's kind of where I'm at for Meta, not necessarily wanting to chase it. Silvergate, I'm hanging on to that one. That looks like it's going to be a pretty solid one. Then I was looking at some Neo. I haven't taken a single look at one of these Chinese names and then noticed as Tesla was breaking lows that Neo was right back to where it was at 830 and holding that bottom at 12.50. So I might do some scalping Neo in front of that 12.50 level. Just try to take five, 10, 15, 20 cents um, if I can get back at that 12.50 on NIO. All right, so yeah, Amazon's rip city right now, right up to 75, so we're gonna have to watch out for that. I do like what you're talking about there on Meta, but I, I, I actually like, I mean, whatever, the, the break, the market's strong here. Amazon's going to get stopped out, man. We're really close to that one. We're only 10 cents away from it getting stopped out there. Uh, but Meta, I kind of like a 121 break. Uh, I mean, you are going to run into some problems, I think, when you get up to 121.50, 121.80. But if you're already long 121, then uh, those are good problems to have. So that's, I'm looking at a 121 break and then give it back to the, this 50 level again. So I feel like we could break and then come back a little bit before legging back up. So again, you know, because we're already short here on Amazon, I don't, I don't want to go short meta or anything right now. I mean, Amazon's killing me to the upside. Uh, we're, well, not kill, we're down 30 cents on it, but uh, I still think that we could get, you know, meta through 121 if that wants to go. So uh, that's something that I'm looking at for sure. Again, Amazon pulling back would be nice. I don't know about that anymore. Uh, the 50 period's up here at 80. We can wait out for that maybe to break, uh, but it, either way, man, we're getting really close. I was gonna use 75. We're right at 75 now. There's almost no difference. So um, we'll, we'll wait on that. Looks like it's gonna break and get us out. So that's gonna be an L uh, as we watch Meta trying to take out 121. I'll push the long on Meta. I don't wanna get out of this one and then the long, this could be like a double whammy. Like we get taken out of this and Meta fails. No, I mean, no that could be the double whammy that we don't want. But uh, for right now, we're going to watch out for Amazon here as it's dancing around the key level of 75. Uh, wow, I need this to pull back. If we can get this back into like the 40s, I may take a piece out. It's coming back right now, though. Amazon, uh, try to hold out for lower, man. Let's get back into the money here, Amazon. Come on. There is a name I, that I want to short some pops in out. here. And I just reminded myself, I was going through my list. I'm like, oh, yeah, I haven't traded any Oracle today. Uh, but Oracle... <clears throat> It was they they had they were up on earnings obviously um, gapping gapping to the upside on earnings and then following the breakout uh, as well on the 8:30 CPI number you're actually beneath that now but the bigger thing about Oracle and this is what I came to I sort of came in thinking was this is 84 and a half on the daily monster triple top on the daily chart and now you've got a wick high through this so you've rejected this breakout post earnings. Finally. For Oracle, and uh, yeah, any kind of pop in here, like if 84 and a half is that level on the daily chart, anything close to VWAP gives you 84. So I'm just here to short pops on, on Oracle all afternoon, and if it takes out 84 and a half, then I want to be done. I'll just sit in front of 84, to be honest with you, and then if we get any pop in the market, I'm going to jump over to that name. Uh, Silvergate continues to flush. Meta's now coming back in close to that uh, 120 area, so it looks like I could actually start to look for that bid off of 120. I would, I would play 119 and a half as well, but I'm gonna go with that 120 uh, as well there. Pinterest, I'll keep reloading in front of 26, but at some point at that level breaks, I have to give up that long. Guys, we actually got some 9326s there on Amazon. Wow, we did get some out at 40, then we got some out at 93.26, like we said. So hopefully, I'm sitting at 26 again, I don't know. We're short now at 44, uh, so now we're 10 cents in the money. It's just, this is just a scalper's like nightmare, to be honest with you. It's like, it goes up and almost punches me out, like literally pennies away. Uh, and then we, you know, count our lucky chickens uh, there. And uh, now let's see if we can get another move. If we can get 26 one more time, then it, there it is. Yes, yes, come on, man. Now we'll, now we'll see about holding uh, this. Like we've got a good position on. I do want to put it back down into 23 and change. Uh, if we can get something in the teens, we'll take it. Here it comes. We just got that right there at 15. And this is, again, this is the problem. Like this is what I deal with. We get out because it rips all the way to the upside. And then there it is right there. So 
some, I know this has been a nice day because the market, the bulls have won and the bears have won. It's like, it's one of those things where if you were long early, you're able to take out a lot uh, out of that market and then really just fading everything. Like if you're a bear, you've just sort of like been denying all these longs and it's been working out. So I'm going to put another bid out actually uh, right now to see if we can grab that. But yeah, so far so good here for both sides, I feel like. And it's always nice when that happens. Uh, but let's see. I am now on the uh, way of the bear because we are short Amazon. We've been short Amazon all day, man. So don't, don't take this as um, something against the market. Let's just make sure that we keep on taking some profits on Amazon here um, and we'll absorb it. We're now in bidding 25s. We just got teens. What did we get? Our best out there was 13 on Amazon. So, so far so good. But here it comes right back up to that level again. We're still getting out at 93.75, but no more reloads, guys. Well, that's sort of the thing. Like, you have to decide whether, you know, are you still reloading a stock at this time of day or not? I'm going to go for it. On, on Pinterest, I am. But um, we're, we just broke the low of the day on, on Silvergate. And it did say, once this is broken the low of the day, I'm looking trailing stop on this. I don't know if it gets to $19. That's sort of the obvious. It was a you know, $20 level breakdown. 19 is kind of obvious in, in terms of looking for that next low. That's a decent target for me here. But now that you're through the low of the day, I'm going to slap a trail on it. As I said, Pinterest is probably the last one that I'll reload a stock that I'm already in in front of 26. If it can't hold that, forget about it. And I still haven't been able to get that 120, but that's incoming on Meta here for some long. Start, it's time to be patient. Time to head to Brendan. See what's going on with that USD. Yeah. Hey guys, yeah, multi-month lows coming into play right now for the US dollar on this CPI. You gotta go all the way back to June of this year to uh, find the last time we were trading around this. Uh, 103, it was about 103.80 uh, was support. 103.95 right now, down 1.12%. Uh, this is the euro, meanwhile. Everything else, if that's down, that means everything else nicely higher on the day. Uh, 0.94, the euro, you can see we're off the highs ever so slightly. But again, multi-month highs. This is June back here for the euro. So we're above June levels right now for the euro, the Canadian dollar back to almost 74, up 0.8. It was higher than that at one point. Uh, meanwhile, the pound, a full percent as well, 124 coming into play uh, off this number. So everything else benefiting from uh, the lowest level since June for the DXY today, guys. Lowest level since June. Uh, uh, oh, this guy has got some Oracle in there. Oh, you can't see the position board because it's doing the, uh, yeah, oh, it's doing it? that thing where it shows the actual, uh, yeah, the, 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 there you go. Uh, but I just got into some Oracle there. So it's been trending to the downside, but the overall reason that, that I liked this trade short was that failed breakout on the daily, 84 and a half. So if you look at this trend, it's gone 84, it's gone 83, about 75, and now 83.50. And as long as it's beneath 84.50, I want to be shorted, so I just got into it a little bit here. This is a time of day where I want, to, I want to give it more room if it's going to trend to the downside, but I'll take a leg in here and start scalping it, trying to build a bigger position in front of that 84 uh, to 84 and a half. I got my trail on Silvergate, so that's covered. Uh, but in comes Pinterest for what could be the last salvo. We'll see. Uh, it's broken that 26 and gone about one or two cents each time. I think 99, 98 actual 98 and change because some of these dark pool nonsense prints is the actual low. I'll give it to about that uh, 95 area, which I like to do. Uh, but Pins has been trying to buck this trend for the greater part of the day. I just don't want it gap filling on me where it breaks this, cannot really hold. And suddenly you're looking at 25 and a half because if I like the long and I still think it's a strong stock, which I kind of do, I can always just jump back 30 or 40 cents at a better price uh, than what I have right now, which would be right in front of that 26. Yeah, so my... Um uh, I don't know, my, my thinking here, I really like, what's Tesla at right now, 163? Wow. Oh, I wanted to talk about Sean Jay in the chat there mentioned that uh, I said the price was 162 on Tesla or something, but it was 163. Yeah, I was sort of, I, I meant to say where the stock was, like the bottom was that 162. Uh, but yeah, I'm always going to, you know, we are right here live. We can do a little bit of a time check here uh, if you want. It's 10, so we're live here in lovely Toronto, Ontario, it's Canada. It's not that lovely. Uh, right it's still lovely. It's still lovely. But yeah, the weather is not lovely. Uh, we did get like a couple centimeters of snow it's right cold, now. It's cold, man. Yeah, it's minus one. What is it? It's like minus one right now or something. Anyways, okay. I just want to do a time check because, the lo you know, there was he was asking, you know, is there a delay or anything on the stream? There is a delay. Yeah, it's actually minus four right now. So good call. Um, yeah, so right now it's 10.55.06. 
07, 08. So 10, 55, 10 right now. So, you know, if you are in that with us uh, and you're looking, you're saying, hey, how delayed am I? That's about it. 10, 55 and 20 seconds. So that's what it is right now, according to my little internet clock here. Yeah. So hopefully you guys uh, now know where you are in relationship uh, to delayed or whatnot. Minus seven in Montreal. Six. Okay, remember, I'm talking, obviously, Celsius. So six Fahrenheit would be a problem. We're nowhere near that. Yeah, no, no, no. 32 that... is zero. So we're like, we're like 30-something. We're like 20 Celsius, something like that. Maybe, yeah. maybe uh, higher than that. 30, 30 Celsius. Like, 30, it's cold. 30 Fahrenheit, sorry. Like, it's cold, cold. Don't get me wrong. Like, it's, it is cold it's up in warm. here. It's not warm. I mean, it gets... It, Anyone knows Canada, it gets a heck of a lot worse there, uh, obviously. I'm actually getting on the bid here of Oracle just because it immediately came down to 83. Minus but 16 in Edmonton. Pins just took me. Edmonton? And Come minus on. 18, minus in, 18 Sweden. in Sweden. Yeah, that ain't right. You don't need that, man. As cold as cold as this 26 breaking on Pinterest. That's so cold as ice. If it comes to 25 and a half or 25, I'll be looking for those two levels at lunchtime to re-engage into this. Or if it just tries to put a wick top in here, I might just jump right back in at 26 even. But, you know, for the first time, I am now not long uh, Pinterest in quite some, uh, quite some while this morning. Like I said, I just got some Oracle. But... Lo oh, and behold, there's another one that just came back into that low. Remember Neo and that one, uh, that 12 and a half? Yeah, I just started getting in here at uh, 1261. I'll get more at 55 and then more at that 52, 53 level as that tries to double bottom. Mid scout mode off some of these levels into the downside. Oracle did not add to it, but just caught the quick little 50 cent move in there as it's back into 83. If this trend continues, I just want to be net short uh, Oracle. Ignore the trend line. This is more about the rejection of this big level on the daily. And when I see a level like that, reject, I just want to be net short as long as it's beneath $84.50. So that'll be shorting pops, 83 and a half, 84, and then into 84 and a half would be my hard stop on Oracle. So again, um, if I wasn't a little bit taller, if I was a baller, uh, no, I was looking, so we just got out of some Amazon down there at 93.25. We talked about that level. We kept on doing it over and over again. The only thing is, is that as we get ready to wrap it up, and again, I want to thank everybody uh, for tuning in one more time here today. How many likes do we have? Hopefully we're over 3,000. 3.2K, thank you so Easy. much. Uh, we have over 7,700 watching. I don't know if this button's broken, but if you guys could hit it to test. Did we ever hit the five for that packy chip thing that ever happened? No, but I, I hey man, I... Uh, well, I, I actually, said I'd do it, man. I know. I was talking to these guys about that, and I was like, man, There's a guy our, in our friend. I already said right. the story. Oh, you said the story. Well, well not publicly, but yeah, one of our friends did it, and he's known for, like, he's the hot only, food. He's the only person I know who handles hot food way better than me, and he posted a video or a buddy from high I'm school of him yeah, doing yeah. the packy chip, oh, yeah. and it scared the living bejesus. Like, it just, it scared the crap out of me, because if he was reacting that way, I'll get my, I'll get my butt kicked. But I said I'd do it. So if we do see 5,000 likes on the morning show. You know, I, I want someone to send it in. I, yeah, it, I mean, I don't know. Where do you get these things I think from? you can order it online. I, I don't know how much it, I mean, it costs, but uh, I think you can order it online. We have to get the 5,000, though, because I'm like, I can't make it a small number. Because it's going to hurt. I know oh, it's yeah, going to I don't hurt. even. I know what's going to happen. I'm just going to, it's going to be embarrassing. I'm going to be crying on air. Kind of like you know, when, when, when Shaq did, Shaq did it online. I know, online, Shaq. And he's like. No effect, man. No effect. And you can see the tears just he welling did live up. He's on like, the air. Well, live on air. Yeah, so I know what's going to happen to me if I do it. It's just... Hey, man, that's brave. I mean, I'm going to... I said up. I'd do it before I knew what it was. That's kind of the problem. I know. It, that's, it that's the problem. Um, but, you know, more about the problem is I've already thought about this because I'm, I'm confident that we're going to get those likes uh, at some point. But you got to do it on the afternoon show, like right at 3. Oh, I'm not doing it in the morning show. No. I'm doing it at the end of the you gotta day. you got to do it at 3.50. I'm doing it at the end of like the day. Like 3.55. Yes. Or something, because... No, I'm not trading. No, 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 no. Not I'll just be, that. I don't I'll think you're going to be able to speak. Oh, of course not. Like, you'll be oh, able to no. speak, but too much of risk. I will be crying, dude. Oh, my God. I will be crying. It's, uh, yeah, I'm already feeling ways for that. Uh, but uh, It'll be bad. That's true. You may, it might get rid of the sickness. That's the other thing. It might, I'm like, not, so blast the, your whole body. I'm not sick anymore. It's just... No, like but it, that feeling. Like, you're yeah, going to worry really, about your mouth. When you get that congestion, actually, it will probably be good for the congestion. Like, when you get that congestion, it lingers for a couple of days. That's why you still see me coughing a little bit and, you know, that kind of thing. But I am feeling a heck of a lot better. Thank you, everybody, for saying that. Uh, oh, by the uh, way, the, the playmaker well sent there. this guy, Sharif, yesterday, uh, Mika Parsons' jersey. Parsons? Yes. Jersey. So. I wasn't there. Yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, that's Playmaker's awesome. Playmaker's the man. 
I was just saying that because I bet you Playmaker sends that, that ship. Uh, I don't think he's on there, but yeah. Five, let's go, guys. 3.4K. We're getting ready to throw it over to the midday show, though. What a good show so far today. I mean, it's about to get better. It's going to happen. This uh, is the problem, so. Yeah, it might not. They're going to get it to 5,000 just to see me hurting. That's... Well, that's kind of the point, I guess. But uh, well, that is actually. I don't, as your friend, literally, it's literally the as point, your friend, actually. I like to see the entertainment, but I'm not feeling the the I'll after shut effects up about that, uh, for that. Yeah, you should have just backed away from that. Uh, but okay, guys, let's go. Yeah, uh, well. Who's Mika Parsons? Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, I mean, he's like the second not best Not a football player fan in. there in the chat there. What's up, Beat Fanatic? Second best defender in the NFL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First defend, best, first, best first defender, Jair Alexander from the Packers is obviously who you mean. So, uh, okay. With that, without, I'm not even going to let Neil say anything. So, without being, you guys all know that's who he meant, right? Who is the first best defender? Judon? Aaron who? Donald. It, oh, Donald. It's still okay. Donald. It's still Aaron Donald. Yeah, he's, uh, he's still tapped out right now hurt, as well. Uh, yeah, is, still yeah, Donald. Hurt. Yeah, we talked about this yesterday. Uh, no, there, Donald, with load management in the NBA. Like, I just feel bad for all the kids that went, and I don't know anybody that did it, but went to, like, the Laker game there, and Anthony Davis sit, sitting. In try it could be LeBron's last time. It sucks. Sitting, sitting, sitting. It's, and they don't, you know. It sucks. you got to be a, a man of the people, right? Uh, okay, it's Sharif time. He'll be talking some World Cup. That's today, is it not? Yes. Yeah, so we're going to get ready for that game at 2 o'clock. Oh, my goodness. Uh, there, yeah, great. shout out. England played really well, but obviously Kane blasted it through the top there. I know. I had the same problem with Baggio there. Why'd you bring uh, it up, man? I, uh, I mean, <laughs> I remember when Baggio sent it right over the same thing World against Bobby Brazil. Yeah, yeah. Shut up, <laughs> Sharif. The guy knows the date, the probably the everything. Did he use his left foot, his, his right sister, foot? Yeah, his poster open a room. Uh, so I'm not going to forget that. His sister had his poster. Yeah, you probably want to kill that guy. Okay, let's get ready to rock and roll. Glad to have Neil back. We're back Who again at 2 p.m. Thanks, Brendan. Thanks, uh, Lucas. Thanks, Fahad. Thanks, everybody, uh, for watching today. Let's get those likes up. And without any further ado, let's throw over the midday show. It's Sharif and it's Luca. Let's go. What's going on, everyone? Hopefully everybody's having a great day, enjoying the morning. And uh, yeah, guys, staying positive. You know what? I want to start the day by saying today is a good day. I can't be upset today because I didn't lose 50000 So life is good. <laughs> you know, anytime CPI rolls around, man, I'm sweating. I'm not going to lie. You know, I, I get real nervous. Oh, yeah. And uh, I think a lot of traders do. And, uh, you know, today gave the move. And uh, I was looking for dip buys, and I'm kind of surprised that we... You know, we had a little bit of dips, and guys, this is the cues, just kind of using it as a proxy to the overall market. And, uh, you know, there's been times, um, just to kind of highlight this morning move, obviously, you know, Sean Neal has covered this live, which is awesome, man. Trading this live is something else, man. Hats off to those guys. They're absolute legends. Uh, you know, I, I've been involved in these moves. I'm completely locked in and uh, kind of happy that I didn't punch the top. And maybe, you know, NASDAQ's uh, futures being halted kind of saved me there. Not really too sure, but, you know, was super patient. A little bit of a dip buy. As you can see, this is a darker yellow arrow. So that was a part fill. I was the top. Mm. And I'm like, man, that can't be good. I got to get out of the rest here. So punched out break even. And then just kind of scalp, you know, take the win, take the win. And uh, I think last time, you know, last time, obviously, we had CPI. It was the up move. And we, we rallied the same way. You know, big move to the upside. Had the pullback. But at this point, by like before 9 o'clock, I almost feel like we we're closer to the highs. And so the fact that we were hanging around here too long, I just kind of off the long. And I was like, you know what? I'm not really feeling it. It doesn't really look too good. Then, you know, market open, a couple, a little bit of a dip buys, playing off, uh, playing off some, some uh, levels here. And I actually got to change that to H23. Uh, playing off some levels, you know, a little bit dip buys, kind of scaling out at the top, offing the rest, missing the short. But, you know, you can't, you can't catch them all. It's not Pokemon. Hopefully you guys are doing well today. Uh, I like uh, that expression. Yeah, well, somebody <laughs> said it once in the chat, and I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that one more often. So, yeah, no, can't. Uh, I mean, my day is going okay. I'm, I'm up on the day, but more importantly, I'm not down. I'm not down large. So life is good. Um, we'll continue to, uh, you know, provide that entertainment and uh, some banger trades for the day. Uh, we'll see what we get going today. Not really too sure what I'm looking at, but uh, for sure we'll find something. Yeah, guys, what a morning it has been. Uh, a real big boy move up on the futures this morning. On uh, I, I got to tell you the truth. After we got that PMI number on Friday, uh, or that PPI, sorry, uh, number on Friday, whatever it was, um, I wasn't really too uh, 
I wasn't really too hopeful for today, but I was proven wrong. Uh, inflation coming in way high, lower than expected. So, and core coming in lower too, which is also uh, interesting. I took a nice 20 point move on the futures today. I took that long. Uh, we had some issues today on the floor with respect to the exchanges halting. Did you experience that? Yeah, it's, uh, it's something else, man. It's definitely, uh, I don't even know it's possible. It was market wide. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Exactly. I, my IBKR did that too. Uh, my ch my uh, my chart completely paused uh, for a moment there on my IBKR and on PP Pro. However, I was able to punch in because I saw the level two continuing to move despite the fact that the chart was not moving. So I punched in. I punched in with an offset. I got in at 41.40. I got out at 41.60. So a quick 20 point swig. I only took uh, you know not too big of size on that on the. The, I took the MES contract. So a good move, positive on the day. Uh, also, guys, we have some small cappers. I mean, like how can we go uh, the afternoon show without talking small cappers? MLGO, a SPAC from early this morning. I believe it started trading at like 5 a.m. or so. Let's bring up the chart for that guy. I think it is screen number one. No, I didn't even put it on. So let's put it on now, MLGO. This one, I'm not sure uh, what it's about because none of my, uh, I don't have any information on my system here about it. So I don't know what the company's about. Um, let me just type in quick, maybe it updated MLGO. Maybe we can get some info for our viewers. It is called Micro Algo, but I have no data on it whatsoever. So I just know the name of the company, Micro Algo. So this one, whew, geez. I was watching this one from pre-market and then it went ape wild after the bell, becoming like, a, a, you know, just one big halt fest. Uh, sadly, the halts were on the majority on the way down because the move uh, was in pre-market. And as we all know, there are no halts for these small cappers in the pre-market. I guess not the same for exchanges because we were in the pre-market this morning when it halted. So I it's, guess we have to look into that rule. Uh, yeah, well, I think it's just, it's futures, right? It's futures mm -hmm. related. They kind of uh, circuit breaker halt. And, I, you know, again, I'm not a futures trader. I'm not really aware of this. I don't even know it was possible for that to happen. Neither do I. And uh, what a way to find out when you're actually in a futures trade, um, not as a futures trader, and then this thing's halted, and you're not being, you can't get in, you can't <laughs> get out. And I'm like, what's going on here? But yeah, no, luckily enough. I mean, that's why I, I think uh, Sean actually said it. You know, maybe yeah. it's a better, maybe you're better off you know, using a proxy, whether it's ETFs, whether it's mm -hmm. uh, like SQs or, or TQs or whatever it is. Um, because yeah, you know, that kind of, uh, that kind of, I guess, messes you up. And uh, I mean, for myself, no brainer, I'm gonna use this. But again, that's, that's mostly because I, I rarely trade futures and I'm just like, well, I'm just gonna trade, you know, Can I'll just trade the ETFs did here. Your, uh, did your book lock up too? My um, chart locked up, well, but it was, not my book. It was kind of, so, I know futures, I know NASDAQ halted, and I'm sure you guys seen this, but it was kind of interesting because this is the first time I experienced a really big move in futures while I was looking at the proxy, so call it Qs, and the Qs were just kind of flat, and I didn't really know that NASDAQ was halted, and then I think Neil mentioned it, yeah, NASDAQ futures are halted, and the book was just kind of sideways, and we were, we were in and around, um, for reference, we were at like 299, 300 on the Qs at that point, and there was, just there was just really no trading happening, right? So I think as a rule of thumb, this is kind of my takeaway. If the futures are halted, do not get into position on the ETF. So if ES is halted, do not get into SPY. If Qs are halted, if uh, NASDAQ is halted, do not get into the Qs because they're not gonna move. And then as they opened, it was a huge flush to the downside. And this, this I mean, this went from like, you know, 299, 298. And oh, we yeah. flushed all the way to 290, 93.50. Right. And so this is a big flush, right? So if you're here and you're like, oh, let me get the long wait for the open, you know, you got to be quick on the trigger, I think. Um, so yeah, that was kind of my takeaway over there. And uh, and yeah, you know, it was uh, it was something else, man. It was something else. I think 295 was the level that I pegged, um, just in general. I, we're far away now, so I don't know if we get back there. It kind of lines up with VWAP. Mm. But somebody jammed two, 3,000 lots, Jeez. which doesn't mean a lot. But to jam two, 3,000 lots at once and, like, punch, 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 I'm like, okay, this is maybe, you know, I, I see the level. Other people see the level. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's where I want to try to get long. So I kind of saw that over here. It just went up. So that's why I punched a little bit higher there. And then that gave me the justification to, you know, build the long at 295, get out of the long after we broke 295, and then consider the short on the retest of 295. What exactly that, what time was that? 
if you um, don't mind my asking. Ten no, the uh, area where you punched that, that, that this right there, yeah. This was uh, eight, uh, 841. 841, okay, I was looking at, I was looking at more like, um, let me just see real quick. The reason I'm asking is because the ES retraced to 4100 and bounced off that 4100 level, and I just want to see what time that was. No, yeah, that's 837, so that's a little after. Yeah, okay. so yeah, yeah so yeah. like around eight, like 840 was, I mean, you got to imagine like, you know, you, you see the number cooling, people want a reason to go long, right? Oh, so yeah. this is kind of like, not to say that there's no edge in this first move, you know, there's been big opportunities on the first move there, but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's tough, right? And as people get better and faster, they kind of tweak their algos, it becomes a little more challenging to get the fill. I had a scary moment last time where I, you know, we kind of got the number and I was late to the party and I, you know, it was obviously a different price, but I, I was in like long over here and uh, it was a better up move. The, the up move was like continuation for the rest of the day. So got lucky there, kind of, you know, this time around, I'm like, I'm not punching the highs. I even told Greg, I was like, yo, Greg, if I punch the highs, punch me in the face. He's like, I'm not gonna have to punch you in the face because the market's gonna punch you in the face. I was like, man, good point. You know what? Yeah, let me just wait for the dip buy. That's probably the better way to, better way to look at it. So yeah, guys, definitely an exciting morning, still alive here, so things are good. I'll share a couple of the other trades that I had and then I'll look to see uh, what, what other kind of trades we have here. I wanna quickly, glance at a few names before I uh, share what I'm looking at. Meta at this 120 level is kind of uh, giving me a little bit of interest here. So I'm gonna try a little bit of a long here just because we have this kind of dip into the 120 area, then the kind of stop everybody out, pop back to 120. I'm not really too, I mean, I don't, I don't love, love the long, but I think, all right, is that a real move? Okay, that was crazy. All right, that was actually insane. What? Okay, I get long, Ooh. and this thing's a dollar fifty in the money right now. What? I don't even know if there's any news there on Meta. Nice, dude. Are you kidding? That you was punch long, and you're all. Okay, I'm taking that off move. because I don't know what what just happened there. That was uh, that was something else, man. Maybe it's a product of bad liquidity. Maybe some. That was. That As you guys can move. see, I'm sort of here like, wait a second, what's going on? This is the thing, I, I was about to explain. I'm gonna go for 121. That's a two dollar candle. And this this just went to two dollars two dollars in the money. That's a and, two dollar uh, candle right there. Whoa. Okay, all right, I'm, yeah, as you guys can see, this is live, and I'm here like, what is going on right now? So yeah, I was gonna go for 121. It gave me 121 the second after I punched in, so yeah, I, I take it off there. I take it off and uh, reevaluate. Anyways, a uh, few other trades that I have. Uh, Tesla, obviously, 52-week lows. You know, uh, I think Sean called the 174 short, and at the time, I'm not gonna lie, it was at 177, and I was like, Sean, I don't know, man. Like in my head, I'm like, I don't know, Sean, what do you see here, 174? And whatever he saw was an absolute banger, because this thing just flushed through 174, retest the 174, run the stops, and go figure. Mm -hmm. that, that high was 174.06. So this is a perfect example of, if you're trading off 174, mm -hmm. yes, sometimes you, oh, yeah. you warrant putting the 01 stop, but you know, maybe it's maybe you need a dollar stop on Tesla. Maybe you need fifty cent stop on Tesla. So that's kind of my takeaway. But man, that one seventy four, maybe you short, maybe you reload, um, give it to one seventy five. Never really comes back through one seventy five. And then here we are at a fifty two week low. I know I called that one sixty six sixty seven. It already did breach that, but the five hundred level pre split. And uh, I tried a little bit of a bounce. It didn't really give the bounce the first time. We went lower. We came back up. I tried the long again. Sort of scalped it out. And then as we came lower, I was like, okay, I think. I think this thing yeah, is we're dead. Yeah, we're just on it right now. And yeah. uh, is Meta now? Yeah, Sean, I literally yeah. punch in at 120. This thing, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go for 121. I look at it, it's at 122. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. In like one second, I was like, wait, what? So maybe that 120 level is good. So yeah, if we get back to 120, I'm going to try that again. I'll just take that because that's a win, man. That's like a 70 cent win. Um, it would have been nice to get a doll, uh, $2 out of that. But whatever, no big deal is what it is. And yeah, anyways, you know, Tesla had the short. Short through 165 was pretty good. There was some size at the level there. Kind of interesting, but uh, this was this is sad, man. This is sad, and and I'll give the reason for this. I punched short 170, uh, one, uh, 165, 50 cent flush in the money. I wanted to cover a portion of the position. I bid it. It kind of rejected off my order and, and bounced. I got a little bit scared, so I it went back down. I punched out of everything. I tried to punch back into less size. I missed the punch into less size, and you know what? There's really no reason for this. It's just kind of a me thing. I'm just kind of sloppy and. Um, I'm just comfortable quickly doing that, Fine, but yeah, I, I missed that, and uh, yeah, man. So that was that was that, and uh, yeah, let's just look back at Meta because this thing, are you like that was a that was no, that was wild. Yeah, that was wild. Sean, if you see this fill right, if you see what just happened, you'll be like, whoa. All right, Sean's one. I think this thing goes back to high. This is a super strong move. Yeah, <laughs> this is uh, this so is funny. the day we're in, man. What a crazy. That's insane, man. That that is. <laughs> That's wild. Bang for that one, guys. 
I, maybe Bang. I shouldn't have covered. I mean, I don't even know what I'm even doing here. But okay, whatever. That's fine. That's absolute banger. And yeah, hopefully we get a, a couple more uh, bangers along the way here. I'll see if I can find something. Yeah, guys, uh, let's have a look at mRNA. Moderna up today, up 21 and a quarter percent on that cancer news. Obviously, we've all been waiting this. We've been waiting for them to leverage the mRNA technology uh, for other uh, afflictions other than COVID. So, you know, cancer, Alzheimer's, who knows? Uh, it, the list goes on of things that need cure. So mRNA, I, to be honest with you, I really thought that this had already been priced in to the stock. The fact that we could leverage this technology for uh, uh, cancer drugs, uh, cancer whatever. Um, I don't even know if there, you could use the word vaccine for cancer. I'm not a science guy, but I thought this was already priced in. But today news comes out that the test was very, uh, one of Ouch. their trials was very successful. And uh, there goes the stock up 21 and a quarter percent. And it was up higher. Like, I mean, we've retraced down into the 200 area. It looks like we touched up 208.69. Well, it's a high there. 208.52 is the high um, on mRNA. So lots of, uh, lots of opportunity. I've got a dip trade here sitting uh, a little above VWAP at that 197-ish area. I suspect that it may not make its way down there. The selling is starting to slow down a little bit here towards uh, that 198. I mean, we've been flirting around that 200 area for a while. Um, this one, the thing is, I may not take full size on this one. I actually put an order here for full size. I'm gonna adjust that, because this one, I kinda don't trust it. I'll tell you the truth. Uh, this one can do any number of things. So I'm gonna sit at 197.25, uh, and I'm gonna take half the size that I typically take at this. and. The thing is here, I'm not really seeing any definable levels at which to get out. So I'm going to have to actually just base my out on uh, the amount of risk that I'm willing to take on this particular stock. So um, I'm going to wait for it. I'm going to see, I'll probably give it a dollar. I'll give it to 196-ish, maybe 190, maybe 190, yeah, 95 and, a, and three quarters, something in and around that area. So a dollar to a dollar 50 snapped. of risk. But, you know, it still doesn't look like it's made, it's made its move down just yet, like uh, in terms of finishing its move down. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you, what are you no, I'm just seeing. About? I'm just looking at Snap too. Snap had a move. I'm like, for sure, there's some type of social media news, maybe related to TikTok. Um, and then somebody in the chat saying TikTok ban discussed bipartisan. Yeah. So obviously, yeah. This is this is not like you know this is this has to be something. Like, how long has that been going on for? Well, yeah, it's it's not new, right? It's no. not new. They're they're talking about it, and I guess uh, the reaction. But guys, my timing on that. Come on, that yeah, was uh, it, that was pretty sick. So that's and the move on Meta, eh? Yeah, somebody. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's the move there on Meta. Mm. Sorry to cut you off. I no was worries, just reading because I'm it. like, I even pull up Snap, and this is the thing, guys. If you ever see a move and you're wondering the news, obviously price is always going to be. It's not going to tell you what the news is, but it's going to give you an idea. Like I pull up Snap right away. I see the same move on Snap, and I go, okay, for sure it's related probably to TikTok. Mm. And then right away I see somebody in the chat was saying, uh, yeah, bipartisan group lawmakers want to outlaw TikTok in the US. Um, I like yeah, that'll, TikTok. That'll do it, man, that'll do it. Um, not sure, I mean, I, I think dip buy on Meta. I'm thinking dip buys in general. That was a, okay, now, now it looks still silly. Have your meta? Huh? You still have it? No, no, no. Well, so I, I got long 120, yeah, yeah. and then it was at 122, and then it was back at 121, and I'm like, I'll just, I'll take this. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm going to look to buy dips here. Yeah, maybe this gets back to, I mean, if you're long and you haven't sold this, like if I was still long now, like now it's just trade management, I'll be going for 123 high a day potential. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be looking at dip buys, maybe this level 121, just because kind of bounce there, right? 120, I like that level, 121 kind of holding. I think we easily could go sideways and then maybe get that next leg up, um, you know, has to coincide with everything. If the market's nuking and, and whatever, then nuking, I would, I would I like be that. getting out of that trade. But uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm gonna throw a bid there actually. So yeah, if we can get closer to uh, to VWAP there, I'll have a reminder order and then I'll uh, I'll consider what goes on there. So yeah, we'll see what happens. See if we get the fill there and uh, yeah, see what else we get going here. I know Amazon was an absolute banger short off 95 and here I am actually getting long. For some reason, 95 was just kind of reserving for so long and I was like, okay, clearly there's a seller. Something's going on at 95. We either break to the upside and then probably test high days, or maybe it's going to be a short-lived break and then the short is going to be in. So as soon as we broke that, added a little bit of size, added, um, I think I added full size here and then a little bit more size as we were going up, and then it kind of looked really bad, so I got out of it. So this kind of looks like nothing. Like, this was, like, not bad. This is not bad, but it's, uh, I was expecting the move to high days, so we kind of, I kind of bailed on it because it just was, it was whatever. Um, yeah, and... Uh, TikTok ban, yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, had a, a AMD trade. Um, the only, 
AMD was kind of, I was really loving the long. Like this was like a scalp just going into 74. That was not bad. Then I kind of loaded the boat over here. And this is like, this just like flashed down. And I think, you know, the product of obviously CPI, you know, there's going to be a lot of liquidity. There's going to be a lot of moves. But then at some points in time, there might be no liquidity, big liquidity vacuums. And so um, this was me kind of loading the long, thinking we're good for the, the move back up. Then we flashed down. So I loaded a little bit more. And then I quickly got out of that, flipped to short, scalped it. I'm down on the name, but I'm essentially flat. So, OK, so I'm long meta now right down here at VWAP. I think I like, this, I like this trade for a move back up. I'm definitely going to be scalping this. I'm going to take long. I'm going to see if we get back to high, high of, of this kind of move over here. If we, you know, this shouldn't go back through 121. That's nice if this is going to be a good move to the upside, we should, we should be running to 123. So it's at VWAP. You got VWAP protection. You got moving average protection. You got kind of 121, that level. So three reasons to be long. I like the trade. I'm going to try to hold for uh, potentially 122.60, 123 area. Yeah, if we run to high a day and just keep going, then, I, I mean, whatever. It goes without me. That's a good move. I like that. That's kind of like my style there, what he just did. Dip trades off key levels rather than just chasing the move. Uh, nice one there, Luca. Um, all right. Next small capper on the list is this GRTS uh, stock. I don't know too much about it. Let's have a look quickly. GRTS. What's this one all about before we get into the technicals? Gritstone Bio. They do biotechnology company. Company discovers and develops and manufactures and delivers next generation cancer and infectious disease immunotherapy candidates by vaccine vectors. Okay, so this is a sympathy play to mRNA. All right, so right off the bat, I can just tell you that they're doing the exact same thing. They're cancer related, they're using mRNA technology. So this is a sympathy play to mRNA. So we'll have to keep an eye on mRNA, the stock itself, um, you know, if we want to see what this one's up to, uh, since they are related. Now, this one had a, a really nice move off the bell, retraced right back down there to key levels. If you got that dip trade off 290, you're laughing at the moment. This one's moved all the way up to where where are we high? 347 high. We're currently trading at 333, but. Trading above the seven period EMA on the three minute chart. So still a good luck for this one to go long. $3, you're gonna have to size in quite substantially in, in order to make uh, some, some good money on this one. But 30% on the day, I'm gonna keep my eye on this one. Uh, quickly before we actually look at some of the, the more important stocks, SMMT. This was another one that's moving up quite a bit on the day, up 15.6%. Uh, where are we here? Yeah, we started off the day at that 270-ish level. Now we're moving up uh, to 333. Looks like we've got two consecutive bull flags. One formed, obviously, retraced. It looks like it gave back about 50% of its move. And then another bull flag formed. This one looks more like a pennant than it does a flag since it's more, you know, horizontal rather than, you know, declining. So this one, there we go. No, we got... Do we have a third bull flag starting to form on this one, or are we going to get wicked down? It looks like the high of this range is at 333, trading at 332. So this one breaks the range. We could see some continuation to the high side. Um, what's this one's daily chart look like? So we can maybe glean any levels uh, to the high side. Let's double, let's double check here. Bring this chart in. Switch to the daily chart. All right, so this one is a former runner. We'll have a look over here. We've got a big decline day. We've had several, uh, you know, larger-ish candles. So this one has a past of making big intraday moves, especially since, you know, this one's been, we've been trading this one since December 6th. It's the 13th today. So this one is a continuation play uh, from earlier last week. It looks like it was sub $1 for a while and now, uh, you know, decidedly above 100. So this one looks good. I'm gonna keep uh, SMMT and GRTS on watch. They both look fantastic, Luca. And in small cap world, it doesn't really, doesn't really get any better than these two, the way they're setting up actually. Yeah, guys, just quickly reloaded another portion on Meta here. It's kind of holding that VWAP area. I feel like, you know, I'm not gonna say this is a bull flag because I don't actually call patterns intraday. That doesn't make any sense, but, uh, just another reason. I'm like, ah, you know, maybe a bull flag. Maybe we actually go and, uh, you know, try to break that 122. But again, I think money... Why does it not make sense? Well, because bull... I use, patterns make more sense long-term. You, mm. can't, you can't make up a long-term pattern because of human behavior. But you can make... You can manufacture a short-term pattern if you're an algo. Algos, couldn't algos be trained to trade patterns? 
algos are are create patterns to manipulate markets yeah. so that they so can they get fills and uh, yeah m exactly so yeah. it's like if this is a bull but again use use context use context you know it's it's obviously positive you. news um that was a very big up move you have the kind of levels that's why it's not just patterns i'm just adding in that oh yeah maybe bull flag uh, could be good here i think money <laughs> exits on this 123 is just kind of general uh, area on the daily you know, for, for now, VWAP is holding, so it's pretty good. That's kind of why I added over here. Still holding trend. You know, maybe we, we finally do get that pop. If we break 122.50, it's kind of like, you know, the hard level. Like, this did not break 122.50. This did not break 122.50. So if we break 122.50, I think we just blast off to 123 instantly. So, yeah, make sure you guys are watching your orders if that comes to fruition. And if not, if we, you know, dip back down and, and fall, you know, maybe we could dip a little bit and, and kind of just go sideways around VWAP. So these are my expectations for right now. Um, we'll see what happens there and uh, kind of reevaluate and go from there. Yeah, it's nice that you covered uh, small cap land over there because... Yeah, it looks like we got a bit of a continuation on SMS, SMMT breaking through that top of whatever you want to call it, a flat top breakout, a bull flag, whatever, potato, potato. This one looks like this one made its move all the way up to 342. You know, still above that half dollar level, still 20% on the day. Let's have a look at, yeah, just quickly here. Okay, so the daily, we looked at the daily. We found out it was a former runner, but we didn't actually do any level... Um, assessments here. So let's go ahead and put a horizontal line around that 380 area. That was the open of yesterday. Obviously yesterday was a red day. The close is far below where we're currently at so we won't concern ourselves too much with that now. And then the high wick of yesterday as well is that 410, 411. I want to say 411. No, it's 410. So we've got our first area of resistance I would say at 380. That's about 40 pennies from where we're at now. And then uh, 410, so 30 pennies above that, Luca. So this one, I think we may have some legs on this one. Who knows? Maybe it'll move with GRTS. Yeah, I'm just uh, loading up the last portion of my trade here on Meta. Looking pretty good. So yeah, I'm going to let that one now come to fruition, and we'll see where we go from there. Going to pull up some AMD here, see if we got a little bit of a bottom end of the range going. I think I want to say like 172.40. If we can get 172.40s long, so I'm going to try to bid down there closer 172.50. See if this thing wants to kind of dip. Maybe I'll, uh, you know, get a little bit of an average into this position. I just, you know, on a day like today where CPI comes out less than expected, but then the market kind of versus move to the downside, it's not extreme aggressive selling to the downside. That's not the way that I feel about it right now. Uh, short was definitely good from up top. Now we're kind of going sideways, you know, balancing out over here. If we hold this area, you know, it'll be good for scalps. I think, you know, kind of along the bottom of the range here, you know, get out closer to VWAP if possible. And uh, just recycle a lot. That's going to be my kind of play for the rest of the day here. So, yeah, we'll see if that uh, works out. And, uh, man, I want to quickly cover, because this is, uh, you know, just from yesterday, I, I found this actually hilarious. And uh, it's always nice to laugh at your own mistakes and see where you went wrong. Um, at the time, ATVI was just running to the upside. And I'm like, yep, maybe I have the top on this move. And uh, safe to say, I did not. This thing, like, look at this. I'm like short. I'm like, yeah, maybe 75, 50 holds because the prior day had the run up and, right. you know, just whatever. That's kind of where it stopped out at. And uh, go figure, you know, I, I punch out. I'm like, ah, you know, whatever. It's hard to go long here. I'm explaining how I can't go long here because it's already up so much. Not really sure where we're going to go. And where do we go? We actually moon to the upside and then explode. So, you know, probably not going to have a trade on ATVI today, but I found that kind of funny. Just wanted to bring it up. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, you're, you're like, ah, man, I'm pissed off. I got stopped out. Like, you know, I, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, but then, you know, like good, good cover, man. Good cover. And I think, uh, I don't know if Trader Gordon is in the chat right now, Trader but Gordo. I know he had that. He said he had that trade. He had, he said he had that trade as well. And I, that's the reason I'm bringing it up because look, I don't know if you saw it the rest of the day, but yeah, man, that's why for myself, I'm like, yeah, cover my orders quick. Now it's kind of more, a little bit more muted uh, at this level. So I'm not going to trade it. I'm just going to chill for a bit and, uh, yeah, see what, we, see what we get going here on AMD and Meta. Yeah, MLGO halted, guys, by the way, to the downside. Surprise, surprise there. Uh, where are we at? We're 24.88 halt downside. Oh, geez, we were at, how high did we go? 71.57 is today's high. Then look at these really long halts. I mean, this is a one-minute chart, so... Halted at 58 and reopened at 24. Wow. So it's so a long, about half an hour, maybe more than half an hour halt. And then you had several 10-minute halts subsequent to that. We'll see if this one's 5 or 10. But 
uh, MLGO halted to downside up 137%. We actually had this one locked in our system earlier. We had to unlock it for shorts. It is now available for shorts, GRTS. Okay, so we were talking about this one earlier. Looks like it's topped out at that 340. Currently trading at 325. I'm looking for a dip trade on at VWAP at that 317, 320-ish area. I still like it, it's above VWAP, it's tradable as a small cap, but you know, a lot of these ones give up the goods halfway through the day. Some of them make it, some of them don't. So we're gonna have to manage our risk on this one and uh, put, put the bulk of our money on the ones that continue. So we're looking for an indicator here uh, about whether this one's gonna be a good one or not. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a dip trade right at this 320 level for two reasons. One, I like it uh, because number one, it's above VWAP. VWAP is right there too and it coincides with this resistance level, now current support level. These two peaks over here, this like little double top uh, that formed here at 9.30 right after the bell, that will be an interesting area of support. It's also the area that rejected here too before it broke out north. So a lot of uh, buying and selling and a lot of uh, bouncing happening, happening at this area, this 320 area. Let's go ahead and put an order. I'm gonna put an oversized order on this one. So I'm gonna put it a little bit above in case it doesn't make its way quite down. I'm, I'm willing to give this one like 30 pennies of, uh, no, not 30 pennies, 20 pennies of risk. So there we go, we're gonna punch long. So we're long an oversized position. Now we're looking for a bounce above this level to show that the micro trend has changed 328. If we can get above that, then we'll be good. Now, where's our out? Our out's gonna be, yeah, I wanna say, I, I said I was gonna give it 20 cents. I don't think I'm gonna give it that much. I'm gonna give it uh, a little bit below 310. That 308 level is the top of this neckline here. Yeah, guys, you know, I'm uh, kind of revisiting everything, <laughs> looking here, still no fill on the uh, the AMD there, and I almost wanna get, you know, oh, <laughs> something else I wanted to point out, sorry, Woody. Yeah, I'm already printing on this okay, one, baby, go. that's show why. That, show I was that. just getting excited, sorry, there we go, we get that nice bounce off 20, I already take some out at 27. Nothing nothing too important to remember, it's just, it's nice, once you punch in, punch in a position and you're already rewarded for it, yeah, you know exactly what I'm talking about, 100%. you just the same thing on meta. Yeah, 100%. And, uh, you know, market now kind of curling back to the upside. So uh, looking good if you uh, had the dip buys on any of those names there. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, looking here at Apple, I'm, I'm kind of like that 148. But something I wanted to mention is the 150 level, which is kind of interesting. Look at this. So obviously we have the move up, kind of a little bit of sideways action. And it's just kind of stalling, you know, stalling in and around that 150. And then just rejection and then <coughs> testing it again intraday. So nine fi around 950 and then finally failing from 150. So... I almost want to say like 150 is like a level level that like you should eye on, on something like Apple. And obviously we're at 148. Do we have the legs to get back to 150 and test it today? I mean, I have no idea, but uh, you know, if you like the dip by 147 holding, now going to 148 there. I wonder if we get to 150, I might, I'll definitely be watching that and, and you know, consider maybe, maybe there's a, a short to be had if we, if we, yeah, if we get there. But yeah, not, not really too sure. I'm um, just going to make sure that I don't, uh, you know, t get into any silly positions here. Uh, yeah, Tesla kind of interesting that it's holding like this. How many times do you see kind of big sell-offs and then just, this is like, this is not good. This is not telling me this is gonna bounce. This is telling me that nobody wants to buy this, but nobody wants to short it or sell it through here. So it's just like flatlined. You know, I think uh, short the pops, I guess, short the pops. We'll, we'll revisit Tesla. I'm not gonna go long here, 162. I just feel like this is kind of like, this is weird, man. This is like big sell-off lots of volume, breaking lows, and now it's just kind of here. You know, maybe it needs a little bit more time to kind of go sideways, get a little bit of a pop, then actually, you know, fail to the downside. Do we test 160 today? I have no idea, man. Somebody said Tesla the GOAT, and I don't know if you mean Tesla the GOAT for, for shorts that are hitting that, because, and, uh, yeah, this thing's just absolutely down. Uh, but, yeah, no idea. And is Carvana going to bounce? Eh, I think it's, I mean... It's pretty dead, like 15 million shares. I, I would not be trading this thing. I, the short is good. And I'm actually, oh, this was at five, I guess, I guess everything went up, right? 560, but yeah, that 560 to 580 level. Yeah, guys, don't forget levels because this 580 level from last time was amazing. And uh, look where this ran to. It ran all the way to 565 and then reversed. So it's like, you know, 580 is the level. Um, and then we, you know, I'm not gonna beat myself up for not shorting that there. And I'm sure it's uh, pay for shorts. But uh, yeah, no, that's uh, something to note there. I think I got a fill here on Meta. Um, just kind of like I mentioned, just, just scalping this thing. So uh, yeah, just keep in mind the daily level. Let me drag over my daily chart for everybody to see. 
So uh, I covered this before, and it's just kind of, you know, everybody's looking at the same things. The support was around, you know, 125, 123. Then we broke down, and look at this. We rejected it, and there's obviously some days here that are missing, and now we're, you know, close to that 123. So positive news, Meta's up 6%. The long can't be wrong, but at the same time, respect the levels that you see on the daily. For myself, it's I'm long here at VWAP. I think we could push higher. Anything that I can cover over 122.50 will be a gift. And I think that'll be a blow the stops, run to the upside. Maybe I can get out closer to 123. If this thing breaks 123.50 and keeps going to the upside, it's going to go without me. I'm sure somebody around here will be in that trade. I, I just personally will not. Um, so yeah, and somebody mentioning Europe closes and we start to go up. Hmm. Yeah, you know, it's uh, something to keep in mind. <laughs> Um, obviously, you know, the Europeans are obviously trading, you know, um, multiple markets. Everybody's trading everything. And, uh, yeah, when Europe closes, then you, you start to see moves, right? So you get these kind of moves in, in our markets. Then it kind of, you know, it's approaching European close. Things kind of slow down. Europe closes. Then we, we make a move. Do we go up? Do we go down? You know, it's uh, kind of, I guess, just trend, uh, go with the trend, right? That's what I said. I said, you know, if we could just recycle between these kind of areas on the... Uh, and I'm showing and I'm, I'm just blocked there. If we can recycle between these kind of channel areas, then I'll be happy, right? So I'm not gonna get too greedy right now. If I'm in a long and it's working, I'm gonna try to hold it, but at the same time, I'm cognizant of the fact that do we really get back over 4,100? Like if the long was gonna be amazing, then we either should have bounced, I think, at 4,120 or 4,100. The fact that we're now below and like it's sideways, now you got the VWAP overhead, you got a lot of people that maybe got long that are now stuck. Um, same kind of logic with the, uh, the QQQ over there. Um, where I was mentioning that 295 buyer. It's like the 295 buyer, if they didn't get out, now we flush, they're getting out at 295. So they're breaking even, and uh, that's gonna be the reason as to why that's the level, right? So that's kind of my take on that one. We'll okay. see if we can continue to nurse this uh, meta trade going to the upside, and uh, yeah, see if we get some out um, closer to uh, 122.50 area. I think those are, those are money exits for sure. All right, let's head up to Brendo for the Euro close, guys. Can I ask? Hey guys, yeah, speaking of, just waiting for some final prints to come through here, but a nice positive session uh, shaping up here for European markets as we uh, wrap things up following this CPI print this morning, all of them moving to the upside along with North America. So here's uh, one, we're just waiting for a few other ones right now. Uh, this is the FTSE 300, 1.09% uh, on the provisional side of things, but uh, that's the way the board looks right now as a few more prints coming through, 0.72. Uh, 1.2, 1.3, same story for Italy, 1.5 there for Sweden. It was leading all morning long, so nicely positive. Worth mentioning, though, off the highs, as we saw uh, with North America this morning, but uh, still, positive day, guys. Thanks for that, Brendo. Yeah, guys, I uh, just want to answer a quick question. Abhishek Desi uh, had a question in the chat um, relayed to us by Bears versus Bulls, so thanks for that, Bears for versus Bulls, always the awesome moderator that you are. They're asking, what's the logic for higher option prices in different stocks? So I, you and I were just talking about this off camera while there was Brendo and I, I thought it just had to do with the premium that's to be paid and that's usually based on the volatility of the stock and some other things. Guys, do you wanna chime in on that? Um, yeah, I can, I can cover it quickly. Okay. So essentially, if, if your question is, um, you know, why are options more expensive uh, across the board from stock to stock, it's all relative, right? Mm -hmm. It's all gonna be relative to the stock and to the expected move of the stock. But if the question is why are options more expensive now as opposed to before, no, or what I'm used to seeing. Yeah, see, so like for example, yeah. uh, Tesla options are gonna be more expensive because the moves of Tesla are more, um, right? So, it's, yeah. so it's, all, it's all relative. But mm -hmm. another good question, or somebody might have the question of, you know, why is it more expensive um, right now versus before. And the reason is implied volatility. There's no free lunch in the market. Yeah. And so essentially what happens is, um, you know, people know CPI, people know this is a big week. There's a lot of data coming out. So the moves are gonna be bigger than expected. And so that's the reason you pay for that, right? You pay for that. So it becomes more expensive to put on straddles. It becomes more expensive. Um, maybe you make a little bit less if you're doing spreads or whatever. Um, if you're completely just gambling and saying, I'm buying out of the money calls for the end of the week, like those are gonna be more expensive as well. So yeah, implied volatility. Uh, you pay for that, right? That's market makers. They're kind of hedging themselves. They're not, they're not uh, stupid. They know what they're doing. That's their job. So uh, you, you pay for that, right? And just to quickly talk about this, obviously we don't trade options here, but no. something that um, 
the, yeah, exactly. A lot of people are using options to hedge. It's like anything else, right? If the demand for a stock is, is high, then it's going to be very tough to get those fills. And so if a lot of people are hedging because they're worried and a lot of people are speculating, there's just more demand for options. You're paying more because implied volatility is higher. Everything is higher, right? Um, something, and the last thing I want to comment on this, um, when I was trading options back in uh, university, uh, the premiums were, were way cheaper at the time, and I oh. thought they were expensive. And uh, you know, some of the moves that, that, I was, that I was seeing back in the day on some of the trades that I was taking was, was pretty insane, man. And this was before Netflix ran up, before Apple ran up. And so it wasn't, I guess, priced in. And so you know, it, it was kind of interesting. It was kind of interesting seeing like huge moves, huge swings. And uh, yeah, at the time I was like, holy, this is, this is insane. And then as time went on, you know, um, approaching, um, I want to say like 2018, 2019, uh, Goldman wrote a report saying, Option volume is at all-time highs, and you know it, it, they're insanely expensive. And you know I haven't traded options for so long, and then I looked back at the prices, and I was like, oh man, like I feel like you can make money now, like you can, but like you know from a relative standpoint, from a historical standpoint, I'm looking at them and I'm like, I would I would not be trading these, Way man. Higher, I feel right? like I'm just getting ripped off now. Like this is like look at the like the the move is implied, right? It's just like you're not gonna make any money unless things go two times, which they are, which is insane. But yeah, no, kind of crazy there. Uh, but yeah, that's the last thing I'll say there. Um, Trader Gordon was saying XOM short. I want to have a look at XOM. Um, I liked my problem with uh, these oil trades is I, I almost feel like they're, you're better off swinging these. Like, you know, take less size and swing them. That's what I'm telling myself. We kind of dip down to this, you know, 103, and I called this, right? 104, 103. But it's not going to give the move intraday. I mean, sometimes it does. And uh, going back to that 104 level, uh, you know, this was a banger long. It gave you the opportunity. It flushed. But look where it held. It held that sort of that 103.50 bottom. And then uh, we popped yesterday. And here we are today popping again uh, up at 108, right? I don't know if this will be a, you know, kind of call it like a short. It's very range bound today. It's not really. Um, I kind of like that short idea. If you're talking about intraday, just kind of playing the range, like short above 108.20, go for like the below VWAP move. I'm personally not gonna take a trade right now. I'm gonna see if this can get closer to 109, then maybe I'd consider it. But I'll be honest, it'll be very small size for me because uh, a lot of the times I'm looking at these oil moves, I don't make money intraday, but the swing trade on them are bangers, right? If you got long below 104, now you're at 108, already $4 in the money, um, it's very easy. You know, like do you hold, do you sell it? It doesn't matter, you're in the money. So uh, yeah, it's uh, very, very easy there. So uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll revisit that one in a bit. I'm just gonna glance back at my AMD. Is it getting down? I, I think I'm bidding 51s. Where am I here? Yeah, I'm bidding like 51s, 52s. Um, that area. I might I might change the order, but the general idea is I wanna I wanna get long below this area. So I wanna get long almost below 72.50 because I don't believe that we're gonna sell off into like 72, 71, 80. I think we could easily dip below that level. I wanna collect the longs and then go for the pop back into 73. So that's kind of my logic on that trade. We'll see if it comes to fruition. And uh, let me look at Tesla before I pass it back over to Sharif here. Ooh, that's uh, good. Yeah, it kind of, you know, Beautiful. it's Flat tough. bottom breakdown, baby. Ex exactly, I was gonna, maybe I'll let you, I'll let you talk <laughs> no, about I this. No, I got something else to talk about, so okay, you can go yeah. ahead. But yeah, yeah it yeah. just looked really good. Yeah, yeah, well, that's, this is the thing, man. I'm just talking, and I'm like, I'm like, ah, you know, this thing's not bouncing, the short is good. But it's hard to justify a short here when we're just at 176. Sure. So, I mean, look at the move, right? Absolutely. But at the same time, am I going to pull this up in an hour and it's going to be at 158? You just don't like, know. There's, there's you just potential don't know, for that, right? right? So, yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't know there. We'll see what happens. But, uh, yeah, see if we get that AMD long there and uh, waiting for meta fills at the top. All right, guys. GRTS took that dip trade at 321, scalped up all the way up into the 30s here. We're back uh, to, towards recent highs. Printy, there we go. We get filled up all the way way at 36 this one is booming baby so this one's a really good trade love this one on grts uh where we go let's take some more profits there we go up to the 40s so this one's printing uh i like this one i was upset like momentarily because i hadn't been focusing on smmt and it had its bull flag continuation flat top breakout whatever you want to call it um, and it made its move and it made a great move. It was like a 25 penny move on the $3 stock. So it looked really good, but I was focusing on GRTS. So I'm not so sad anymore because GR GRTS just made an equally uh, good move. I've got like, I want to say third, like, oh, what is that? That's like 20%, maybe a little bit less, 18% of the position that I had originally on GRTS. Now this one's up 33% of the day. We are getting up here, guys. Wow, look at this. Come on, 
gimme, gimme, there we go. Get out some at 45, this one's gonna test the half dollar. I've got less now than I did before. There we go, we break through the half dollar, although momentarily, uh, you know, holding a little bit below the half dollar at the moment, I'm looking to get some more out if we can break up above the half dollar again. But uh, it just looks like we're, we're gonna retrace a little bit on this one, come back into the low 40s, but this one really, really good. And the reason I like this one, again, I'll reiterate, there were multiple areas of previous resistance and, for, and now current support at the area where I got in. Let's have a look again. We had a double top here at the exact same level, and then we had a pullback and then a break through that level again, but there was a pullback before you broke through that level. So it shows you that that 320 level, 315 to 320 level was important. And then look at all these retracements after the breakout. They all stop at 318, 320 in that area. So that area looked really good to me, punched in long, and uh, now we're uh, reaping the rewards of that decision. Yeah, let me just give you a flip side scenario to that GTRS. Nice trade, by Go the way, that's it. absolutely insane. But I just want to kind of give you, I'm, I'm definitely, <clears throat> hold on, uh, G, G there it is. GRTS, there yeah. we go. And uh, I'm definitely, you know, you guys know I, I favor the shorts on these on these moves. You know, don't fight the trend. The long is a banger, but from a short side perspective, see how it clears high a day there. Yeah, and the reverse. So what? I, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's, like what? That's I, 2022. Yeah, exactly. That's 2022. So I, I almost feel like you catch these moves. Yeah. You see it's holding. You take the long perfect. Mm -hmm. The thing to be cognizant of is as we're breaking the highs or breaking a key level, look for that volume spike because this is exactly what it gave you, right? Kind of volume picked up a little bit over here. You had the move that you're looking for from a scalp perspective. Mm -hmm. It breaks through the high, it runs volume, and then these are, not to say that this is gonna happen right now, yeah. but these are like, these are the areas that it will break the high a day and then it'll flush and it'll go into Absolutely. like, you know what I mean? No so question about it. It's, it's like, this is like, yeah. you know, tech, you could you could trade this both ways. You trade it long into high a day cover for myself. I kind of watch high a day go, then I consider the short, um, you know, both different opportunities, both ways to make money. Nice to kind of, you know, bounce different trader perspectives off absolutely. each other. No, no, I, I, I couldn't, I, I wouldn't even call that a different perspective. I absolutely agree with what you're talking about there because, you know, Pratt and I talk about it all the time. 2022 has been the year where if you break pre-market highs or or if the high was established after the bell, and it's a small capper, I'm talking about small cappers. Yeah. You know, before, like in 2020, 2021, I was taking the break of the pre-market high to the long side. Okay? And, uh, that was my move. Yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, and it worked for a bit, and now it's kind of the exact opposite. It's like you short the pre-market high if you break it after the bell. Like, yeah. And so that's been the case with a lot of these. But hey, that's what stop losses are for, and that's what getting uh, good entries are for. Thankfully, here we got in at 21. It's at 38 at the moment. So all I do is once I get in the money and I'm far enough away from my entry, I'll just put a stop on my entry. I mean, and then I won't lose anything on the trade. Yeah, sure, it's pulling back. Luca's absolutely right. Look how far away it is from uh, my sitting profit taker here. This one's sitting at 54s. Now we're tracing into 35s. So all I really gotta do to lock in the profits on this one, even for like the remaining 10% that I had, I'm just gonna put a, a stop at my, um, at my entry. So let's go ahead here, 321. And we'll give it to like 319 in case it really like flies there. So we'll give it a two penny spread. That Order will sit there and um, if it gets filled, it gets filled. Been profitable on like 90% of the trade. So, good trade so far. The one that got away from me though, and I'm a little disappointed about it, is I was kind of stubborn with where I wanted to get in. I wanted to get in right out of view up, but sometimes it doesn't really give you that opportunity. It doesn't really all trace, retrace all the way back to view up. It's like near it, and you gotta be able to kind of get lucky a little bit, whether your order is gonna be close enough to the to the dip or, or not. In this case, I wasn't, and looks like mRNA now is curling again to the high side without me off that bottom that we made there at 198.30ish. Now we're in the 204.10s. 30s, Luca, we're moving. High of day on mRNA is 208.52. We are 204.26, so. Four bucks or so, this creates a new <coughs> high. It'll be interesting to see whether we create a bit of a double top or uh, we continue to the to the high side. But uh, my money is on a continuation because it's just that kind of day, right? So if this one starts testing 208s and breaks it decisively, I want to get in. I want to be a bit, I want to be part of that, Luca. Yeah, guys, something's happening. That was a big flush. So like, uh, scrap the idea that I had. I took along on AMD. Um, it's just kind of a little bit of volume coming through on the sell. So I'm out of that one. Um, out of the meta there, that was pretty nasty flush to the downside. And uh, same with Apple. I kind of add, add. But 
there was a little tell, like some program selling that hit the book, and I was like, mm, I don't know, like uh, I, I think I'm gonna be wrong here, but I'll I'll let it, you know, kind of breathe. Maybe it's maybe I'm missing something. I don't know why that move happened, but uh, yeah, we're breaking the lows here, so I'm not gonna be silly and hold on to that. I'll take the L and uh, take it in stride and move forward there. I'm probably gonna scale way way back for the rest of the day, just because. Uh, yeah, gonna not try to ruin ruin my day unless a really good opportunity comes up. It's so easy, man, midday to ruin your day. It's so easy because you know the moves are are not what the moves are in the morning, and you know you're not really gonna get the opportunity to make back the money back. until the end of the day. So, um, you know, yeah. you see these kind of flushes to the downside. I think if you're if you're short, you know, playing off the range, I should have I should have probably taken some shorts there, but I just wasn't really paying attention to uh, some key levels there. So, yeah, no, it's uh, it's all good there. Let me look at Tesla because where are we now on Tesla? I think we're at 160 here. Jeez. Um, oh, man, 160. Okay, so. so. are we at all-time lows? Like, or, um, like yeah. We're at 52s, obviously, Yeah, 52 right? lows, yeah. No question about that. Yeah. Where do we get down to? I, last week, I was looking at the levels on Tesla. Tesla. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even notice I did that. Uh, for last week, let me just look real quick where we got down to. Oh, yeah, we're way below that. Wow. Wow, Tesla. Jeez. Okay, sorry to interrupt you, Luca. Yeah, no, so uh, 160.05 is the bottom here. I'm going to try small size short through 160. I'm not sure any, if any size is there. I think if we break it, we easily just kind of flush down, and then I'm going to scalp it out. Somebody said 255, or sorry, 155 on Tesla, and I was like, say less, man. I, 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 kind <laughs> of, I said 158. For some reason, I think eight, uh, 8 is good there. But, yeah, let's see if there's any size there at uh, 160. And I'll try to pull it up here. Hopefully, I don't get rinsed on this. I'll be out of this if it goes against me very quickly. I'm just trying it because there is a lot of selling. There's a lot of follow through. A lot of people are offside on Tesla. And if they haven't sold, they're, you know, not really too happy about it. Yeah, so there's maybe 2,500 lots, 160 there. So it could be an interesting level for anybody watching it. Um, just make sure you guys are watching your orders. There's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, follow through. And it's uh, do they want to, you know, are they hedging this level? If, if we print 160, for sure, we're going to go through that. And uh, I'm not really sure if my stop below that's going to fill there. But, yeah, we'll see what happens. I think it uh, could be good for a 50-cent scalp for sure. And then, you know, if I'm in the money, I'll try to hold on to some there. But, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens there. Yeah, GRTS, now it looked like it was going to break through that half-dollar level. But retracing aggressively yeah, now, uh, flirting with that 50-period moving average. Again, our out is at 321. <laughs> it's at 329 now. So I just got to make sure that I'm watching it. I've got to stop, but sometimes if, if you don't leave enough of a spread between your limit and your stop trigger, uh, it gets blown through and the or order just sits there on the book and doesn't get filled. So with these ones, I just want to, I want to keep an eye on it, uh, especially since there's not too, too much happening at the moment. I mean, SS. SMMT retracing back into an interesting support level. So I'll have to come back to that one and look at it a little bit more because, oh, actually looks like it might be setting up an interesting head and, sh head and shoulders. But we'll get back to that one after we decide what we're going to do here on GRTS. I don't want to keep uh, belaboring the point, but um, either I ch change my stop to like a much wider two pen than two pennies or I got to keep my eye on this one, at least for the moment. Uh, let's look at... Um, yeah, let's, I don't want to change screen, so let's look at our scanner. What's going on? Anything new? SNES? Anytime I see SNES, the first thing that comes into my mind is Super Nintendo Entertainment System, right? That's what SNES stands up to, for me. Did you ever play Super Nintendo? Is that before your time? No, no, I played. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I want to make sure, yeah, Super Nintendo. SNES. Remember I have to blow in the cartridges? Yeah. <laughs> and, like, get, to, get them to go in because they, they yeah. don't function? Yeah. Wow, that was awesome back in the day. Now it's all cloud-based. Anyway, now you don't have to worry about any of that. But GRTS, yeah, really flirting with that level. Um, let's leave that one real quick and see what we are doing on mRNA. Yeah, this one... Finding a bit of a top again at about 205, tracing back down now to 202. Wow, $3 is just like a, a tiny retracement for mRNA. This one can really, uh, this one can really like rip your face off if you, if you catch it in the, uh, in the wrong time on the wrong direction. You know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about. $2 in a tiny looking candle is pretty scary because most people, you know, they're risk tolerance. I don't know if it's going to be $2, but unless they're sized in accordingly. Okay. Let's talk quickly about the futures here because we are starting to trend down again. I mean, Luca, before we had that monster move at 8.30, the market was at, uh, was at 4.49, 40.49, I mean, like mm. 40.50 area-ish. We're at like that 40 and a half. Now we're at 40.56. 
So have we given back that whole move? I mean, yeah, we guys, went up this to is 4180, Luca. Yeah, this is this is wild right now. This is pretty uh it's pretty fun to watch. Just uh yeah, guys, make sure you take trades that make sense. And I'll preach that every single time. If you don't see it, no trade is a trade, right? Um, there's a lot of opportunities that come along uh, intraday. Just make sure that you wait and you're very patient. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to go into chill mode until I see something set up. You know, I'm not shorting the lows here. 160 is, a, is different because, you know, you have size at the 160 level. I said to myself, if this breaks, it's probably good for 50 cents. And for myself, it would be like, take the fill, take it out wherever I can take. And I think it stopped at 159.50-ish, so it did give you the 50 cents. But the thing is, I crossed to like maybe 10 cents to try to get that fill, and no fill, no fill. So what am I going to do? Cross down 30 cents and then take a 10 cent win on Tesla? That doesn't make any sense. So I'm definitely okay to miss that, miss that fill. Um, yeah, man, this is like this is going to be slamming levels to the downside. 158.78 is the bottom of this current move that just took place right now. Look at the selling, selling picking up, going into the 160 level. Um, yeah, man, this is, uh, maybe I should have just, this is like, you know, I was like, look at this. I've never seen this before. No this way. is going down, and then sure <laughs> enough, it, it goes down. But, yeah, no pop to actually get into that short. So, I don't know, maybe, maybe this balances out at 159, or sorry, 158, 157. I don't think, I, I think 155 would be, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, but I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't know about 155. Uh, I know people say 155, but that's just five dollar increments, right? It's like 175, 165, 155. I think uh, you know what? It'll be really nice if we if we get close enough to that 150 level. But don't. Yeah, no. There's no way we touch 150. Someone's saying 154, 133. Yeah, I got. Well, you know what? I love seeing people's predictions because it's. I'm just like 153. What do you see over there? And then I pull it up and, I, and maybe I see something and I'm like, oh yeah, okay, I know what you're saying. But uh, yeah, no. This thing is this thing is crazy. It's doing so much volume. Um, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not shorting into a hole here. Even though it's probably going to go lower, I'm not going to chase. I'm not going to chase this right now, just because that's uh, that's a recipe what for a disaster, flat, man. That's isn't that what I disaster. was calling a flat bottom breakdown? Yeah, that's why I was like, maybe oh, you want to you want to take this. You want to so take this nice. here? Hey, it's uh, set Jeez. up for you for the taking. You know, it looks not fantastic. every day does somebody kind of bring you a steak <laughs> yeah. and go, hey, uh, you want this or? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, but I totally get what you're saying. Like shorting at like low of day and much below. Low, like where we were at it's got, the peak. Yeah, it's, it's got to be scary. It's got to yeah. be scalps. Like but, that's essentially what I'm saying. It's like it's got to be scalps, right? Mm. Even though you think it could keep going, yeah, maybe it doesn't ever go back through 160. So you you could say, oh, I'm in the money, so things are good. But mm. I would say you got to be careful, uh, you know, shorting into lows because eventually yeah, it's going to give some sort of pop, sure. and uh, it could be violent pop to the upside there. Yes, the chat trolling me for saying Tesla. Yes, yes, that's uh, that's okay. All right, what else we got? in store guys having a look here for things that are moving not too too much in small cap world it's kind of calmed down a little bit we've only really got two on watch at the moment um s s m m t n g r t s by the way update i got out of the rest of my position on g r yeah on g r t s at that three dollar and 27 cent area uh I, looked to me like it was setting up for a flat bottom breakdown uh, yeah, and there it goes. And that's why I felt that that's what it was setting up for. You know, it, we had a lot of tests of that lower level and not much uh, not much buying to the high side. Buyers were really not stepping in. And the tape didn't really have, uh, sorry, the, the book didn't really have too much, uh, too much there uh, in, in the bid area for support if it was to make its way down. So I got out of this one. Uh, I tried to wait for that half dollar break. It did break the half dollar, even though momentarily 352. I couldn't get out at that area though. So, but uh, still a good trade nonetheless. Uh, NCPL is another one we were watching from earlier this morning. This one giving back the goodies though. Uh, it held above a VWAP for uh, for a period. You know, it had a valiant little effort there. But ever since then, it's just been selling off. And this is definitely a short going into uh, the low of day. We just created 216. That's the low of day now. That's not the pre market th low though, guys. You know what this is? Part the of uh, the yesterday's close is $1.40, so that's the better level that I would be looking for, not the current low of day. So $1.39, $1.40 ish area. The other one we were looking at is MLGO. This one's done basically nothing but halt to the downside since uh, what time? 940. 
Uh, ever since 940, this one was a, a better pre-market stock than it was an after the bell stock, unless you're short-minded, in which case it's been great to you because it's come down from 7150, now trading at 1450. So this one, a hell of a short. I know someone in, uh, someone on the floor ordered shorts for this one, so I hope they're printing. Uh, what else we got, Luca? We don't have much else. That's basically well, it. Uh, so, you know, I'm gonna try this, this short again in front of 160 on Tesla. And this is, this is specifically a scalp trade. And the reason I'm gonna do this is because I've seen this setup before. We break a key level to the downside. We flush lower. We never come back through 160. We run back to 160. This is gonna rip 160.01s, trigger those stops, and I think we flush back down right away. And so if that happens, then I'll be in the money right away. So I'm gonna try the short in front of it. But if we continue to go through 160 to the upside, then I'm gonna probably risk, uh, try to risk 50 cents on this. And it's, uh, it's super small size, so I'm not really too worried about it. This is not a trade, you know, if you're going for kind of really tight moves in, in these areas, you could, you could get smoked so quickly. So you gotta, you gotta size accordingly. Um, but there's definitely a lot of volume here. So it's just kind of a very interesting area right now. And uh, yeah, somebody in the chat was saying, uh, yeah, Luca, you called it uh, Tesla 150. I, I, man, I can't take credit for that. I think, I, I want to say everybody, everybody called it. You know, it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, you know, it's, it's just there. It's there for it's the taking. Pretty, you could, calls don't make you money anyway, so I don't even, it doesn't even matter. But yeah, no, I think uh, 150 inbound for sure. Then we break 150 and it's just a matter of, okay, where do we balance out at? Where do we go? So I think I'm about to get this Tesla fill short right now. And again, if we break 160 and, and rip to 160.50, like I'm out of the trade. So I'm risking 50 cents. I'm going to go for 50 cents. It's probably going to be a, a, like a one-to-one. -one, so obviously one-to-one -one size. Um, that's kind of what I'm, what I'm doing there. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see. Do I even get the fill is the question. I think I'm sitting right in front of 160. So I'm actually oh, going cool. for the stop hunt. I want that stop hunt. I want it as close to 160 as possible. And uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens there. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't know, you know, I know some people like to follow it on trade, some people don't. Uh, that's why I'm trying to just be very transparent with, you know, what my expectations are for the trades that I take. Um, I lose all the time, man. I lose all the time. I have good trades, I have bad trades. Some trades are, you know, I don't think some trades can be followed, to be honest, because if they're very quick scalp trades, it's like, do you have the speed, do you have the execution to kind of take that trade? And then if I have like intraday ideas, I'll, I'll say that as well. But man, just trade your own book. I call it like I see it, kind of looking at these levels here. I think AMD now at 72, maybe now. I mean, that was a pretty like sharp move down and then we kind of balanced out a little bit. Uh, my eyes are definitely glued here on Tesla. I think I'm gonna get the fill. Okay, so we're in the trade here. And uh, yeah, safety stop is in, man. Safety stop is in, do we run the 160s? I'm gonna throw my bid out. Uh, I'm gonna go for closer to 159 actually, just get a little more. I think we could actually flush down there. And uh, yeah, that'll be awesome. If we break to the upside, we break to the upside. I lose the trade, it is what it is. I'm gonna pull up Apple again just to see where we are on this name. Uh, man, yeah, good thing. I think good thing I got out of that, even though I probably eh, went to below 146. Now at this point, it's just map your levels. Like, are there significant levels that you see that you like? Like we, as Sharif was mentioning, we literally reversed the whole move. Um, and I'm kind of looking at this, like we started the move at like 145.60 right? on Apple. Like every name is gonna probably, you know, look the same, give or take. But we started the move here at like 145. 60 and here we are now back 145 60 giving a little bit of a bounce there so maybe maybe that's a you know a level of interest in terms of like it's kind of where we started you know it, it reversed the whole move our shorts covering here are people bidding here like what's actually going down here so yeah if we can get back down closer to 146 i'm gonna okay. i'm gonna try the long once again but uh yeah again i'm uh, i'm small size because it's, these are just these are kind of like eh, trades like i like them i don't love them so uh, yeah, I just gotta remind myself. I definitely get myself into too much size. I convince myself onto these trades and then I'm, I'm here stuck holding the bag. Like, what am I doing? So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just size accordingly. And uh, yeah, hopefully it's helpful to you guys. I try to you know, explain my kind of logic on these things in real time. Um, it's not easy to do, man. Uh, you know, again, mad respect to Neil, Sean, Arun when he comes on, Brendo. Um, it, it's, a, it's a tough gig, it's a, and Pratt too, man, and you as well. <laughs> like coming in, it's like anybody who does that, Ian, you know, I can't miss any names now. Uh, I know, anybody right? who comes on and, and does this, it's, like this is challenging, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly, so now I'm like, it's, a, it's like an award show. I'm like, a, and you know, yeah. and shout out to God too. And uh, yeah, no, uh, lots of fun for sure. So yeah, no, no stop out there on Tesla, still in the short, uh, probably going back down. So I think I'm good on that one. I'm gonna revisit Meta too here. Are we closer to 120? Eh, not really. If we can get back 
to that 120, I'm going to recycle the level. So I'm going to throw a bit out and see if we can get that closer there. Can and we just talk uh, about that once we get back from Brendo, who's at the big desk sure. with happening now. Hey guys, into lunch hour we go. Let's have a look at uh, what is happening now, how we're shaping up after, yeah, post CPI rally kind of faded out, was uh, initially uh, positive, helping sentiment overall, and it was all about uh, the thoughts, at least, of smaller rate hikes to come. We will find out tomorrow if we get the first in the shape of a 50 basis point hike from uh, Fetcher Powell tomorrow afternoon. 1% right now for the S&P, well off the highs. Uh, 0.23 only for the Dow, 1.5 for the NASDAQ. Remember, uh, we got to 4% on the initial move from uh, the CPI number. So, yeah, 2 plus percent uh, back downside there for uh, the NASDAQ. There's oil having quite the day. 3.2% for crude, 3.3, 3.6 for both Bitcoin and Ethereum holding on to gains. This one, uh, part of the problem, 46 for Tesla, as you guys were mentioning there, just cannot find a bid uh, all the way down to uh, below 160 now. We're trying to hold 160 right now, but do we get to 150 on Tesla? Wow, QCOM, 2% on the other hand, trying to hold some gains from this morning after that upgrade for Qualcomm, guys, back to you. I wonder if any of Elon's uh, loan, um, people that loaned him money, like the banks that loaned him money for the purchase of Twitter are really uh, lamenting their decision to take Tesla shares as collateral because they are worth <laughs> much less than they were in April. Luca, yeah. geez. And we were just talking to Sean. I'm not really sure what the stat is now after this monster move to the downside, but I think as of last week, it was down 51% year to date. I got to think that it, it's probably much lower than that, maybe in the 60s now. So, wow, that's all I can say. Uh, Jason in the chat wants to know, do you like AMC dip buy in front of yesterday's low in the 560 area? So first and foremost, I won't trade AMC um, unless it's like moving on some sort of news. That's just my preference. That doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. Uh, but you know, this is tradable. Obviously, we, we know that there's a decent range here. It's about a dollar range on AMC on a $5 stock, so it's not too bad. Let's pull up the 15-minute chart so we can have a look at yesterday's lows. Okay, so the lows I think you're referring to are 560. Yes, it made that low right after the bell there at 1030 yesterday. You, you know, there probably is a good area or there is a good amount of support uh, at that level. It's hard for me to know. I don't have a volume profile. Um, you know, the volume profile, in, I don't, it's not an indicator, the tool or whatever that they have on TradingView to know exactly how much volume took place at that particular price, but you know, it's always an interesting uh, experiment to dip by off these uh, lows that were created quite recently, yesterday, the day before, or whatever. So I'm not going to take this trade. If it's for, if you're going to take it, awesome. Uh, the 560 is a decent level. I, I don't know how it's acted in the past. Maybe let's move back a little bit and see if uh, these dip buys off key levels proved fruitful. Let's see, let's zoom out a little bit here. This is probably something I should be doing off camera because uh, it's going to take some time to compare all the different days and stuff. So maybe I'll come back to that. But yeah, this one, not for me. I'm looking this for this to the high side when it's moving on news, uh, something positive or maybe even if not even something positive, even if it was a negative catalyst, but it'd have to be on news. And I don't think it's moving on news. Down 3.8% on the day just because, just because of so. I, unless... There is a news catalyst on AMC that I'm unaware of. If so, just tag me in the chat and I will announce that. Guys, I just want to update you real quick on the like count. We have 3,600 likes today. Something oh, really? tells me it has to do with the fact that it's a CPI day. I think And that yeah, we had more. a nice little move. Yeah, and yeah. Tesla's at all-time lows and continuing to print. So, uh, guys, let's get that count up. Can we get it to 4,000? I don't really think... 4,000 is too much of an ask seeing where we are at the moment. 3,600, we can get that like count up, guys. I know for sure. There we go, 3,700. Let's get it up to, to 3,800 or 3,900. And maybe I'll stop saying Tesla for the remaining part of the day. And I'll just say Tesla, which I don't like saying. Um, one more thing before I pass it off uh, to Luca over there. I had one more thing to talk about. Yeah, I got into a short on MRNA. Just playing the range here, guys. I'm not looking for anything uh, sustained. Got in 204.40, covered for a dollar and a bit winner at 203.31. So a nice little dollar win on the short on MRNA. But this one's in a range, and I just chose to play the range here. Not something I probably want to do again. 
but a little winner up 23% on the day. Yeah, guys, something I want to uh, note here. So uh, just going back to this, uh, the, uh, the Tesla trade. So this, this stayed at 160 longer than I would have liked to see. But I'm like, I'll just keep the same stop because I'm sized accordingly, so I'm not really too worried. Then we had this little bit of a pop, and I hope you guys can see this, this little bit of a pop into what was a maybe two, 300 lots that was sitting just in front of 160.40. And so a lot of the times, what, what's, um, I, one of the traders here made a really good point, and I never actually thought about it this way, but they were saying, you know, because my logic was, for some reason, the market gravitates to size. I don't know why, but if there's size on the bid or the offer, it doesn't really matter. It's going to try to fill that size. And I, I was like, I don't know why that's the case. And uh, one of the traders was, men was mentioning um, commissions. You know, like liquidity providers are just trying to fill everything because that's how they make their money. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's a really good point, man. I never really thought about it that way. And ever since, you know, kind of, you know, grouping that sort of the market gravitates to size, coinciding with that, oh, this is maybe the reason as to why, you know, what I started to notice is if I'm in positions and big size pops on the book, I don't actually look at that, like if size is on the offer over here, I don't, I don't want size to be on the offer over here because if it wasn't there, it'd probably just be like floating to where it's going to go. But this market right now is really, really trying to fill that size. And right now the size is chasing it down. So the size was over here, then it went to 20s. Now it's at the even dollar or just above. And so like as that size continues to like try to get the fill, it's going to fill it, and as soon as it fills it, it's probably going to give some, some type of explosive move to the upside, even short term. So before, I'm like, yeah, I'll risk 50 cents, but now I'm like, I don't know if that, like, we, we better go down right now and fill my bid, or I'm probably going to get stopped out. And so I'm not removing my stop. I'm still keeping it in the same spot, but I'm really hoping that it just gives, gives the flush and, and fills my bid down closer to 159 because uh, you know, waited this whole time, now we're at the 50s. Every time we make a new low and then pop back above, it's just not good for the shorts. Um, it's just not, it, it just should have went already. That's kind of my logic there. And uh, I think I just got smoked on this apple long. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna punch out of this one as well. That one, uh, that was not a part of the plan. I didn't even really notice that. But uh, it's all good, man, it's all good. I just, just coming on here and taking L's when I'm not even paying attention. Ah. But it's, it's, that's why I size accordingly, right? That's why I say midday, you got to size accordingly. That looks fantastic. Yeah, no, now this what is going to, this is going to, well, here? this is going to pay for the Apple, yeah, the okay. Apple, uh, yeah. this is bad, man. I okay, wanted 146 yeah, I playing off 145. I look back, I'm like, oh no, like look You're at that. You're a brave soul though, going well, long Apple, short Tesla. I just, I yeah, get for the, scared for the big six because they move so close together, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, okay, okay, beauty. So I got the fill hey. on that, uh, you know, back to hey. flat, whatever is what it is. Um, again, man, not, not easy, not an easy gig, not an easy gig. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the show. Yeah, man, 3,800 likes. Thanks so much for that. Uh, yeah, please I think we hit, can do better, Luca. I think, guys, hit the like button. Like, like I said when we started the show, <laughs> today's a good day because I didn't get smoked. So I'm happy. Hopefully you guys are happy. Uh, you know, uh, traders win, traders lose. It's a zero-sum game. Yes, sir. But, uh, you know, it's nice to kind of just say, um, you know, it's a good day when you don't get smoked. Um, I, I'll, I'll leave it at that, right? Luca long below VWA. I just want to mention something real quick, Luca. Uh, it's with respect to Sam Bankman Freed mm. and the whole FTX saga. As you guys know, um, basically, testimony has started at uh, the Financial Services Committee in the House today with respect to the FTX um, meltdown. And one of their first um, witnesses to testify is actually the new CEO, John. John J. Ray, John Ray the uh, third. Essentially, this is a, a CEO that they bring in um, temporarily, and this person is kind of known to handle bankruptcies. He handled the Enron bankruptcy. You guys will remember Enron from the early 2000s, uh, an energy company from Houston that cooked the books, and he handled that. And he basically, you know, he drew some comparisons between uh, some of the other companies that have uh, went belly up and. FTX, he said all of them essentially have some sort of mismanagement, but the kind of mismanagement that he's seen at FTX is something that he's never seen in his entire career, and he's an elderly gentleman, so he's had, uh, one can assume, a substantial career. He said that employees were using Slack, like the chat app Slack, to make mm. business expense requests and, uh, mm -hmm. and to do other record keeping, and they were using QuickBooks a multi-billion dollar company was using essentially the same thing that you use for your tax or to balance your budget. They were using at an institutional level for a multi-billion dollar company. So 
he's, uh, he's giving us some insight into the amateurishness <laughs> of uh, the way that company was run. And, you know, maybe, maybe some people would like that kind of thing. You know, you keep costs low, this and that. You keep it, you keep it like, um, raw. You don't become corporate and mainstream. But, you know, there is certain things that you have to do when you become a public company. And that is record keep, record keep, record keep. And they weren't doing that, guys. So uh, interesting to see what we'll get out of his testimony. He's still on the Hill right now and um, disclosing some stuff. So if you want, uh, you can catch that on YouTube as well. Other thing, uh, real quick, that I want to mention, Binance CEO CZ now coming out and accusing, he's counterattacking, it looks like. He's uh, accusing Kevin O'Leary and Sam Bankman Freed of the fraud. I guess he's trying to divert attention from himself and his own company because they are now in the crosshairs of the Department of Justice. In fact, um, I think a leaked news article came out yesterday that said the DOJ, the federal DOJ, was split on whether or not to lay charges against CZ and um, the operation of Binance in general. Uh, for fraud and other regulatory um, mishaps. So that's going to be super interesting. I think, you know, the threat of uh, litigation is always bad in of itself. You, you get people running out of, the, running out of the, the woods trying to get their money out of there, even though there yeah. is no charges, you know? It's just I, the threat. You know, I'm not going to... I'm not gonna voice my opinion on the situation. <laughs> Everybody's got their own opinions. I have my opinion. I honestly don't want to voice my opinion cool. um, about you know what is right and wrong. I'll let uh, them figure that all out. But I'm pretty sure we all know what right and wrong is. So uh, yeah. I'm kind of on that side there. But yeah, anyways, somebody was asking Meta, why are you long Meta? Um, and I was like, I asked myself the same question. I had a bid out in front of 120 playing the level. And then I was like, man, I'm getting these like bids too fast. I'm out of the money on my longs. I'm like, this is not a good look. So I. I just kind of, I was like, I'm probably not going to lose. If it breaks 120, I'll get out of that. But um, it was, a, you know, it's a good level, but it's not something that I loved. So I, I had to cover that. It's a flat trade. Uh, it's a flat trade, nothing special. And uh, yeah, man, Phil on Tesla was good. For a moment, I was like, I should have probably went for low of day. But a lot of the times, if I'm risking 50 cents and I can get a dollar, two to one, I'm like, mm, yeah, I'll take it. It's not too bad. But I think looking back, Looking back at even this kind of scalp trade, I should have went for low of day because that's probably like low of day, then the covers, um, then the bounce back, right? So I was just like, ah, you know, I'm going to structure it in my own way, two to one. But realistically, I probably could have gotten like four to one there. Um, and I didn't even have like size. So it's like, why am I, why am I like quick to cover? But the thing is, is every time I glance at Tesla, it's like, it's like 30 cents this way, 30 cents that way. So I'm just going to take the win. And uh, also, yeah, like I, I was in that Apple long uh, that I lost on. So... When I, uh, yeah, when I lose, I just kind of, um, if I'm in a winner, not to say that it's the right thing to do to cover it to win, but there's going to be a lot of opportunities that continue to come for the rest of the day, so I don't really care. It's like I take a loss, I take a win, I take another win, take another win, and then take another loss, just kind of keep going from there. And uh, somebody's saying, Luca, nobody defends Sam. Why are you scared to have an opinion? No, I'm not scared to have an opinion. I voice my opinion all the time, but who am I? Who cares about my opinion? So that's kind of what I was getting at there. And uh, it's, it's obvious, right? Everybody is, everybody, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty obvious. I'm pretty sure everybody agrees with that. Uh, Luca, I'm going to take a nap. Done for trading. Later, bro. Yeah, later, bro. Enjoy the rest of the day. And, uh, yeah, hopefully you're profitable. Uh, lock in them profits, man. And, uh, you know, like, see, if we, see what we get for the rest of the day. Somebody saying Citadel is FTX. I was thinking that. But I don't know. Um, or farmer, sorry, I'm gonna glance back at the chat quick because some of these comments are, are bangers. I gotta just read them out here. Uh, Citadel is FTX, maybe. Like Citadel is Robinhood, so you know, may I wouldn't put it past it. Um, welcome to the Wild West. Absolutely, this is the Wild West. Crypto is even more wild than the Wild West. Uh, Kevin O'Leary is a con artist. Uh, that's for. I mean, I don't know. I don't really know the guy. Um, Ken Griffin is involved in FTX. Yeah, maybe soap opera Almeida. Um, yeah, what else here? There's actually one other, uh, you know what, it's, it's unfortunate that I miss some of these comments because I see them and then I kind of lose them in the rest of the comments that come through. Uh, yeah, okay, maybe it's just gone forever. It is what it is, no big deal. Uh, okay, let's revisit what we got here. Wow, Microsoft's at 255. I was trying the long, I think this was my, one of the, the losers. I was kind of getting long in front of 260 and I thought we would bounce because, you know, the low and I really wanted to let it break the level, give it a chance, but kind of sold off, didn't really look good. And now, yeah, here we are with the rest of the market, 255. Maybe, again, two, Microsoft was a little bit stronger yesterday. It still is up 1% from yesterday. So maybe I'm going to 
Yeah, I might regret this, but I'm getting long Microsoft here. I'm going to get long. We're at the pre-market low area. It's pretty much, I would, I'm not going to put a stop below 255. I'm going to kind of see how it reacts. Maybe it breaks 255. But I think, yeah, maybe we could bounce. And the fact that we sold off so, so much right now, like look at this move. This is like 258 down to 255. So the bounce back could even give 256. And so, yeah, if we can get 256, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that. I think, I think good for 256 there. So we'll see what happens. And, yeah, Tesla just continues to make lows, man. 158, I said it. I said 158, and here we are at 158. So, guys, I'm right. Well, I'm not, I'm not right because 158, 223 is the low. But uh, I'm right. Whoever said 155, pending. It is pending. Um, you know, but as we get there, it's like, oh, yeah, maybe 155 was, uh, you know, was a better call there. Uh, yeah, Meta now below that 120, so I'm going to let that one go. I'm going to see if there's another opportunity here. I'm going to keep Meta on my radar just because it dipped the 120, then ripped. Obviously, this was news-related, so scrap that. It's not going to do that again. I'll be surprised if it does that again. But, yeah, 120, if we dip, if we kind of come back above 120, I'm going to try the long there for, like, a little bit of a 50 cent to a dollar win, just kind of, like, scalp it, playing off the low. But I really want to see it, like, you know, interact with the low. Show me how it looks with the low, and then I'll, I'll go from there. And, uh, okay, yeah, Microsoft, no. Do not catch falling knives, folks. Uh, not a good look, not a good look. But uh, if anything, I'm more confident. I'm a, I'm a little more confident in the bounce back on the stronger names. Um, oh, I don't know no if question. I'm, I don't want to say, I mean, I don't know if Meta uh, or Microsoft is one of the more stronger names. But I guess, you know, you got you to gotta sort of respect that was not where, hmm, I should have paid way more attention to that. Now it's kind of, now, look at this, guys. This looks like we're into the abyss over here. Kind of going lower. Maybe next stop, one, 253. I think we might find a little bit of support, Luca, to, be, to, to kind of support your thesis. Because we are coming to the low of day on Apple. And personally, I think that Apple moves the market more than the other five. So it looks like we, we're coming to that 144.50. That was yesterday's close on Apple. So that's an interesting resistance level. We can Let's see if the market gets a little bit of a bounce off that. We are like all of 13 or 14 points away from going red, guys. I mean, wow. High of day, 41.80. We're at 40.40. Finding a, finding a little bit of a bounce now on Apple. Let's bring down in to the main screen here the big six charts that we always talk about. These are the big ones. Meta on the top left, Microsoft top middle. Google top right, Amazon bottom left, Apple bottom middle, and Tesla bottom right. So just we're acquainted with that. All of them decidedly below VWAP on the day. So is the market. So there's uh, some nice correspondence. I think personally, Meta looks to be the strongest of the bunch. It's the, I don't want to say it's the closest to VWAP. It's the least farthest away from VWAP. Um, Tesla goes without saying that it's, uh, it's the weakest of the bunch. Looks like... Meta is still up 4.4%. I didn't even look at that. 4.4%, Microsoft 1, wow, Apple now 4. There you go. You got a nice little bounce there on your... Yeah, no, it's just... Uh, hey, I told you. Guys, don't... Did I just tell you? Yeah, it's like, guys, I, I, you know, it's, it's right. nice to hear the, uh, the reformation there or <laughs> kind of a, words of encouragement. I'm just like, man, don't catch falling knives, guys. Just course, don't. I Do agree. yourself a favor. Unless there's like a level there. I'm kind of like, I, I had the pre-market low, but then it looked nasty for a second there. And I'm like, I don't know. Now I'm kind of, you know, still flat on the trade, kind of out of the money on it. I think my average is uh, uh, 255.20s. But, uh, yeah, maybe I'm just going to let it chill. I tried to add there just kind of closer to the bottom, but I, I missed the fill. Now it's obviously uh, 70 cents higher, so I'm not going to add back up here. But, yeah, maybe this one is actually, I mean, where did the market stall out there? You were mentioning it's kind of like at that, you know, pre-market area, uh, the ES we're talking about. To be at honest that with you, Luca, so yesterday's close is 40.26. So if we break 4026, we're red on the day. Yeah, I don't think uh, yeah. I think that's the that's a real potential better better bounce spot. Yeah, but, I agree uh, with that. I don't even know what to think, man. 4025, my cor correction, sorry, 4025, not 4026. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really know. Uh, I'm kind of chilling here, just watching. It's tough to uh, usually like I have like the levels and I'm just kind of revisit them and I'm just like, oh, I'm still flat on the trade. But today is the day where I'm like, I look back and I'm like, whoa, like I'm I'm like out of the money on this one here. Uh, so yeah, no, maybe it's, it's obviously going down, you know, the short is good. Why am I trying to catch a falling knife? I have no idea. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all good. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to hold on to that one and it's kind of stalling over here a little bit and I don't want to like take, I'm not going to take a loss because it's, it probably does pop, 
but I, I got my offers ready, I'll say that much. I got my offers ready. Um, it's not an intraday swing again. Uh, scalping for the rest of the day, I'm going to take the wins as they come. If I'm in losers, I'm going to try to cut them quickly. Somebody called out new load day, 158.03. So, uh, yeah, man, 158.03. If only calls made money, um, <laughs> you know, me calling 158.03 doesn't make me any money because I'm not in the short, I'm not in the long, just kind of chilling. Uh, looking back at a few other things, Amazon's far away from 90, but I love the 90 level on Amazon. It was like, uh, you know, we sold through that level. We spent so much time below 90. And now we're like, you know, still up on the day, had the move. We're selling off. If we get to 90, it could be, could be an interesting, like, you know, 90, 50, 90, 90 area bounce. Um, because, again, you know, as fast as we go down, we could, we could pop, right? We could pop a dollar. It's just a matter of do we pop right now or does it take the rest of the day to pop? Or, you know, is it like sort of you're just managing and, and being patient and then you kind of get out of the trade for flat? That's how I feel about these sort of bottom levels that I'm looking at right now. But, uh, yeah, as you guys can see, I'm, I, you know, some good trades, some bad trades. Uh, not really getting anywhere. Just kind of doing a lot and not really getting anywhere. But, uh, yeah, and, and Trader Gordon, oh, man, thanks, thanks for all the call-outs. Like, I see you're just kind of coming with uh, the other ideas. I know, you, I think you were saying Netflix. You were saying Nike. Um, right when I heard Nike, I'm just like, you know, I, I try to stay away from the lower volume stuff. But uh, for sure, there's, there's opportunity everywhere. It's just kind of not my style. But yeah, I appreciate mm. um, everybody who kind of shares ideas and you know, bounces ideas off each other. Uh, really, really nice. I love your cheery attitude, even when you're getting smoked. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. Like, sometimes I don't even I'm, think you're getting smoked. <laughs> well, no, but sometimes right. I, I get smoked, yeah. and I'm just like, damn it. You know, like that was, I'm like, damn it, I'm getting smoked. As a person smoked. who sat behind Luca for like three, four months, I can assure you that he does have a lot of expressions that when he's in trades, out of trades, it was awesome to sit behind Luca there for a while. Uh, very, very colorful person. I just wanted to shout out uh, to Jason. Uh, your AMC is at 560. I put a, I don't know why I put an alarm there. I don't usually do that, but 560. So if you were looking for that dip trade off yesterday's low, Jason, uh, we're currently at that on AMC. But I just want to talk quickly about the Fed rate tool. Pratt and I do this often. Uh, have a look here. So back on November 11th, when we had the, the, the last CPI, um, or, well, whatever, around that last CPI um, print, it was 80.6% for a half basis point hike and 19.4% for a 75 basis point hike. Uh, that, that changed. That changed back on December 12th then December 6th because new data came in that showed maybe inflation wasn't, uh, wasn't as low or slowing down as much as we thought. You know, we got the CPE print, the consumer, um, what's, it, what's it called? PCE, price, what is it called again? The PCE or CPE? Well, it's PCE, right? And sorry, which that, is that? It's like an inflation, uh, cal inflationary calculation. It's like CPI. I think it's called PCE. Um, anyway, that came in uh, better than expected. And then we had the PPI come out on Friday. That was worse than expected. So then it ended up going down again. Now we're back at 80-20. 79.4 and 20.6. PCI? PCI, no. Well, I'm going to have to look this up, man. PCE inflation. There we go. It is PCE, guys. PCE is... Um, the measure of prices that people living in the United States or those buying on their behalf pay for goods. The PCE price index is known for capturing inflation or deflation across a wide range of consumer inf expenses and reflecting changes. So personal consumption index, PCE, personal consumption. Jason, by the way, says that he grabbed, this is so strong, uh, he huh? grabbed the easy risk to reward. Micro might actually be bouncing. Thank you. Awesome, Jason. I wish you luck on that trade, my friend. So... Looks like we may be getting what we expected uh, tomorrow. Who knows whether the Fed will come in uh, more aggressive than we anticipate or whether they'll just come exactly as we anticipate, Luca. Yeah, no, I see, I see, the, I see the Moderna, sure. I see what you're saying there. But the, uh, uh, you got, the risk on this is probably, I would say, 206. I don't really like that too much. Um, if we kind of get back to top of channel, I'll give it a stab maybe. But so Held strong up on the day. Surprisingly well. Yeah, it's so strong on Not the day. Not moving with the market really. I'm, uh, yeah, maybe I'll just chill on that one. We'll see. Mm -hmm. For some reason, guys, yeah, Microsoft, there's, there's some type of action that's happening over here. It's not breaking back above that 255.10. So I'm not willing to let it go right now. And I might add to this for the, the pop. If we get back above, you know, 255.20, we probably, you know, get that relief, like quick move to the upside. It's just a matter of like, is it going to be a very short-lived, 
bounce, like, you know, it's kind of with the rest of the market. So, yeah, just make sure you guys are watching. Obviously, don't fight the trend. I'm fighting the trend, and I'm not doing well here. So you guys are watching it live. Somebody said uh, nothing like getting smoked live on YouTube. Yeah, man, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, it's a, fun, it's a fun gig, man. Everyone in the back is laughing. Guys, look, it's all about transparency. It's all about having fun. Um, you know, tr trying to stay po you know, trading is, is a tough job. It's, it's hard to stay positive in terms of like your mindset because you just get punched <coughs> in the face all the time. But I used to box back in the day, you know, that was my thing. I was all about, you know, dodging those punches, taking punches in the face. So yeah, I can take uh, quite a bit of punches and uh, still be in a pretty good attitude. Um, but yeah, man, nothing like being live on YouTube here and uh, getting punched in the face. I think, okay, yeah, if we break, I'm just thinking this in real, uh, yeah, if we break, I think I probably just have to ax the trade. It should have went up by now. I'm gonna take a probably take a dollar loser on that one which is, uh, you know, not something that I'm happy with, but uh, whatever, no big deal, who cares? And uh, we'll see if we get anything else going, or maybe I just go into flat and chill mode, like somebody said. I said that yesterday, and somebody was like, um, yeah, flat and chillin', and remember we were saying yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I love that expression. Yeah, I think man. that should be on the back of a shirt. Yeah, man, um, flat, and, flat and chillin' is, is good too, right? Sometimes you, you see crazy moves, and sorry, I just, I'll pass it back to you in no, a sec, but I just wanted time, to say, yeah. you see these crazy moves, but there's not always like really, really A plus opportunities, right? You gotta be patient, wait for your levels. I'm sort of jumping in, and I, I mentioned, man, I'm like, I'm kind of uh, really scaled back on the size because it's giving you the range. So when I'm wrong, like normally you don't see me in like a dollar loser, but this dollar loser is not like, I'm not like destroyed on the dollar loser. I kind of make the joke, like oh, I'm getting smoked, but I'm not like really, really smoked. But uh, yeah, Amazon now kind of get into that 90, so I'm gonna be watching uh, 90, 50 area, 90, closer to 90, but uh, yeah, no, this, uh, it's funny, you know, like look at these charts, everything just kind of, we now reversed the whole move, where is there gonna be a bounce trade? We got the Fed coming tomorrow, I have no idea what to think. Uh, yeah, guys, share your opinions in the chat too because I would love to hear it. Yeah, um, who's in the chat? P-N-T-X, Pentex Dan, I'm not sure what that first part of the name is. It says S-M-M-T, question mark, question mark, question mark. Yeah, we were talking about this one back when it was up at high of day and it was up like 30%. Now it's back uh, to VWAP here and it's holding VWAP, it's not bad, but it's not something that I wanna get into at the moment. Um, there is a good level of support here, so I have to give, I have to recognize that. Look at this peak over here, we made a, a 315 high, retraced and then broke through that and all the retracements have stopped at that 315 high, so that former area of resistance acting as support now, but it's just, you know, the volume is really dropping off here. I'd rather jump in when when there's some action. Also, the the, the tape is, yeah, it's it's dead. It's not moving. So that gives me an idea of how much, uh, how much volume is coming into this one. I won't be getting into S S SMMT right now. Uh, I'll update you on my old, my old trade on GRTS. Remember, I want to get out of this one because I, I said it was gonna be a flat bottom breakdown. Well, lo and behold, it's a flat bottom breakdown. So that's why I punched out here. It was a random level to punch out. I, I had my stop, you'll recall, at 321, which is my break even. I said, why would I wanna wait till down there? It look, absolutely looks like it's gonna retrace and it's gonna be a flat bottom breakdown. Why don't I just get out here? So I got out at 27s and it made its way all the way back down. Now we're at 301. So this is a flat bottom breakdown if I've ever seen one. So nice little move. That could actually be a double top too, to be honest with you. Look at this, you got a peak here and they're very close in uh, at price. So GRTS looks like it's retracing. It's better for the shorts. At the moment, SMMT I won't get into. Looks like now MRNA starting to pitch down a bit more. Uh, we had a hard time for a long time breaking through that 20, that 202. Now we just broke 202 down easily. We're printing now in the 200s. This one is retracing down close to 200. We have the 50 period at 198.98, which is essentially 200. And then we have VWAP at 190. Sorry, did I say 198? I meant, uh, yeah, 199.98. And then we have VWAP at 198. Excuse me for that. So MRNA giving a, a nice little short but still above VWAP, so if you're looking to take profits, make sure you're taking it before there or scaling out the majority of your position before VWAP hits, and then you know you can hold a piece for the dream, retrace down uh, into whatever, like a 50% FIB retracement from the launch point, whatever, it, you're gonna base it off 
but it looks good at the moment. We're gonna have to see if 200 breaks. I think that's gonna be the next interesting area of support, that 200 level. I'm looking at the, the book here. We, I've only got 38 lots, or maybe around 50 lots or so at that 200 level. That could change once we get a little closer to the price and uh, some, some orders find their way onto the book. Let's have a look at the scanner to see if anything new is popping up in small cap world. It's technically halfway through lunch, 12.30, so there may not be that much to work with at the moment, but we're still gonna have a look at SS SMMT. That's what we were just talking about. SHPH, no way this one's back. No way, Shuttle Pharmaceuticals. Oh, SHPH is back, ladies and gentlemen. We've been trading this small capper for like, I think the better part of three months now. So we'll have a look at this one. It's moved up quite a bit. 20% on the day, you know, not that much, a $3 stock. So looks like we had a 248 bottom and a 323 top. So decent range, less than a dollar, but uh, give us, um, it'll give us an opportunity because, you know, a lot of people will recognize this one and may punch in. So I'm gonna put it on my side chart here, replace EH from yesterday, SHPH, back on watch, Luca. Yeah, and uh, one, uh, oh man, yeah, yeah, they're coming so back Neil and they're and looking just at sit all down. They're, they're looking right at the updates. Neil, oh yeah. my god. Yeah, these things are this is this is like an interesting day, man. No <sighs> bounce plays are working. Things are things are strange. Somebody said in the chat things are strange. And um I think it was this whoever Tony in the chat, somebody Tony in the chat was like Tony. this kid has no idea what he's doing. And I think he's talking well, somebody's talking about, about me? no, about me. And the best part is I like I see the comment and I'm like I start laughing cuz I'm like no, 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 no. no. <laughs> This is day trading, man. You have a plan, you go in, you get punched in the face, it works, okay, great, it doesn't, whatever. Um, I'll be the first to tell you. It's like, I'm, sometimes I go, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try the bounce here, but I don't really know uh, what's going on. And, and again, guys, keep in mind, like these, like these, like, you know, oh, I'm gonna play a bounce play on Microsoft over here at this level. Like this is me, like, I'm calling this level. I think the bounce would be okay. Maybe it's gonna be good, but this is not like a real, like, a plus like no. textbook, you know, hit that trade. Like I'll, I'll be, I'll be completely honest. Like if you see, you know, like there's, there's trades that are really, really good. And, and obviously they're a part of your playbook. And then there's trades that are like the, it was in a book. I read Warren Buffett's book one time. And it's like, if you see a good trade, if it's like an A plus trade, you know, you, you hit that trade full size, you live with the results. Don't put hard stops. You want to watch the tape. You got to gauge it. And then there's like other trades where you're like, yeah, maybe this one works. Maybe it doesn't. I mean, I'm catching a falling knife here, so it's, it's like I'm playing with fire, but uh, sized accordingly, right? Giving it the room, I lose on the trade, it's like whatever, you know, like uh, it, no big deal. We understand you have a limit. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I'm not like, I'm not bag holding losses, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, no, it's like some days, some days it's good, some days maybe not so good, uh, but always having a good time. Warren Buffett said, watch the tape. No, 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 sorry. I was, what I was saying is he was talking about thinking in terms of, of betting. And uh, you know you have your really good bets, and then you have your kind of subpar bets. And so on those subpar bets, you want to really, really scale back. And I think everybody agrees with that. And I, I'm referencing a Warren Buffett book, but I'm sure there's a lot of other um, areas that that talk about that um, in terms of how you size accordingly, right? So it's like really good trades. You know, CPI trade in the morning. If I'm able to catch the move on, on something like the Qs, uh, going to the upside, if it looks really good, like I'll have size for the move. Like that's where I'll have the size. That's where the size is warranted. But uh, you know, like right here, randomly, like I don't know, man. It's you know, in, unless you're you have like a wider stop, uh, you guys know the deal, right? So uh, obviously, you know, just uh, keep that in mind as you're watching people trade, as you're trading your own book. You got to keep these kind of ideas in mind, right? And I'm just being, I think transparency is key, man. I think that's what makes for a good show. That's what makes for good entertainment, education, having a great time. Um, someone's saying, please okay, explain. Okay, sorry, can I just uh, yeah, in, yeah, go in, ahead. interrupt you? So some people are asking, bears versus bulls, I guess maybe asking on some people's behalf, uh, why Tesla is making the move it's making today. First and foremost, apparently as a result of this latest move on Tesla, uh, Elon Musk is no longer the world's richest person. So that's that out there, not that oof. that makes a difference. Big oof. I know, right? Oh, well, I don't know. It just came up on my blotter right now. It says Wall Street Journal. It just came out. Um, so that's that. But it looks as if this move is as a result. And now this is not, you know, etched in stone. This is coming, I don't know, from the Dow Jones Global News, whatever that is. Um, wow, that investors are continued uh, to worry about the cooling demand and slowing production. Last week, we, we told you that Tesla was cutting 20,000 vehicles a month. Or was it a month? Yeah. 
uh, out of its Shanghai facility, and or it was it was gonna cut, it was gonna lessen production on the last week of every month, and that would have totaled twenty thousand a month, something like that. So I think the fact that they're doing that signals to investors that demand possibly is cooling. I don't know if demand is cooling for EVs or they're cooling for Teslas because we have a lot more market participants coming into the mix here. And personally, I mean, we're not really gonna get into politics, but what I've seen lately on Twitter is a lot of celebs, this movement of them giving back their Teslas and getting, uh, getting um, a different EV. And there, there was a funny one last week, Alyssa Milano, who remembers her from Who's the Boss? She uh, tweeted that she gave back her, <laughs> that's hilarious, Sean. <coughs> Made me cough there. Uh, Sean sending out a bag because Alyssa Milano um, was a rocket when she was younger. Um, anyway, so she gave back her Tesla and got a VW, and then she was trolled online because VW apparently um, was created by uh, that interesting uh, government that we had in Germany in the 1930s and uh, 40s. So, yeah, some people trolled over for that. Anyway, looks like that's really the, uh, the news that I can find on Tesla, unless Brendo comes in with something more specific. I think that's basically it. Guys, I just want to mention quick, before I send it back to Luca again, we are at 3,900 likes. We need 100 more likes to get to 4,000. I don't think that's too much asking for you guys. Sean, Neil, they gave you a bunch of hits in the morning. I gave you two, two winners already. Luca's giving you a bunch of winners. So let's hit that like button. Let's get that like up to 4,000. We're really close, 3,900 guys. To be honest, I wouldn't say I've, gave, I've given a bunch <laughs> of winners. I've given some winners. Yes. I've given some losers. And uh, I've given a great time, hopefully. Hopefully we're having a great time. <laughs> I like that. Um, somebody actually Attitude asked, is 100, though, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, you got you to gotta stay positive. You know, yeah. it's, uh, it's, there's a shirt that says it's only money, and I like that. i got to buy one of those shirts. Mm. Um, Wolf 4, on Broad Luka. Street saying printing Tesla shorts up 484%. I'm assuming you're talking about puts. Um, what are the levels that you think the bottom is? I mean, I, I said 158, but I'm, I was more referring to, like, intraday bottom. So, uh, you know, like this was like here, I'm like, yeah, maybe we get to 158, but it was a loose call. Like for my, it was a kind of like a loose call. Somebody was saying 155. I think, I don't think we get to 150 today. That'd be like a, like, look at this move, man. 6%. When's the last time you've seen Tesla? Never. I, I think. I haven't seen it in a while. I think though. the biggest, yeah. the biggest move on Tesla, I want to say and is it like. Moves, Luca. Yeah, and yeah. It moves. But like eight, over 8% would be huge. And I don't know where that puts the stock, but I almost want to say you know, 155 going into 150 is probably bottom. But if I was, like, I'll speak to, like, my own kind of trade. If I was short Tesla and I was deep in the money and you have, a, you know, another potential big day tomorrow, like, tomorrow we could reverse the whole move and go back to the upside, or we could just, with this whole move got reversed and we just keep going to the downside. And so the thing is, is if you're deep in the money on, on, on a trade and there's big opportunities in the future that are coming around, I almost want to say that for myself, but I would probably parlay it and hold the trade for a break of 150 and then reevaluate and see where we go. But I would also keep in mind that the whole move can be reversed on myself and I lose everything. Um, so there's that. But I think, you know, 150, safe to say 150 is definitely going to be a, a huge key level. And the closer that we get there, the, the faster that we get that kind of magnet effect going into the 150 level. We're close <clears> to it now. We're not going to hit it today. We could hit it tomorrow easily. We could break it and then kind of go to 142, 144. Then we get a bounce back, and next thing you know, we're back at like 166, right? But I would say safe to say 166 pre-split is the 500 level. Now we are officially below that level. And so if we hold below that level, it's think of it like 500. Like we are, we are below 500 Tesla. That would be a super huge level. We're probably going to 525 you know, $25 increments, do the math. That's kind of how I would look at it. Obviously, you know, trade your own book. Don't listen to what I'm saying. You know, it has to make sense to you. That's how you make money. I can spit out levels, 158, 150, 142. It means nothing, right? It's gotta make sense to you. That's just kind of my thoughts on, you know, we're, we're, we're like at lows, right? And it's not, gonna, it's not loading all the data, but it's like, if there's not really, you can't really zoom back. I mean, you could, but it's not really gonna show you. It's just gonna show you that we're in the abyss and uh, cover at zero. <laughs> I was talking to my friend actually, and he's like, he's like, I'm shorting Tesla, I'm covering at zero. And I'm, I'm laughing, I'm like, uh, I mean, I manage it and, uh, and you know, go from there. But uh, yeah, I don't know. So that's kind of my thoughts on it. Uh, hopefully that helps you, not really too sure if it does. 
Um, and I see somebody saying buy a straddle, call it a day. Yeah, man, straddles are kind of expensive, but I guess I guess today. Uh, what are straddles? Straddle, you basically buy a, buy a call option, buy a put at oh, okay. the same strike, and uh, at the same strike you could even like do like a call. One, let's say like call 175, put 170, and so if it closes inside the range before uh, expiration, mm -hmm. you lose. But if it like has the outsized move, you lose on the call, but you make on the puts. And so, like, whatever it costs you to put on the straddle, you want to see, like, double that move at least. Okay. And so, like, let's say it's, like, 100 for the call options, 100 for the put options, yeah. $200 to straddle. Therefore, you want to see at least, like, a $3 move outside Got of that it. band, and then you make, like, a 2 to 1 or whatever, and then kind of ride it and see where it goes. Um, I wish I was trading options when I was in university. I, like... I miss the good old days, man. I had some pretty fire trades back in the day, and uh, there's always somebody somewhere that's gonna say, I miss the good old days, man. Yeah. That's, that's me right now. Yeah, I miss the good old days. Um, yeah, no, we'll, uh, we'll see. Hedge funds know something. Clearly, yeah, I mean, for this year, hedge funds really didn't know anything. They lost a lot of money. Um, I know a lot of funds that got destroyed, but uh, yeah, some are doing very well. Um, just, I guess, depends your time horizon. And uh, just kind of glancing back at the chat, waiting to see, is there any kind of, uh, Luca, this dude is a gem. Thank you so much. Uh, you're a gem, man. Thanks for watching the show. Hopefully hit the like button. And uh, are we almost at 5K likes? We are at 4K likes. 4K? We are at 4K oh, exactly 1K, right now. Oh, 1K, guys. Yeah. What, how many people are watching? 5,000? I know you can't hit the like twice. Yeah. You can't hit it twice, right? No. Obviously not. Um, if you have multiple accounts, yeah, I was just gonna say get that. onto that other Get account. onto your other account hit and like hit the button. like button. No, I'm kidding, and, of course. Uh, I'm, I'm, I say it once, and then I'm not going to say it again, because uh, I'll just let, I'll just let what, what uh, plays itself out. Play, uh, yeah, exactly. I'm not going to, no further comments. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, guys, I had a meta long two there, just kind of, I was like, oh, maybe now we're going to go up, but no, that was wrong too. Um, that was like, uh, that was like nothing, no big deal. That was like, I'm like, now I'm like, I'm like, okay, size down, size down, size down. I'm like, I don't know if I can size down anymore. You know, it's, uh. Just that kind of day. Now I'm just kind of chilling and waiting. Um, you know, what do we what do we get? Like, what are some key levels? Again, eyeing the Amazon 90. I think uh, 90 50, Wow, 9050 was actually a banger long. But I didn't even. I probably wanted 9020s. So uh, not even mad about that one. Uh, but yeah, not too bad over there. And I'm actually. I guess if it's gonna be a good level, maybe it doesn't come closer to the level. If it comes closer to the level, maybe it's not a really good level. Maybe it's gonna break the level. Um, thank you for the super chat there, yeah, Unique Carbon. Yeah, uh, th No, thank you for watching, man. Somebody yeah. said it best. You know, this community is pretty awesome. Everybody's sharing ideas, uh, cracking jokes, having a good time. Uh, yeah, I'm enjoying myself today. Again, I, I said it when the show started. You can't ruin the... I can't ruin this day. There's nothing I could do that could ruin this day. Um, because, yeah, exactly. So nothing that, could do, that I could do that could ruin this day. So smiles all around. Uh, please look at SPX Luca. Are you talking about uh, the index? Um, okay, let's just talk about ES here. Yeah, ES man is at you know the low. I'm kind of looking at all large caps, it, you know, coinciding with the overall market. And I think you know Sharif made the point that the low or the level from yesterday, you know, 4025, call yeah. it. Um, we kind of got close to there and now bounced. But just the only thing I'll say is if you're just tuning in right now, I'm I'm cautious of the bounce because every time I tried to play a bounce play right now, it's just not bouncing. There's just no bounces. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm done with these bounce plays. Um, Tesla is still not above 160. Even if we get back there, maybe that's a good level to recycle the short and try it again. Risk off 161. But the thing is, is if you're risking off 161, that's a dollar risk. You got to go for at least a dollar. And uh, you know, it's going to be chop central, right? They're going to try to peg it at 160 probably and then just kind of you know, keep it there in a 20 cent range. So these are, that's something that I'd be uh, worried about if I was looking at that level. Um, and yeah, just kind of watching other things. I wonder where GTRS uh, is. Let's have a look here back. GRTS, GRTS, where are we? Yeah, back down. And this is the thing, Sharif. This, hey. is, the thing, this is the thing I'm talking about. Oh, you have yeah. like the long, which is yeah. good, right? Long is good. But see how they clear out? Oh, absolutely. They do the volume spike and now down? It's like the, so it's like the long is good. And it's almost like, I don't know how you feel about it, but I feel like the long is easier because oh, you oh, see yeah. it in the tape. And you see the move into the high, and you're like, okay, the long is a, the long is a banger. Like that's easy, but the short is is, in my opinion, where the money is, because if you're trading this and you're a mean reversion trader, like you want to go for like a move, right? Mm -hmm. And so like 30 cents is 10 percent. So it's not. I wouldn't say this is an A plus, and obviously it's too close to VWAP. Like you want things more extended. Yeah. But you know, over under short, and now you're nursing it. You're never out of the money. You could have had a stop right at 351. Never triggered again 351, and now you're just kind of no, exactly. covering on the flushes. 
at yeah. 354 that I had to cancel. But here's my out on it. And the reason that I got out here is because it started consolidating sideways and rejecting off these highs. So I'm like, mm. this is a flat bottom breakdown. I actually had my, my out here, 321, which is where I got, I'm like, no, I'm not gonna wait till there. This is gonna, this is gonna sell off. And I really got in right, I got out right before it sold off. My only regret is not having taken the short through the break yeah. of VWAP. Flip, Once these ones break short. VWAP, especially if they have- They're a dead, eh? They're dead in the water. They're, yeah. they're beautiful to trade. Um, okay, quickly, I just want to mention guys, oil, this kind of like sneaking up on us today, up quite, quite nicely actually, WTI. Uh, is what I'm looking at. You can get the WD, WTI chart by going to Trading View and typing US Oil. That's what I do. Looks like we had a midnight low at 73.18. We're up at 75.88 now. So almost a three dollar, more than a three dollar move, cl closing in on a four dollar move. In fact, we were up that high. We were up 76.34. So oil quietly higher on the day. Uh, with respect to oil stocks, though, they really haven't made the move. Uh, that you know you would expect to see on uh, that kind of a move on the, the future oil contracts. Having a look here at our energy watch list, everything is red since open. So first column here, change percentage. That one's green. That's from 4 a.m. onwards, okay? Change since open is from 9.30 a.m. onwards. And they're all red, saving except for PXD, uh, Pioneer Natural Resources, literally. CNQ, Oxy, Devon, BTU, they're all red. So. Not much of a trade, I guess, to be had on, uh, for the long at least, on these uh, oil names, despite the fact that oil up on the day. Uh, I just switched back to my GRTS chart here to, to talk with Luca about that exit, but I was looking at SHPH, and we mentioned this one about like 20 minutes ago, up 21% on the day. This one's obviously a former runner going back months. We've been trading the small cap. Nice little bull flag on the way up. Not doing much now. Volume dropping off too. That's not what you want to see with these small cappers. Uh, also retracing. Interesting <clears throat> take here if you want to get long. It looks like three is a level. Look how many times that's been tested. Uh, once, twice, three, four, five, six times. And then bounce back up for a minimum of like a 15 penny winner. So I don't know if I'm going to be taking the long here off three. Uh, just, you know, it doesn't seem like it's got enough behind it for a continuation move. I mean, this one has been on our radar for a while. Is there anything new that would justify today's move? Let's have a look. I'm not getting anything on my news blotter, so I'm not gonna be taking this long. Let's see what else is going on. What's the chat up to? They want us to look at Mullen. Okay, so we'll have a look at Mullen. Not one that I trade anyway, but is it sub $1 now? Yeah, oh God, yeah. Oh, it's been sub one dollar a while now. Look at this, geez, twenty pennies. So this one creating a sorry, not to not yeah, to interrupt. I love it. that though. I love that where you're like, is this below a dollar? Yeah, I'm not. And I'm it's not like you it. haven't looked at the stock for so long because yeah. it's just been dead for so long. Yeah. And then it actually was at twenty cents. It went all the way back to almost a dollar and then back down. No way. It's hilarious, man. Let's have a look at the daily on yeah, this one. Yeah, maybe that tells you something about the company. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm not gonna touch this one. But yeah, look, look at this. Last time we were at a dollar, Luca was July twenty sixth. Ever since then, Mullen's below that. I, I mean, if you watch the show, I don't trade uh, the sub $1 stocks. In fact, I filter my uh, scanner to uh, exclude them from showing results. So I just got to draw the line somewhere, and that's what, how I look at it. I want to talk, talk quickly. Uh, Sam had a comment here. Uh, Luca, I'm so pissed getting smoked on Tesla. The drop was so fast. Mentally, I was not able to act and cover at the lows for a huge loss. Have you ever had such trades like this before? I've probably been in all types of every single type of trade possible. I probably have like, uh, you know, I, I feel like I trade the most, but um, maybe it's a product of overtrading, not, not necessarily a good thing. Um, you know, the, the only thing I'll say is te be, aware of, um, be aware of the day, be aware of where liquidity is, be aware of the potential moves that can, that can take place um, at a given time. So for example, today is like, you know, it's giving really good opportunities, but you gotta imagine that as Tesla goes into these key levels to the downside. And let me just pull up Tesla as I talk about it. Um, you know, Tesla was up here, obviously the 166. Like these moves are sharp to the downside. And so for myself, um, you know, being with Day Trade the World, I set up certain execution methods to prevent me from um, getting kind of stuck with big size in these types of trades that can play themselves out. 
So uh, that perhaps is something that you should look into. You know, figure out what what order types are the best to use. Where should the stops be? What what is the potential um, kind of uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? What is potential swipes that can take place? Where are these swipes going to take place? Um, so you know, for example, 165. I knew 165 is a new low. I saw size at 165, and when we we're over here going into the 165 level, I was like. I'm not going to go long in front of 165 because even if it's a good trade, if this breaks 165, it could just be a recipe for disaster. And so I don't want to get myself into that. Like I've been there before. I've done it before. I've gotten smoked. And I was like, ah, noted for next time. So really, trading is all about getting punched in the face and then remembering the pain and kind of building a plan, building a process so that it doesn't happen again. And I think Greg said this before, and it's in the book uh, Atomic Habits. You know, we fall to, um, I'm going to butcher the saying now, we fall to our process not to our, um, not to what we want to happen. You guys can Google it. That's not the saying, but essentially have a process in place so that these bad things don't happen again. So you know, you take the L if you still plan to be a trader. If you want this to work in the future, if you want to get better, just make sure that you're kind of building a process that allows you to not take as big of a loss next time. Losses are going to happen, right? Losses are going to happen. You're going to have wins. You're going to have losses. You're going to have outsized wins. You're going to have outsized losses. But try to keep those outsized losses lower, build a process so that they don't happen as frequently or they don't even happen again, um, and just understand. Like when you're trading Tesla for myself, even on the floor, we always joke around with each other. Like you're playing with fire. You're playing with fire. And, uh, you know, I trade Tesla sometimes when I come on the show, but, you know, I'm, I'm kind of scared because I'm like, man, this thing, you know, like the whiplash, the whipsaw action is, is super intense there. So, oh, yeah, uh, yeah the, the one thing I'll say is just make sure you're building a process that can help you. Uh, in the future and avoid those big losses because, yeah, man, every trader, I'm sure a lot of veteran traders in the chat will say the same thing. You know, it's, uh, it is what it is, right? Things happen. Um, and yeah, so just uh, hopefully all is well. Hopefully, uh, you know, learn from it and, and keep moving forward. Uh, Luca, that's we that's got what a I would super say there. Chat. We got a super chat from Jules for five bucks saying, you two are awesome. They should make the two of you permanent. Oh, Bradley's got some competition, or I've got some competition. So, um, yeah, thank you for that. Thank you for the $5 super chat. Bears versus Bull says, I DM'd you a super chat if you get a chance. Yeah, got that. Uh, Dan Eman says, we do not raise, we do not rise to the occasion. We fall back to our most repetitive training or lack yes. thereof. That Astro was what I was, I was saying. The uh, yeah. yeah, that's way, that, that one. Like, Say it yeah, that way, it not, really the way well. that, yeah, yeah. not the way that I said it. No, I, I, I think I, I take both. Uh, they both absolutely make sense. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what some of the books that I'm reading uh, with respect to uh, the psychology of trading, they always say that, you know, you kind of go back to what you're more comfortable with, but you got to get yourself out of that zone and you got to put yourself in situations, I guess, you know, that make you naturally uncomfortable if you want to be successful in this game. Because, I, I mean, I know I personally don't feel comfortable putting so much money on the line. Uh, but it's something that you just have to get used to, I and mean, there's no way around it. So, um, all right, let's have a look at what some of these other movers are doing. Not much going on at the moment, guys. Uh, MRNA not really uh, breaking out or uh, or retracing. Let me just bring in the charts here quickly. There we go. There is the side chart. MRNA kind of just hanging out in a range. I want to say the range is five dollars, but it's not. But we, if we go back to around 11.30, we've been in, yeah, okay, a $5 range, sorry. From up to 205, down to 200, so $5 range. Before that, it looks like we topped out at 208.52. So that's a high of day, but the better range or the better price level to be looking at now if you're long, uh, if you're looking long, is that break of 205 and a continuation into high of days, possibly even that 210. If you're short-minded, look for now, you know, that break of VWAP and a retracement down. Otherwise, you can continue to play the range. I mean, I did. I took a short on the range for a dollar winner. Uh, I probably won't do it again, <laughs> but um, either way, it's, it's still working out. Let's see what else is going on here. What's the chat up to? Are they, are they asking us to look at anything specific? SOXL... MLGO. MLGO is the one that we were looking at earlier, and that's that crazy halt SPAC that we got early this morning. Started off at 10 bucks and found its way up all the way up 71.50. So this one was crazy, but the majority of this one's move, I don't want to say the majority of the move, that's inaccurate. Uh, a lot of the move from that $10 all the way up to 43 was done prior to 9.30. And then 9.30 came along and we had a bunch of moves to the upside 
Uh, mo most of them were halts. Let's look at the one minute chart here and give us a better idea of how many times this one halted as opposed to the three. So yeah, so there we go. We get that 930 spike. Where is 930? And it halts immediately upon opening at 930 and not for a short period either, 10 minutes. Both upside halts were 10 minutes long and then we had a monster downside move from that 7150 high. Um, we ended up halting to the downside next at $46. So from 71.50 down to 46.16, looks like that halt level was. So super, super scary on this one, Luca. Um, I know I was looking at it, but I wasn't, I wasn't brave enough to trade it. Um, I don't blame you, man. M MLGO is uh, uh, not for the faint of heart, that's for sure. I was looking at it and I was like, let me, let me pay for shorts on this name. And then I'm like, you know what? It was blocked earlier in the morning. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. you know what? Let me not pay for shorts on this <laughs> name. Let me actually take this off. I, would, I was trying the long. I was trying the long up here at 65 because I was like, this could go to 200. This could go like to two, 300. And then at that point, it's just like the dream, right? So it, it halted at uh, 160. So I was watching. I'm not sure if anybody else was watching this. Um, at 160, just below 165, halted to the upside. And for a moment, it was showing $120 open. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't get the fill. I wanted like, whatever, like small size on that just because, you know, this is something that can halt up here and open down here. So you got to understand $20 risk. So obviously size accordingly. Um, ended up opening flat, halting to the upside. But look at this, guys. This halted at like 71. And I don't know if I'm missing data or if this is correct because I kind of let this go after. But this, this opened at 55. And so it's like if this halts at 70, opens at 55, like that's like to, to the upside halt. This is the thing. You got to understand there's a possibility, right? So it's, uh, it's pure danger. Um, I obviously didn't trade it. You guys, you guys see I have no fills on the name. Um, and now it's back down. When it was up here, I was like, are we going back to nine? And now that it's funny you're mentioning it and I'm looking at it. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess we're going back to nine, you know? As fast as they go up, they come right back down. This was a banger short right here if you had that one. But again, it's, it's tough to say, right? And for anybody that was asking what book is that, Atomic Habits, oh, yeah. um, you know, great book. I haven't read it. I, it looks like a good book. Greg said it's a great book. A um, couple good quotes in there, so it's probably next on my list that I should, I should be looking at. And um, I don't know what, uh, there was one more thing that I wanted to mention here. Um, somebody saying, can you have a look at Baba? Sure, let's have a look at Alibaba. Oh, but there's, uh, oh, somebody was asking, um, Luke, are you honoring the, uh, Meta and AMD longs, no. Like I, I tried the long again on Meta because we broke trend to the upside. So I was like, okay, maybe now like it's gonna go back through 120. If I can have like the, the long at around 1950 and then, it, and then it's above 120, maybe we get to VWAP, that was my thoughts. But now that we're not, I mean, maybe it happens, but at this point, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it go. Same thing with AMD, it's just not, I mean, you know, maybe it's gonna now go, but I don't know. Like it's, I, I was trying the long and nothing was just working. So now I'm just kind of in chill mode. Um, you know, great time for questions. If you guys have them, I'll, I'll see if I can. Uh, Luca, and pull. Like we bounced off that 425, uh, 40, excuse me, 25 level on the ES, um, up for uh, another almost 50 point bounce. Now we're at 4040. So we, I think we got down as low as 4026. That's it. So I, I wasn't sure if it was 25 or 26, but it looks like we bounced off that level. Not really. Uh, I, I wouldn't say there's, there's a change in the micro trend. Sorry, guys. Thank you for that. I said, looks like we bounced off that 4025 level to the downside. That was yesterday's close on the ES. Uh, I think we got down to as low as 4026, now bouncing back into 4040. So I don't know if there's a micro change yet or a change in the micro trend, excuse me. Uh, we'll see if this, this will be interesting if we can break above that 4050 level and hold above there. And maybe even retrace to view up. View up is far though. Geez, Luca, 4092. We're at 4039 on uh, the ESO. View up's ways away. Anyway, I just want to mention that we we got that bounce off there. Shout out to where's that super chat? Mono Trader sending a 499 super chat saying I also agree with you guys. You guys need to be permanent. Thank you for that. Uh, always appreciate the. Do we have to unemployed Pardon me. Yeah, I mean, what can we do about that? Sorry, guys. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was just joking. Oh, my God. Pratt is my boy. No question about that. Let's send you up to Brendo at the big desk with an energy update. Hey, guys. Yeah, quick update for you on a uh, nice day for crude oil. Back to the upside once again. We saw the initial move higher along with uh, equities.
on the CPI number this morning for oil. Uh, we also got an update from uh, OPEC about mid-morning, mid-morning session, that is, uh, once the market got going, and they were talking about demand through the end of 2023 and growth of demand through the end of 2023 remaining flat, essentially, from year over year. So 2022 through to 2023. This was the headline that uh, accompanied that story this morning. Uh, so yeah, robust uh, global oil demand continuing through 2023, but the actual numbers basically the same year over year uh, for 2022 through 2023, including China. Uh, that's the look at the chart right now. 3%. We were higher uh, once we got over 76, 76 and a quarter there at the top, but a uh, nice day to the upside. This was, this was, no, this was the uh, number this morning. I apologize. Uh, 8.30. We got a nice pop to the upside on the CPI for oil, along with uh, equities this morning, has continued. But a uh, bit of a pullback right now, guys, for oil. Yeah, we were looking at oil. Brendo earlier on was not really sure what it was doing, uh, why it was up um, on the day. Yeah, but clearly a pullback now coming into that 75.30 level. So on uh, the WTI anyway, the... Um, West Texas Intermediate, not Brent. So uh, let's see what else is going on, though, guys. Um, not much in terms of things that are moving, at least not on my radar. Uh, if you guys know anything that's moving, make sure to enter that in the chat. We always want to know, um, you know, multiple pairs of eyes are better than two pairs. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's see what we can get done there. I'm looking at my charts here. I don't see anything that I can talk about. It, Let's look at big tech, see if we can see any interesting levels. Wow, Meta now giving back uh, some of that, uh, some of the goodies that it had earlier on. It looks like 123.30 was the high. Now we're at 119.19. So giving back a little bit, but still the strongest of the six. No question about that. Up almost 4%, 3.9% on the day, uh, followed by Google up 2.34%. And then uh, Amazon up 1%. But the big loser, no question about it. You guys all know it. We can talk about it all morning. 5% on Tesla. Yeah, guys, you know, I'm just kind of getting back here. Uh, thank you for that, Sharif. And um, I'm looking at coin right now and just kind of not oh, really wow. trade idea, but that 40 level. You and, pulled out uh, that low earlier today, right? It was, it was yesterday. Like we were, I think okay. we broke yesterday coin for the first time, but, you know, it didn't really have, there wasn't really like a, you know, extreme catalyst to sell this into the 52-week low. And I think that's, why I kind of <clears throat> stayed there for a little bit and then and then bounced and really moved back to the upside. But then obviously today kind of reversing that whole move down to 40. And I'm sort of wondering, this isn't a day trade. This is not a day trade, but just kind of alternative perspective. You know, who's going to win the, the – obviously crypto is not going away, right? It's like say what you want about it. It's been around for a while. Bitcoin has been around. Ethereum, um, you know, blockchain isn't going away. <clears throat> Coinbase is, uh, you know, they got uh, whatever, a lot of accounts is what it is. So the real question is, who is going to survive, right? In 20 years, what does the framework, what does the landscape look like? Which companies are going to be around? Which companies are going to be doing well? Mm -hmm. And my gut is sort of telling me that Coinbase is going to eat everybody's lunch. They're mm. going to eat everybody's lunch. They're going to probably be the ones that survive. I and agree with uh, you on that. it's, you know, wh what are the money fills, right? And so I'm not, I'm not calling bottoms. Uh, you know, I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, 40 is the low, and then we go back up. But if you pull up the daily on it, right, and you look at this, it's like it kind of nobody really wants to. Tr I should, maybe I shouldn't say that, but no, it's like it's not really selling through 40 and making new lows. Right now, it's at a 52-week low, but every time it kind of yeah. stays here, nobody's really selling it off, right? And so, kind of weird how. I mean, it was. Keep in mind, this thing was at you know 420 dollars on its IPO day, and obviously, when these kind of you know big ticket names they IPO, they IPO at such a high price. Um, they, you know, it's a great exit for everybody that was uh, long, uh, you know, venture capital, whatever, and then uh, selling off, right? So obviously a big sell-off. It's now uh, 10 cents on the dollar, but and again, you know, trade with caution. This is just kind of my idea. This is maybe a long-term idea. W who is going to win the race, right? Who is going to eat everybody's lunch? And I think Coinbase has a really good opportunity to eat everybody's lunch. And uh, you know, we're seeing the whole situation right now with Binance, proof of reserves. Um, the, the potential money laundering thing, you know, it's, uh, it's, not a good, it's not a good time for crypto in general. Everybody knows mm -hmm. that. But I'm trying to look ahead and, you know, take that approach, buy when, there are, when there's blood on the streets. And so if mm -hmm. you have a long enough time horizon, if you believe that, you know, who is going to come out of this ahead? How can I get in the game? Who can I invest in? Are institutions actually going to be interested in a Coinbase? 
and where are those institutions going to buy? And don't talk about Kathy because, you know, Kathy has been buying and uh, it's just kind of like package it up and put it in the fund type thing. But where is institutions that actually, uh, you know, I, I almost want to say actually care a little bit more? Where are they buying? Where do they see value? That'll probably be the floor if they're interested in something like coin. And for right now, it's sort of giving that feel that this is the bottom. If we break the bottom and go like 35, 30, 25, that would be that would be like a substantial move to the downside. Trader um, Borno sending you an interesting little piece there saying, uh, Luca, their bonds are trading serious distress levels, 12%. If you think they survive, go buy bonds as dead money. I don't know anything it, about bonds. Yeah, so I, I know what you're saying there, 100%. Yeah, sure. um, obviously, approach it the way that you want to approach it. I'm just kind of thinking out loud. I don't have a position in coin. I don't even know if I will take a position in coin. But uh, yeah, I, it's, it's a flip side scenario there. I'll just kind of keeping it to equities. But uh, for sure, good point. There's uh, different financial instruments that you can use uh, for anybody that's wondering. Um, but yeah, just keep that in mind in terms of, you know, like the, co the company in general. And then, you know, obviously do your due diligence in terms of which assets you want to kind of speculate on and go from there. But I think it's a good alternative perspective because, you know, coin was at 150. And I'm like, yeah, maybe 150 it holds, maybe 100 it holds. Where is this thing going to hold? But yeah, maybe this, this kind of low at like 40, 30 is, is, you know, the area that nobody's really shorting it because there's not much meat left on the bone. Nobody's really long. But if the longs start, you know, maybe a good area there. Um, also keep in mind that BlackRock announced that partnership and this thing ran to like 115 and then reversed the whole move. Right, so it's like very short-lived move to the upside, and so for this to really get going to the upside, I almost, I almost want to say it has to get through 100 and move to the upside. But um, yeah, you know, I'm putting that on ice for now. I just thought cool alternative perspective. No day trade on it for today. I'm sure there's other. I mean, this is like what am I going to say? Oh yeah, bounce play now <laughs> and uh, and lose. Uh, I mean, I don't have a tally of how many trades that I took, how many bounce plays I tried, but they all lost. They all lost. And uh, Tesla short was actually good. I probably shouldn't have. Uh, I shouldn't have covered that so quickly. Um, but yeah, no, that was, my, that was kind of my thoughts on that one. Will Tesla go back to 400? N probably not, man. Um, Tesla is, and you know, I oh think Tesla, goodness. a lot of people, I, I spoke about this briefly before, and uh, okay, but we have our charts split adjusted. The 300 level on Tesla was the 200 period moving average on the daily. And I think if you want to short Tesla because you think they're overvalued, and this is not a day trade, right, but alternative perspective, if you want to short Tesla because you think they're overvalued, you think, you know, based on macro environment, based on all these things that are going to come out, you think there's downside on Tesla, like you're shorting 200 period at the 300 level, then it finally sells off into 250, breaks 250, and then it never really kind of comes back above 250, it just moves to the downside. So keep in mind, shorts that are at 300 are now 50% in the money, and it's been what, like five months? like six months, not even. And so, I mean, show me another kind of trade that it gave you 50% in, uh, in six months, something scalable like a Tesla, something that, I don't want to say that was so obvious, but something that, you know, you look at it and you're like, yeah, you know, this kind of makes a lot of sense. I have a lot of friends who know nothing about trading and they're like, I have to short Tesla at 300, it's overvalued. And I was like, what's your reasoning? And they're just saying, you know, the company, blah, 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 this and that. I was like, nothing, what you're saying makes sense, but you know, they were, they were not wrong. <laughs> they were not wrong. So How about just the goes to show. 100 PE ratio that we yeah, had you know, like a year ago. That was insane. It's, yeah, exactly. It's like everything is kind of coming, you know, it's like if, if Tesla's P is 100 and Google's P is like, and again, I don't know this off the top of my head, but if Google's P is like 15 and Tesla's P is 100, like how much growth really is there when the competition. Huh? No, last, we were talking about uh, previously yeah, so right now, it was 100, right now, so Tesla's, why to short uh, it? P right? is 56. So yeah, right now P 56 mm -hmm. makes sense. But when this was at like 250, obviously P, you know, a little bit higher there. But uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy how like, you know, you have like the Apples, the Amazons, the Googles, their P's are whatever they are, call it 20. I'm just going to guess there. Uh, maybe yeah. even lower than yeah, that. Yeah, and they're around that area. Yeah, it just exactly. sounds about right. But yeah. then you have Tesla. It's like, well, how much growth does Tesla really have? <laughs> like, I understand the logic. I understand the logic of you could say, oh, there is growth here. But no, man, not really. Not really, because the competition just comes in. Like, like, and, you know, maybe I'm wrong to say this, but call it like, you know, the other car companies, they have market share, man. They come out with electric vehicles. Uh, no problem there, right? So, and then maybe you say, oh, Tesla's the data company. They're collecting data, blah, blah, blah. That's where the growth yes, really yes, is. Yes. That's Kathy and Wood's angle. Drive, yeah, 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 that's, that's Kathy Wood's angle. I mean, maybe, right? But that's something yeah. that maybe you monetize, um, you know, 10 years out. And now that rates are back up, you know, now we're sort of in, in like a value, kind of like a value area, right? So, uh, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts there. 
Um, yeah, Do you want to know back what Amazon's P is? Well, I'm curious, yeah. 85 in this really? environment. Right now? In this that environment. Right 83. 83, excuse me, okay, not 85. I, I, my, I was is that like way off. Yes. Oh my God. Gee, wow, 83 wow. PE ratio. Google, just, just for, okay, so I'll bring this down so you guys can have a look. Come to my screen if you're able to. Um, here's we, I here's where I see <laughs> the PE. So on the top right here, guys, so focus over here, okay? So Google, <laughs> yeah, so Google is 18.89, okay? Google's a hell of a company, guys. Type in meta. Okay, get, getting there. Um, 27.2 for Microsoft, legacy company. Here comes Meta. What do we got for Meta? 10.94. Now we know what happened to Meta this year. Coming down from the mid 300s <laughs> into below 100. That's, yeah, that's the alert. Sean just, uh, he alerted you guys. So this one's the one we really need to look at. Apple, Apple's quite reasonable. I think it's like 22, 23, 23.68. Apple's Apple though, guys. And then we come to Amazon, the monster. And 83.56, geez. Um, Tesla, as you just know, Sean giving us that. I got 51.7, same thing, same deal. Uh, yeah, but Amazon, I did not realize Amazon's PE was like, like that at all. And if it was, I thought it was at one point, lower, I thought it would have yeah. been slashed in half like Tesla. I know, that's, that's actually kind of surprised. But I guess, yeah, Amazon was like 1,000 PE before. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no, kind of interesting. And somebody was saying Tesla is ripping up as Luke is talking about Tesla shorts and this <laughs> and that. And I'm like, yeah, well, I, I, obviously it's, you know, day trade and, and kind of the example that I'm giving, two different things, right? I'm well aware of that. But uh, this is the thing, man. Something, a uh, good example back to day trading over here. Look at this, uh, look at this 60, uh, 160 50. So that was kind of my stop from before for the short. And obviously I have no trade on it right now. But as we get back to the 160 level, I'm like, what's going to happen? Are we going to, you know, go sideways and not really do much? Or are we going to like blow through, shorts get squeezed, and then it's kind of uh, whatever happens afterwards. I quickly glanced at the tape because I'm curious as I'm kind of talking, doing two things at once. As it broke 160.50 to the upside, there was some size that's like hitting the bid. Like it's getting filled. But this is like, you know, sh shorts that are short right now in the money. As it gets back up, this is how people trade. They're like, well, I'm in the money. Maybe you cover some, try to hold. But as soon as this thing goes against you, you know, it's, it's a mind of its own. Like it, we could be back at 162 easily. So... Um, you see those those trades, they hit the bid, they get the fill, and then it's like, okay, where do we go from here, right? It's a, do we go back down? Are we going to go back up? I still think I would, I would probably use 162 to 163 area because this is where we kind of, we really were, weren't doing much, and then we kind of sold off. Now we're sort of back up. Where is this going to stop? I almost want to say 162, 163. The squeeze zone would probably be over 163 for like a sharp move into 164. If this keeps going up at this rate, it's like squeeze to the upside as fast as it goes up, it can instantly go back down, you know, liquidity vacuum. If this is just shorts that are getting squeezed and there's no real genuine buyers that think it's gonna go over VWAP on the day, yeah, maybe you get that squeeze action to the upside. Um, I think if we get up to like 163.50, I'm gonna try short on this um, for a kind of into that level, short it, quick move back down. The longer we hang out over there, the more that I don't like the short. So as I say that, I'm going to throw up my order just to make sure that uh, I potentially get the fill. But yeah, no, it's it's nice uh, it's pretty high. Can it's I just mention high. something super quick, yeah, yeah. Luca? This is a level I identified earlier on Tesla when it was near that 156.91. Have a look at this consolidation period here. We had a really respectable bottom that we didn't break through, and it's not a level that I'm really familiar with. With uh, with Tesla, it's basically essentially 160, 170. Uh, it's lower than 162, definitely, but if you want to average it out, you could say 162. Looks like that that's an interesting level uh, that if we retrace to, and we're not far away at all from it, 160, 110 we're currently at. I just want to see how it acts around that 160, 170, 162 area, whether we get a bounce down, because that's a, that's a, a former support level that I'm looking at here that I'm thinking might be a possible resistance coming in, but I'm just looking at that. I want to mention that to our viewers, but Trader Gorno, uh, telling me something or telling me to look for something here, uh, which is look at the IBM PE ratio. And I'll just let you guys look at this for yourself. I mean, I did not think that IBM would be this high, guys. But IBM trading at 92.3, so higher than Amazon at the moment. Wow. Um, yeah, kind of crazy, to be honest with you. So uh, IBM, you know, I've been, I watched this, this company earlier in the year. I know it's transitioning into that cloud service and other like AI segment type things. 
Um, yeah, it's got AI solutions, information technologies, obviously got cloud as well. Uh, those are all good high margin business. I mean, is it time to look at IBM a little differently? I know I'm asking you like a, from a fundamentals perspective, it's not really trading, but it's, you know, we're at such depressed levels, one has to be looking for things to put in the account at some point. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I think we go lower we next go lower, year. Eh? I think we go I lower. I think there's good That's opportunities. I think, actually, yeah, I don't know if I want to say it. <laughs> I think we go lower. I'll leave it at that, and okay. uh, we'll go from there. You're, you're um, thinking. You didn't make it declarative. You said you think. So yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, well, nobody wants to hear that, right? Nobody wants to hear. Yeah, we're guys. We're going lower. We're staying we're sideways. Short. Um, it's going to be good opportunities for traders because lots of range, but uh, it's not, you know, the long-term accounts, uh, you know, it's, uh, you're long over here, Amazon goes down to like, you know, 75. It's uh, how long until it gets back to 110? How long until you start making money? Lots of questions, right? It, things can change, for sure, things can change. But uh, the macroeconomic numbers, they don't, they don't lie. I actually no. posted something on my story on Instagram that was kind of funny. I saw that it was like a meme. And it was like uh, uh, the meteor is coming in to destroy the dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the dinosaurs looks at the other one and he goes, relax, bro. It's priced in. But it's like, <laughs> and that's like kind of like the that's recession, hilarious. right? It's like, uh, yeah. it's like, relax, guys. I think I saw that, actually. Yeah, like, relax, yeah. guys. The recession is, is priced in. But, you know, it's still a meteor that's coming right for you. And, uh, you know, maybe it's not <laughs> oh, going to be too good. It was the asteroid. It was like the, the asteroid, yeah, the, yeah. That, that killed the dinosaurs. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Exactly, I, I saw exactly. that. I saw that. Yeah. So, I don't know. I found, I found that kind of like that sort of resonates with me. And it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a funny way to look at it. Um, but, again, things can change. Uh, things can change very quickly. It's just a matter of, like, you know, cheap money for too long. Now, oh, yeah. you know, the longer that you keep... Uh, um, you know, cheap money around, the more pain that's going to last for longer periods of time. Everybody knows it's very simple stuff, right? So I think it's just pretty obvious. Yeah, guys, 700 more likes. Um, I was not the one that said that. Buy gold. Yeah, no, I, I love the gold trade, long-term trade, obviously. I love gold. Um, you know, there's, there's opportunity in Bitcoin, but uh, yeah, no, I, lo I love the gold trade. Um, mRNA, guys, setting up, it looks like here we're breaking that 205 top. I mentioned that, that to you guys earlier. I like several things about this mRNA long, possibly here. Higher lows, consistently higher lows going back to around uh, 10, 11 o'clock. Let's say 11 o'clock. Higher low here. Then we have um, a retracement back to the 50 period. We, it's another higher low, another retracement to the 50 period, which is also higher, a higher low. And then from the high side, now we're getting higher highs. We're breaking that flat top at 205. Uh, not by much. Like, we're only through it like half, half a dollar or so. 59's on the ask, 59's on the bid. But this one looks good, like, to take that 208. What's that again? 208.52 high that we made on mRNA. It, look, it looks prime to go, to be honest with you. And that, that 50 period retracement that came in at around 1230, that's a miss. That was good. Sorry, Luke. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, somebody mentioning AMAM is uh, breaking down now. AMAM. This is the name that was like the halter uh, yeah, from yesterday. last week, I think, on Friday. And, um, you know, trade, <laughs> trade the names when the opportunity. Guys, do you remember me punching the long at VWAP? And then I punch out of the long, and I was like, oh, well, whatever. I'll just take the L. Like, why? <laughs> what am I doing? 100% return if I just hold until the end of the day. Oh, my God, that's super frustrating. I, you know what? I didn't even know these fills were, were going to remind me of the pain that I went through. But uh, anyways, the point I was going to make is trade the things when the things are in play. Obviously, it dies very quickly. You know, maybe the second day gives a, an okay opportunity. I called the 350 level on yesterday just because it was the level the previous day. Yesterday, it showed that 350 was the level. I was willing to go long, but the long was wrong. So don't abort the short there. Short was good. And uh, yeah, now here we are. Below two dollars, you know the thing is dead today. It's not really. Um, it's got no life in it. Um, the thing with these small caps, you know, trade it the day one, the day two, and then maybe um, there's just no meat left on the bone, right? So I don't know if uh, we're day traders. We, you know, we look for things that are currently in play at the specific moment, and uh, there's opportunities there. If not, you kind of just chill. Um, but yeah, you know, third day, fourth day of these things, there's really no volume. It's not going to give you the move that you want. And uh, if you do, it's just giving you kind of uh, bad habits to kind of build on because that's not really uh, kind of best best opportunities there. I'm just glancing over at my board here. Everything is still sort of in the same spot that it was. The market's uh, curling up here. I'm oh, just yeah. I don't actually believe. I don't know if there's other people that have a difference of opinion. I don't actually believe that like now we go all the way back to view. Maybe we do. Maybe. But I, I didn't think so either. Tesla. Uh, but we are already 25 points off the bottom. 
We called that 40.25 bottom. Now we're at 40.51, so we're 25 points. 40.87 is currently where VWAP is on uh, the ES March contract. So that's like another 30 points or so. I mean, we already moved 25. Why not? We're going to get into that power hour where volume is going to start picking up. We could easily see VWAP here. And then, you know, we're going to have to make our decision of whether this continues long into high days or whether it's a VWAP projection and then a test of the lows again. But I don't know, man. Today was supposed to be a green day with positive numbers coming out, and then we, we sell everything. It's so bizarre to me because at times where I felt the market overreacted and bought up like the first positive CPI print to come its way in a while, I'm like, wow, there are a lot of gamblers on Wall Street. I'm feeling the exact opposite today. I thought that, you know, this move would be sustained. That's a couple of positive CPI prints in a row, you know. We had the PCE also come in positive a couple weeks ago. So now this one gets sold off. Like, the market always keeps you guessing, keeps you on your toes. Um, and yeah, at least for me anyway, I did not see this whole retracement coming today. That's for sure if you ask me. Guys, 4,200 likes we've got. That's 200 more than we asked for. We asked for 4,000, we got 4,200. So is it, is it kind of tacky to ask for 5,000? I'm gonna ask for it anyway. I think 5,000 is, is the goal, I'm man. 5,000, guys, let's get it up. I know, it's perfectly <laughs> fine, Sean says. No, Neil says 5,000 is terrible. There's only one person in here that's terrible. like really like, no, 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 Let's go, guys. That's it. Let's get that light <laughs> count up. We're real close today. Today's a hell of a day. Um, the market's giving you ample opportunities to get in and get out in whatever direction you wanted. We had longs, we had shorts, we had everything and in between, guys. So let's get that light count up. We're already up by 100. Love it. Let's go. 700 more, Luca. Yeah, man, so close to that. And we still got 30 minutes to go. I think it's doable. We'll see what happens there. Um, and there was a few things I wanted to mention. Somebody was asking Drink something, water. and I can't remember um, if I see it here. We'll, we'll see. Let me just scroll through the. Oh, yeah. So my name is Luca, L-U-C-A, not L-U-K. Um, I don't live on the second floor, if uh, anybody's watching or knows what I'm saying there. And, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, guys. Somebody's saying I'm going long Tesla here. I'm, I'm kind of waiting, man. 163.50-ish. I want that short. But, you know, maybe I'm going to be wrong. It's kind of a very robotic move to the upside. I'm going to, like, look at this, right? It's like all that selling, look at this kind of violent move down. Everybody knows watching it on the day. Now it's just like the relief robotic move to the upside. Shorts just get squeezed. Eventually it, it'll go sideways and either sell off or bottom out. It's a dangerous, it's a dangerous short. That's why my offer is like above 163. <clears throat> I don't necessarily want to short it right here because I think, this is kind of like, you look at this, oh, this was support, so maybe now support turns to resistance. If everybody starts shorting it over here and it keeps going, they get squeezed. So I'd much rather see those people get squeezed, make the move higher, then I'll take the short, and then liquidity vacuum back to the downside. So that's kind of my logic on the trade. We'll see if it sets itself up. If not, then I don't get the fill. It goes without me, no big deal. Um, just because my target is the bottom. My target's like 162. So if I can get like a 1.5 uh, points, on the short and kind of risk 50 cents, then it makes a little bit more sense to me. So that's that's kind of what I'm looking at over there. Um, Tesla chart is beautiful, Luca. Yeah, man, not every day. <laughs> I was like looking, I'm like, this thing actually did 120 million shares today. Like not every day does Tesla, look at that, 122.2 million that's shares crazy. today. That's wild, man, that's wild. And uh, you know, it's a product of new 52 week lows, lots of selling, crushing those kind of even dollars to the downside. Um, and yeah, uh, oh, let's look at MRNA. Uh, I know Trader Gorno was uh, in that short. I wonder where this is. Yeah, see, this is the thing. And They're looking long, It's baby. not, uh, you know, everybody obviously trades their own book. Yeah. My worry is that, like, when you have these names that hold VWAP, you know, it's not to say that the short is not going to be good. It's, for, for me, I'm like, this, could, this probably goes up faster than it goes down. And I'm, I get antsy, man, when things don't go in my favor as a day trader. I want to see them work right away. So I try to stay away from things that are up a lot on the day. I've, I've gotten burned on the shorts. Um, you got to be just very patient with that one. So I was just looking, wondering, did this actually crack uh, VWAP over there? But I guess, I guess it wants to hold, you know, maybe it's pretty slow, right? It's pretty slow. This is the morning move. It kind of retraced a little bit, holding VWAP. Now I would say like some sideways action. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see where that goes from there. And uh, yeah, Meta's still not above 120. You know what, trade of the day, we don't do a trade of the day segment on the midday show, maybe we should. But uh, I wanna say trade of the day was my first punch of the day for when we got on here. Punch the long into oh, that Meta, was the best. 20, uh, $2 dollars. in the money. <laughs> I'm like, you guys can rewatch it after. I, I was like lost for words. I was like, 
what? <laughs> What's going on over here? And then obviously there was like there was that news there TikTok news, yeah. as as to why the TikTok mm -hmm. news as to why the kind of move happened. But man, this was like, and I, I think Ian had a couple of these where he was in the trade and then it just instantly in the money and it's like some type of news. Like this is like I'm in the trade and like one second later, like literally the next minute is like the news drops. So guys. No, I didn't have inside information. I'm here live on YouTube. I don't, like, look at my reaction. It was genuine. Look at my cover. That was a terrible cover. If I actually knew what was happening, I would have covered the top. But, uh, yeah, no, that's, that's kind of funny. Um, no, it's not beginner's luck. That's just pure lucky in general. Beginner's um, luck? What, are you going back, like, three years? How yeah, long like have you been trading for, anyway? I mean, uh, I've never actually asked that question. Yeah, I've been trading like a while. Different types of trading, some day trading, some swing trading. Um, I obviously invest, uh, huge finance guy, you know, hey. love uh, kind of learning and getting better. But uh, yeah, I was briefly mentioning, you know, back in when I was in university, uh, trading options. I don't know if I should say trading or just, just call it what it is, like gambling on options, <laughs> kind of big swings, you know, massive positions, parlay it. And uh, I thought, you know, I thought I was going to be a billionaire, to be honest. But uh, here I am. I'm not a billionaire. So, uh, yeah, guys, trading is a little bit more difficult than you actually think. So uh, give yourself some time and uh, stay positive. That's what I'll say. And uh, Luca, the market over probably taking 1 million shares. Luca, the market over probably taking 1 million shares. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm not too sure what you mean by that. Luca, did you complete your education at university? Yeah, I did. Uh, I did business, majored in uh, finance. It was pretty boring, but, uh, you what? know, you got to... Well, it's just boring. It's just, boring like, it's just numbers, dude. right? It's awesome. But you gotta, you know, you gotta find joy in the things that you do. And for me, it was okay. I can apply this to trading, and trading's really exciting. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'll pay attention here and see where we go. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's a, you know, when you start your career, it doesn't matter what it is. Obviously, you think you know things, and then you get you know punched in the face, and you realize, wait a second, I don't know anything, and then you kind of go from there. So uh, yeah, Luca, do you need a hug? I mean, yeah, man, sure, why not? <laughs> Big hug for everybody. Uh, always a fun time on here. Guys, hit the like button. Uh, we are so close, 700, Guys, 700 away. It is exactly half an hour away from the kickoff of the Argentina versus Croatia game in the World Cup semifinal. Now, who knows who this good-looking gentleman is over here? This happens to be Angel De Maria. Angel De Maria is like what you call, what do they call those players that go from team to team to team? Journeyman. Journeyman, yeah. Anel Di Maria is kind of a journeyman. He started his career. I don't know exactly where he started, but I, when I started following him, he was at Real Madrid. He was a hell of a player for Real Madrid. Got sold to Manchester United. Did very, very poorly at Manchester United uh, under Louis van Gaal. Uh, and then got sold, essentially, the next year. Went to Paris Saint-Germain. Had a very good stint with Paris Saint-Germain, um, with Neymar and Mbappe, and you guys know the click that they had up front there. Also playing with Cavani, and um, who's that other guy? Mar Mauro Icardi. So there was a whole bunch of guys that this guy got to play with. Um, he didn't start last game, actually. It was funny enough with Argentina. He came off, uh, off the bench, and that's a good problem to have, where you have enough players to be able to keep Angel Di Maria on the bench, to be honest with you. So Argentina, I'm going to pick them today. Uh, yeah, Sean says they're going to dummy Croatia. I tend to agree with that. I mean, I don't want to write off Croatia because they're... they're, they're Do you know that Croatia had their first shot on net in what minute? Yeah, the 105th or 117th. first? 117th. Sean's saying that in the game that Croatia won against... Um, who they who they beat again? Who they play? Brazil? Who they? Brazil. Brazil, yeah. So that game against Brazil, Croatia shot their first shot on target in the 117th minute. You guys know the 117th obviously means extra time. Someone's saying short Argentina. No, don't short Argentina. I would disagree with that. Argentina long going into the afternoon, guys. Come on. Uh, I want to see Messi pick up that World Cup trophy. I want to see Messi on the same... Uh, level as Maradona. Uh, that's the only thing really missing. He needs that international trophy to kind of to solidify his legacy and to put him up there probably as, you know, maybe under Pele as the best of all time. But uh, Messi, he, he's got one international trophy, I believe. He won the Copa America, but that's still not the same as a World Cup. That in no one's, no one's cl close at all is, this, is that the same as a World Cup. Let's go, Messi. Let's go, Argentina, baby. Yeah, you know, it's definitely going to be a really interesting game. And, oh, SHPH uh, breaking. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I know somebody mentioned that. You want to talk yeah, about Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I, I was not too, you know, I didn't have 
good feelings on SHPH. I figured, you know, okay, we're up 20 some odd percent on, you know, an algo spike or something. And then we had a long period of consolidation. I didn't see any news catalysts that justified this move. So I assumed, you know, it's just a continuation play. Uh, someone knows something and then other people see the volume coming in. So they, they, they pile on. But this one is continuing. Looks like we moved up to 334. We have a 248 bottom. So we even have we haven't moved a dollar yet on this stock, but it's up 30% almost, 28%, percent 28.5%. So it's gonna be a lot a lot of people's radars. I know it's showing up on my scanner. I know Brendo scanner at the, the, the top desk there. I was I was working with that on Friday. I know it would show up there based on the parameters. So uh, interesting to see what this one does. I mean, I'm not gonna take it long at this point. If anything, I may look for a dip trade around that 320 area. That looks like to be the breakout area, Luke. Yeah, you know, um, <clears throat> good call there. And uh, yeah, now Meta back above 120. Uh, Tesla's still grinding to the upside. Somebody said Tesla making a smiley face. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm, I, maybe Tesla's trying to make Elon, uh, Elon a little bit happy, giving him that smiley face. Do we get the parabola back to the upside? I don't think so. Still waiting for my order to be filled above 163. I'm uh, not really sure how confident in it, uh, in it I am anymore just because I wanted like a more of like a faster move up. It's just kind of riding trend, right? Like very, very robotic move to the upside, kind of holding trend, you know? So it's, you know, shorting it is maybe not the best idea, but I'm going to try. We'll see what happens if I actually get that fill there. The long is printing. Yeah, well done, man. Well done. If you had the long, well done. I didn't expect this. I just, I was like... Yeah, maybe the dip buys, maybe the dip buys, and then I'll, finally I'm like, yeah, I give up. And uh, <clears throat> that's maybe that's how it is. You know, it's like everybody gives up on the trade, and then it's like, okay, now the trade finally comes to fruition, um, kind of making its way to where it wants to go without everyone. <laughs> Classic Tesla. Uh, mm -hmm. But not without you, buddy, because you are killing it, doing well, and congratulations on that one. Always happy when I – that's why I always say at least somebody's winning, right? <laughs> at least somebody's, uh, you know, in the trade, uh, you know, uh, something to celebrate there. And uh, yeah, that Amazon bounce too, pretty nice off 90.50. Uh, everything else kind of sideways. We got about 25 more minutes to go here. I'm pretty excited to watch the game, Argentina, Croatia. I think it's yeah. gonna be a good one. I think, uh, you know, my thoughts are Messi is a great player. And, uh, but I don't know, man, I don't know. I think it's gonna be a great game and I don't think you could discredit Croatia on that one. No. But uh, no, no, yeah, no. maybe it'll be, I mean, I'm not gonna call score, but I almost wanna say Why that, not? that'll be, I'm going to say 2-1. I was just going to say the two same one. thing. But that is a typical soccer score, though, guys. Yeah, I mean, 2-1, on one nil ski, uh, or they go to overtime, uh, or sorry, extra time, and then uh, we get penalties. I, I wouldn't be surprised. But if this goes to penalties again, that'll be Croatia's third penalties in a row in these knockout stages. And if they win, jeez. Uh, three penalty wins in a row, I would not want to see that. By the way, look at Croatia's record. Their group stage record is kind of not that great. One win, two ties. They came out with five points, and they're in the semifinals. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, us. Us. Yeah, that was it. And they beat Canada. That's right. I forgot about that. Croatia's one win was over Canada. It was a thumping, too. I didn't expect this. To be honest, not the way that Canada played against Belgium. Canada looked good against Belgium. They did tire out, though. Uh, towards the end, I felt that the press, the, that's the way that they play. They play a high press system, and that really gasses you out if you haven't trained for it. I know Arsenal plays that system, but Arsenal trains in week in, week out for that system. I don't think that John Herdman had enough time with the Canadians to really kind of get them in the kind of shape they need to be able to play that press, especially if they don't play that kind of style at their home club. Not every style does. So, um, oh, Super Chat coming in here. Heisel Investments LLC sending a $5 Super Chat saying, take it for what it's worth, but I always drop after the morning show and I totally literally could not drop with this duo. That is nice. That is a <laughs> nice statement. That. Make it permanent. <laughs> guys, we are getting some nice statements from you guys today. Thank you. I appreciate that, Luca. I think that, that puts a, a nice feeling in my... Uh, in my mind. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much yeah. for that. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, always appreciate it. And uh, yeah, guys, hopefully, uh, I mean, I haven't been, a tr been in a trade for a while here, but for a good reason, right? It's like, you know, I was looking for the dip buys. I don't know how you feel. Maybe there's something on SHPH, but you know, it's kind of, uh, I mean, now that we're robotically to the upside, I'm still waiting on a couple shorts to come through. But uh, yeah, I don't know, man, maybe that 158. I should have just went long Tesla at 158. What I, which is what I called, but it was a loose level and we did break and I think the low is like 156.91 if I'm not mistaken. 
But uh, yeah, that general mm -hmm. area of like dip below 158, come back, you know, then kind of volume dies. And I just, I thought maybe sideways action, but I did not expect the, the whole move to the upside. And I think I'm actually going to miss the short fill because now maybe we, we do that kind of down move and sideways action. There's going to be a lot of excitement on the close, I think, because obviously we're going into um, tomorrow FOMC. Who oh, knows what goodness. happens? Like, this was a crazy move to the upside and then a crazy reversal of, of the whole move across the board. Maybe I'll just pull up the cues just What's to kind Papa of... What's Papa Powell going to do tomorrow, man? I don't know, man. People, are, people in the chat are saying he's not going to raise at all. What? You That's know, not I think accurate, guys. Come on. If I'm not mistaken, he has done what he said that he was going to do every single time. Every single time. Every single yeah. time. And so they said, end of the year, 50 basis points. He reiterated that. Market went up on that move the day that they reiterated it. But he's literally doing exactly what he's saying over and over. But, uh, and then you have like people who have their opinions like, oh, he has to hike a lot faster because just to kind of get this over with. Um, yeah, man, there's, you know, there's all types of scenarios that play themselves out. I would say as a, as a trader, the main thing is, uh, and I think Sharif brought this up from before, but uh, interest rate probability, you basically type that in on Google, yeah. go to the CME group, it'll show you the interest rate. So I'm doing this live. There's 23 hours to go in case you're wondering, oh, when is it? Um, and then you see this here, right? So the current target rate, um, look at one of the bands, whether it's the, the lower or the upper, it's just kind of where they loan, where they take the loan. Um, so call it four, and then you look here, 4.5. So this is 50 basis points. This is 75 basis points. And right now, 80% chance of a 50 basis point. And so, you know, I've seen this. It's probably going to be 50. That'll, that'll be my guess. But if it comes in 75, you know, that people are offside. The bond market did not, um, you know, think that they, they applied less probability to that. So there'll be greater moves, whether it's to the downside or the upside. I'd imagine 75 means down. But at the same time, this market has shown us that anything's possible. So, um, oh, yeah, 75? Yeah, it's like, oh, 75 means down, but then maybe the market likes that. So then maybe the market goes up short term. You know, CPI was lower, so it went up, but then it reversed the yeah. whole move, right? So there's all these scenarios, I think, <laughs> safe to say, move, just way yeah. easier to just way easier to just react to the move, obviously. Uh, but yeah, this is, a, this is a big tool, right? You want to look at this. You want to see what, what does the bond market think is going to happen. And you can actually look out, right? So uh, next meeting, call it February 1st. Oh, nice. You know, what do they think is going to happen? Obviously, it's going to be more that. evenly distributed. That's um, 25 basis points there on the right? On so the very right? this is where they think that it's going to be, right? So, so you kind of do the math. You say like, mm. okay, so let's say there's a 40% chance yeah, yeah, yeah. that it's going to be 1% higher. And so if the next meeting, 50 basis points is more likely, then that means you know this Maybe, one is yeah. going to be a 50 basis point. Gotcha. So it's kind of showing you where does the market think that interest rates are going to be, not how much are they going to increase on this particular day. And so if you kind of zoom out even further, which as you get further into the future, it gets a little more convoluted. But like, let's go all the way to November of next year. You know, it's, you're, you're seeing the distribution. Obviously, 5.5% would be you know, an outlier. It's like 1% chance at this point. And uh, you know, four is also an outlier. So it's showing Reducing you that rates. it's yeah, it's showing yeah. you that we're not going to they're not they're not looking to cut. The market doesn't mm -mm. think they're going to cut. And uh, somebody in the chat just said it. They were mentioning, you know, like it's like ripping off a bandaid. Just do it fast. I'm personally I have no experience with economic policy, if you guys haven't noticed. And so, uh, yeah, I'm not going to pretend to sit here and be like, yeah, they should increase it 2 percent to get it over with. <laughs> like what implications does that have? That could be pure destruction. Right. But also not doing it could be destruction. But so some people actually have come in come out and said that like yeah. some big name like heavyweights like the billionaires that come on cnds yeah. a squawk box in the morning they're like yeah you know just get it over with let's get it done you know, I'm, who knows like what the, what information they're up to but can i tell you something tiff macklem came out yesterday that's a that's the governor of the bank of canada and before this whole interest rate hacking thing happened i kind of did my own like little research project this is going back a year and a half guys i was looking at the fed rate hikes and decreases for that matter between comparatively between the Bank of Canada and the Federal Reserve. And they are almost in lockstep going back 30 years, going back more than 30 years, going back into the late 70s, early 80s. They were almost in lockstep. So there was really no reason to believe that there was going to be uh, you know, a divergence this time around. And it didn't end up panning out that way. So the reason I say all this is because Tiff Macklin came out yesterday and said, you know, it would be dangerous to start um, tape or reducing or sorry, um, not increasing rates 
too early. I think we got to keep we got to keep going with it. We got to get core inflation near two percent core today. I think believe came in a little bit above above six. So there's still a lot of work to be done, and things are not getting cheaper. I, I think that's what everybody forgets. Yeah, inflation is slowing down, but things are still getting more expensive, just not at a at that fast of a rate that we had. I think we saw nine early. Did we see nine percent sometime in the summer? I think we saw um, like, nine. One, I don't, one print yeah. CPI I don't was nine. Then we got some eights, and then we're into sevens. Yeah. yeah so man, it's definitely it slowing down. No question about that. But yeah, sorry, uh, Sage Mark. No trades right now. I don't see anything going on. It is kind of a bit of a dead time at the moment. I think that you know the, the market's made its move, and people are waiting for the next big thing, and that is going to be tomorrow. Um, the notes get released at what time? Two. Huh. That's a yeah. The two. notes come in at two. And then and he press comes conference out. Two thirty, yeah. And then he comes out at two thirty. So, yeah, that's gonna be. I guess that's gonna be the move. Um, all right, let's have a look for some stuff going on because I think the the people demand it. Yes, S M M T. This one, it retraced all the way to view up. Now we're testing days highs again, though, guys. That three fifty level coming into play on S W M T. Uh, what's the high on this one? 348, and that's a double top that formed here. So that 348 level goes back to 1130. So if, unless we can break it here, then we're looking for a possible double top of 22%. So nothing really too crazy, but look at this volume bar chart over here. Volume starting to pick up on SWMT in the last little while. I guess the volume, um, or I guess the traders are back from lunch or the algos are triggered again. Do you, do you put an algo on pause if you go for lunch? <laughs> it's, I, um, no I think, you know, there's a time, I think uh, this was when, Arun, I don't remember if this was a couple of weeks ago, but Arun was on, and uh, speaking in terms of algos and like on and off, mm. and you know, Apple all day was doing nothing, and then, and I was watching, I was like, oh, maybe Apple's going to do something here, but maybe not, it's not really looking too exciting, and then for whatever reason, it was like 310, and like, boom, algo just gets turned on, and Apple had like a $2 move to the upside, and it was just like straight up. And uh, so, yeah, something to be said about if you can identify when algos are being turned on and off, it's very, there's no, there's no secret, like it's not, it's not easy to do. You're probably yeah. seeing things a lot of the times. Um, there's no kind of magic recipe, but you can kind of get a feel if you're watching a stock and it's not really doing much, and then all of a sudden buy program is now on. Um, that's, that's kind of, you know, something that could be uh, very lucrative if you can identify it um, and if you can apply context as to why that, that's happening. And so, for example, you know, Tesla selling off today, and now that it's going back up, I don't want to say that buy program is on. Like, that's not even, this doesn't make any sense. But, you know, maybe going into quad witching when a lot of kind of rebalancing is going to take place, um, you know, maybe buy program gets turned on. As, you know, a, a gamma squeeze is happening, you know, dealers run their buy programs to hedge themselves, right? So, um, obviously, context is key in the situation. Um, so yeah, I, I just that's that's the most that I gotta say. But yeah, man, there's so many different algos doing their things. Obviously, liquidity hunting algos, liquidity providing algos, midpoint algos, um, playing different games, interacting with each other. My takeaway, the one thing that I've learned as a trader, algos don't want to fill like they do, but they don't want to fill other algos. And so you see like these kind of moves in these like little liquidity vacuums, and then it just like stops at a certain price. And that's because like an algo is on the bid, an algo is on the, on the offer, and they're just like meeting. And then midpoints are just like in between, like doing their thing. And like they will just not cross to fill each other. And it's actually a really funny thing when you see it. Um, there's no, it doesn't mean that there's like an edge for like a trade. Like I see it and I go, oh, trade idea here. But no, yeah, no trade idea. Um, a lot of the times you get your, your lunch eaten by these algos because, uh, you know, you don't compete with them. Uh, you know, push your time frame to like five minutes. Don't compete on the second by second basis. Uh, it's a little more challenging, right? It's a little more challenging because okay. they're just really good at, at getting fills. Do you know what order flow analysis is? Well, it's like a, it's just a broad. Is it kind of like book map? Is it the um, same thing as book map? So it's just like the order flow is just Cal kind of like. uses and, and Jacob used to use? <clears throat> That's like a, I don't know, what do you mean by that? Like, it's just like okay, a vague, so like just general. Okay, so Amin Rahman is, I've been texting back and forth with him here in the group chat, and he was telling me about uh, looking for a particular software where you can see the volumes inside the candle. So I said, what are you talking about? You're talking about point figure charting? And then he responded, no. Um, he, he said something different here, but I don't forget where it is. Anyway, so I said, are you talking about book map? And he's like, no, it's called order flow analysis. You can get the data from ATAS as an example. I don't know. Have you ever heard of order flow analysis? Overflow, excuse me. Order flow, sorry, not overflow. Order flow analysis. 
to um, change that. Order. Yeah, so, okay, so essentially, obviously, order flow is buyers and sellers coming to the market and trading. Um, <clears throat> in terms of analyzing the order flow, the thing is this, right? On this up move, and I'll use just Tesla as an example just because I have it up here. Sure. It's like as, you know, as Tesla is going higher, obviously, there are people that are buying, whether yeah. it's robots or humans, okay. that are buying the offer, right? Okay. They're crossing the spread. They're, they're crossing right. the spread. That's why the candle is going up. But I think the, the question is, where is the volume in that candle taking place? And so, like, as a day trader, the reason why I say, yeah, watch the tape, make sure you're looking at the tape, this is where you should like kind the of... the volume profile? Yeah, it's like volume profile, right? So, like, okay. if you're watching the tape, like, right now, there's a bit on Tesla at 162.48. And so, the volume is, like, pretty light in this okay. candle, right? Yep. But if that fills, that's filling at one price. And so, let's say right. the candle closes now in the next 15 seconds. Yeah. It's like, yeah, the candle started here and closed here. But I guess the question is, where did the volume in that candle actually take place? Right. And the majority of the volume in that candle just took place at 162.48. And so there's obviously tools that you can use that will... How did that you will... find that out? Well, no, what did no, you look just... at? What do you mean? 162.48. Oh, you're well, looking at the, the price on the. It's just the size on the book. Got it, got and it. And so okay. that size just got taken right now. And so, mm. like, let's say no more size comes up for the next minute. Like, the, the, the volume of this candle was done at 162.48. And so if you're looking at it from a perspective mm. of, okay, where did the size trade, gotcha. that is the key level, and everything else is kind of noise, then, you know, you could, there's different tools that you could use to look at the stuff and whatever. But the thing is, is you don't even need the stuff, man. You just, you just watch the tape and just know what's happening. <laughs> I don't know. Just to put it bluntly, I, I, like, just I understand what you're, like, looking tools, at. And, right? and, like, these tools are great. They kind of, you know, si I, I'm all for tools that simplify stuff, right? right. right but right, at right. the same time, it's like just... Yeah, just know what you're looking at and, and kind of understand why things are happening and, and what you're looking at. There's no, like, there's no like magic tool that's going to make you money. Um, it's all just kind of placing your bets and seeing where we go. Um, but going back to the queues as to why, like, trading the queues, and I was like, yeah, 295. Like, 295 is maybe not a level on the daily. I'm just trying to see, like, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But 295 is an intraday level that I mapped for myself because that's where 2,000 lots was was trying to buy at one price. And so the way I see it is I'm like, okay, maybe there's gonna be a good long here. And then all of a sudden, 2,000 lots on the bid, whoever's smashing 2,000 lots is not holding this against them. They're getting long 2,000 lots, it goes against them, they get out of the 2,000 lots. So they break even on the trade. They are the size, that's the reason why, that's the reason why we went up, because 2,000 lots is smashing the bid, you know, people are trading off the size, front running it, it goes higher. And so like that 2,000 lots is not gonna be wrong. It's just gonna like try to hold, oh, we flush. Why did we flush? Because guess what? The 2,000 lots got out of the trade at a break even, right? So um, it's kind of using size and saying like, well, if big money is willing to put on 2,000 lots over here, then maybe I should be willing to put on 100 shares, 1,000 shares, like 50,000 shares, whatever, right? So that's kind of my take on it. And going back to the example of, of the question that you had, you know, I use this uh, tool or, you know, what is order flow? Um, it's just kind of like analyzing this, and it, maybe there's like programs that, uh, you know, uh, show you the obvious and, and they do it for cheap and it yeah. kind of simplify the data. Um, but yeah, you know, you just have to, this is what reading the tape is, right? You just read the tape, you understand what you're yeah. looking at and you, you go from there. If you have tools that make it easier, great, that's awesome. If not, you could still just read the tape and, and kind of figure it out um, and go from there, right? So yeah, that's, that's that. Uh, yeah, order flow is important, obviously. There's a lot of players in the market. There's a lot of people looking at order flow. Um, and yeah, hopefully that helps in some way. <laughs> yeah, all right, guys. 10 minutes left on the show before we send you back to the Big Kahunas, Neil and Sean and Brendo at the Big Desk with the afternoon show, or excuse me, the closed show. We're in the afternoon show. We're the midday show. Um, all right, let's have a look at some of the stocks we have been watching this afternoon. Uh, you mm -hmm. heard um, Luca talk about Tesla ad nauseum, so I won't get into that one as uh, again. But uh, Moderna, this one we've been mentioning for a while. I was thinking this was going to take a high of day soon because I kept seeing lower, uh, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, and consistently higher highs. Even though you know it's moving uh, ever so slowly, I think Moderna. This is a good one going into the the afternoon. I think we we break that 208.52 high. GRTS. This was a sympathy play that we had with Moderna. This is uh, an mRNA cancer research uh, company as well. So this one moved on the, the sympathy with Moderna's news about its cancer research, um, I guess, progress. 
This one we had a couple of good trades on it, but um, you know, broke down through view up, so we got out flat. I was long 321, I got some out in the high 40s, but uh, not much else to be had on that. SHPH is the one that's more, most recently moving. It's kind of retraced back into VWAP after creating a new high of day at 334. Now holding that VWAP level at 305. Let's see how long that lasts for. I wasn't uh, in this trade because I, I, I really didn't have a lot of conviction behind this one. I felt that it was unsubstantiated with, with, no, with no catalyst and it possibly just a technical breakout maybe on an algo. Uh, like Luca was just saying, someone hit the, the, the turn on the turn on the, the buying program of the algo. I didn't like it, I didn't take it. SMMT, that's the one I kind of lament not taking. I felt that this one was a really good one, especially off the VWAP bounce. Uh, this one, give me ample opportunity uh, during this time here, this flat top breakout through that 330 and it made a 348 top there. That could have been a 12 penny winner. Uh, I didn't take this one because I was in GRTS, so I was focused on that one. Um, NCPL, that one was from early morning. This one's given all its gains back, almost all anyway. It looks like 211 is the bottom, and we started the day up at 185 or so. So oh. NCPL, not doing much, Luca. Yeah, guys, I want to just quickly, I, I normally don't share where my orders are, uh, you know, but I, I sometimes I want to. I said 163.50, and my order has been here. And I'm like, yeah, maybe it gets there and then we flush, right? That's what I said. And uh, I'm looking back. What's the high of this move? 163.20? Oh, Ooh. come on, man. 20 cents. Like, I could have just been 20 cents lower and then it's giving you the, the flush to the downside. Ah, whatever. I was worried about I'm this level. I told you about now, that level, just, right? Like, uh, that's why I have yeah. it uh, highlighted over here. I just want to shout out Quan Tran. Yeah, like Quan Tran with a $10 <sighs> super chat saying, Sharif asking great questions we're all wondering about and Luca sharing the knowledge. This is what the midday show should be about when the volume is low. Thanks, guys. No, thank you, Quantran, for that $10 super chat. And we always try to drop the knowledge and anytime we can, I'm gonna try to ask those pressing questions, especially when I got Luca next to me, uh, more experience and uh, a better trader. So I like, to, uh, I like to pick his mind and see how he's making that money. Yeah, and people asking where where do I think Tesla's going now? Honestly, I don't even know because it's going without me, so I don't care. But <laughs> I don't know. I would like my target if I got the fill would have been like a 160, like a discretionary. Like yeah, maybe it fades. Well, I initially told myself the bottom of this range, but I probably would have scaled out just because Tesla. So so I would have I would have already been out of this at like 162, and then I would have probably been riding the rest for maybe like a 160. Like yeah, sure, maybe it gets to like 158 again. But uh, I mean, if I was short 163 and now you give me a, a $3 winner, like I'll just take it, right? Just, just for the kind of scalp trade. Um, but yeah, man, it's kind of frustrating to see it do exactly what I thought it could have done. And I was 20 cents wrong on that. 20 cents, 20 cents. On a Tesla, on Tesla, which 20 is nothing. 20 cents, man. Which is absolutely 20 nothing. 20 cents. Oh. Tesla moves 20 cents when it's, oh. when it's closed. That's how volatile it is. Of course, I'm just joking. Yeah. Uh, Beat Fanatic saying, uh, Sharif at Luca, spent my super chat budget yesterday on Tony, but y'all killing it today. Even more than even more than usual and great delivery for new traders. Thank you, Beat Fanatic. You're awesome. I always uh, converse with you in the chat. Neil is wondering what they're talking about. Some people are wondering where Tony is. We were just open about them and said he's no longer with the show and uh, that he's moved on to other endeavors. So thank you for checking up on him. I'm sure he's well. Uh, but yeah, let's get back to uh, the market at hand. Looks like that 4025 bottom could be back in play as DES starts taking a curl down. Uh, not much. I mean, we created a top here at that 4060, and now we're back into that 4046 range. 4025 was the area we earmarked earlier for that bounce, and that was yesterday's close, I believe, and that ended up bouncing off that level. So keep an eye out for that. But what a range we've got today on the ES. 4180 to the top, 4070, 4017, excuse me, to the bottom. That's a hell of a range. I haven't seen that one in a while. And especially the retracement today that we had on the ES, I definitely was not expecting that. Sorry to keep repeating myself, but you know, when, when you really uh, are surprised by something, it keeps playing into your mind and that's what's happening at the moment. Quick last check on the likes. 4.4 thousand guys that is a really good amount for us but because we are greedy people well, at least i am i'm a greedy person i want more give me 4.6 and i won't say tesla again tomorrow come on guys 4.6 let's get that count up 
to 200 more likes. I know we've got some people, some more viewers that can hit the like button. 40, 4,300 people watching this late. That's awesome for us. We had 5,700 earlier on, so that's good. Uh, appreciate you guys. You guys are, are the best. And, you know, three minutes, we're going to be sending you over to Neil and Sean uh, for the, the closing show. But before we do that, we'll have a look at the scanner real quick to see if anything's popping up. And it's S. MMT that's now in second place. We just mentioned that to you guys. It's in a breakout. It looks like it's close to breaking out. It just created new highs at $3.57 is the high there. Retracing back now into the 40s. But I don't think this one's done for the day, Luca. I think this one might be interesting going into the afternoon. Yeah, it's definitely going to be an interesting afternoon. <clears throat> um, I'm pretty excited because... Obviously, people are going to be positioning for the uh, for tomorrow, right? So it's definitely going to be super exciting. Probably get some action coming in on the close. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, unfortunate to see three minutes left, two minutes left, 4.5K likes, so close to 5K. Woo! I see Neil in the chat laughing. Um, <laughs> guys, he's, he's laughing. Whoa, ha, ha, you get 500 likes. If you haven't hit the like button already, hit that. You know, Neil would, uh, would love to hit a, uh, eat a super hot chip. Um, I don't know the name of it, but whatever that hot chip is that everybody knows. And, uh, it's yeah. over, he said. I'm saved. <laughs> yeah, you think it's, hey, it's not over until uh, it's not over until it's over. You know, it's not over until it's over. <laughs> it's uh, no, I know. Ah, oh, man. I'll see right now. Oh my God, this guy's saying I'll see watch. It's <laughs> over, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, no, and I think uh, also just to uh, quickly note here, NCPL is making its way to 260. Um, 237 right now, but yeah, maybe 260 kind of tops out, maybe goes for over under, kind of VWAP overhead there. Could be a good look to the short side if you have shorts on that one. And uh, yeah, everything else kind of chill, miss the Tesla. Somebody was saying, oh, why didn't you just punch if you love the trade? It was more so because I'm like, yeah, like I wasn't really like paying attention. That's my bad, honestly. Like I, I would have punched maybe, but at the same, I just thought like, yeah, I'll get the fill. Like it's a, it's a pretty, you know, like what are the odds Tesla comes 20 cents to your order and then doesn't fill, right? Most of the time it fills. So it's, it's all good, uh, you know, uh, no big deal is what it is. Not really too upset and you have a good point, right? If you guys love a trade and it's coming so close to your price and you're watching it, you're paying attention, just punch, man. It doesn't matter, five cents. Like you, you need to trade areas, not hard levels. Um, if you trade hard levels, you're competing with algos and then it gets more challenging and your stops are probably in the wrong spot. So obviously fight for price, but understand the areas that you're in and then those are the areas that you want to kind of take part in. So if I was watching that and I actually really, really loved it, I mean, I would have punched 20 cents, whatever. But uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it was a good day, man. I had such a great time. Uh, thanks for much love in the chat. You know, 4.5K likes. I think yeah. that's, uh, I don't want to say a that's record, solid. but that's, that's pretty solid, man. And, uh, yeah, man, had a great time. Hopefully you guys staying profitable, enjoying the show. Didn't take as many trades going into the afternoon. Um, and I'm happy because I think I would have yeah. just lost. What's I'm the point like of overtrading? I would have yeah, overtraded and absolutely. lost. Absolutely. Sometimes there's so much opportunity, and then sometimes it kind of dies quick. When you get these super kind of crazy moves in the morning, then the afternoon tends to be, like, slower. Whereas if it doesn't start off fast, then it kind of picks up in the afternoon. So, yeah, lots of opportunity. You just got to kind of take the day. Some days are really exciting. Some days you kind of chill, take a step back. Um, so yeah, just full transparency again. Yeah, don't get algo. You know, don't get algo. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, man, I gotta write that down. Hold on. Uh, don't uh, get algo. All right, guys. I'm gonna sum it up for us because it is time for us to send you to Brendo at the big desk with uh, with the big Kahuna's to my right, Neil and Sean. They're gonna take you through the close. So it's been real, Luca. I'll see yeah. you tomorrow, my friend. Always a pleasure. Take, take care, care, guys. guys. Ciao. Hey guys, welcome back in 2 o'clock on CPI afternoon as we uh, try to get back to the upside here. What a pullback this has been. What a reversal candle this is shaping up to be on a daily chart. If you go out to a daily a chart of the overall market, yeah, a monstrous wick uh, as we come all the way back and then some getting below that uh, opening print this morning, at least for the session anyways. Didn't quite go red, but we are trying to bounce here back to